You clearly awakened the ability to summon infinite technology, but you are mocked by your classmates as a useless person. Even your class teacher, who has always believed in you, thinks you are finished in this life. Just because you awakened the most garbagey level talent, and anyone with a talent below sea level is considered a lowly commoner, but just when you thought there was no hope, you were pleasantly surprised to discover that you have the talent for unlimited summoning. In this technologically backward wasteland, this skill is indeed useless, but I come from the blue star of the 21st century. Since all technological weapons can be summoned, wouldn't it be possible to summon even Gundam or concept level antimatter cannons? At this moment, with a single thought, you perceive all the weapons you can summon at your current stage. From Desert Eagle, AK-47, Mechanical Exoskeleton to Gatling Mincer, and even the God of Fire, known as the King of Machine Guns, are all available. Immediately, you recall that even the strongest professionals you know cannot withstand the Gatling's barrage. Then, you take a deep breath and declare that from today on, the era will change. However, the next second, the superior frowns and shouts, What are you standing there for? Get lost. At this moment, you stand on the awakening platform, knowing full well that you have been designated as a commoner, no different from a pig or a dog in his eyes, naturally subject to casual insults. Your eyes turn cold as you slap him across the face. You've held back for 18 years, and now you're invincible from the start. How could you possibly still endure? You're asking for death. The energy surges around the enraged commoner. Muscles bulging. The muscle enhancement of a third-level warrior allows his strength to reach 500 kilograms. He he, how dare a mere commoner provoke a noble. It's been so many years since I've heard of such a thing. Today is truly an eye-opener. I suppose they know their fate and don't want to live in humiliation. So they actively seek death to end their miserable lives. At this moment, the commoner students closed their eyes. When struck by a third-level warrior's punch, their heads would collapse at the very least. With a loud bang, the sound of a gunshot echoed in the empty hall. Deafening. H. How is this possible? The voice of the woman on the stage was hoarse, and everyone looked towards the platform. The third-level warrior was still standing, but his skull had been lifted off and blood was splattered on the ground. Loot was killed in an instant. Everyone looked at this scene in disbelief. You put away the desert eagle in your hand and surveyed the audience. Who else wants to die? At this moment, everyone's throats made a gurgling sound, and no one dared to move. You just killed the strongest among them in an instant. You calmly walked off the stage, and everyone unconsciously made way for you. How did he do it? A newly awakened summoner killed a third-level warrior face to face. This completely exceeded their understanding. No matter what, a commoner daring to kill an upper-class citizen is a capital crime that warrants the extermination of nine generations. Go report to the inspector. Soon, the inspector arrived with the enforcement team and asked sternly, Lin Yen, the death row inmate, do you have anything to defend yourself? You looked at the inspector and said calmly, I request a second talent evaluation. You, the inspector was stunned. Very well, very well. So, this was your plan, but it can only buy you two more days to live. The inspector sneered and said, I can apply for a second evaluation on you. If you are rated above B level, you will be innocent. But if you are rated below B level, you will die. Then, you casually waved your hand and walked out of the hall. That's how it was decided. The students of Lighthouse High School stared blankly at your back. The commoner killed the noble and walked out of the scene unscathed, even though surrounded by layers of encirclement. They clenched their fists, feeling as if there were flames burning in their hearts, unable to believe and boiling with hot blood. Then you walked on the road, feeling an indescribable sense of relief in your heart. Sister, our good days are finally coming. Returning to the shabby house in the slums, you pushed open the door but got no response. You frowned. Today is the day of your awakening. Even if the rules in the mine are cruel and strict, the day of awakening is special. According to the law, Sister Lin Wan is allowed to leave work early today. Where could she be if not at home? Just then, you saw a note on the coffee table with a line of words on it. Today is your brother's awakening day, and your sister wants to let your brother eat bread. Bread? Your heart sank. Bread and milk are food only for the upper class. The reward that the lower class gets after a hard day's work in the mine is only a meager meal of cockroach chunks and rat pouches. If you want to get bread, you need to work as a servant in the upper class's house to earn extra money. Sister, you tightly hold the note. Sister, you have been really good to yourself. You have endured so much hardship to raise yourself. After today, you don't have to live in such misery anymore. Everything is over. Sister, it's already dark in the slums at 7 o'clock in the evening. You suddenly get up, unable to wait any longer. Just as you are about to open the door, the door of the dilapidated house is kicked open. A broken and slender figure is thrown in. You instinctively look over, and your brain buzzes. 
Looking at that broken and inhuman-like woman, you dumbly walk forward, looking at her broken bones and countless wounds all over her body. Even in this tortured state, you can still recognize her at a glance. Sister, you hug your sister's body, and your eyes instantly turn bloodshot. Ian, in the moment when sister sees herself with her last breath, her eyes full of pain finally find peace. She wants to move, but her whole body is broken, making it impossible for her to move anymore, not even a finger. What's going on? In the end, sister's lips trembled, and finally her eyes completely lost their expression. Sister, you cried out in sorrow, tears flowing with blood, your eyes seemed to be about to burst. At this moment the man who threw sister in at the door smiled coldly. Poof, just a sewer rat, if it's dead, it's dead, why shout? This is compensation for your family. He casually threw a bread on the floor and looked at you mockingly. At this moment, your eyes filled with tears and blood, and the killing intent in them made him shudder. How dare you look at an upper-class citizen with such eyes? You have a lot of nerve. He instinctively activated the spell, a golden magical barrier enveloping his body. Then, he picked up his sister, took the piece of bread tightly held in her hand, and placed it in the summoned freezing medical box. His sister's heartbeat was faint. Freezing at first might give her a chance to be saved in the future. Hey, sewer rat, I'm talking to you. Are you deaf? The man frowned. He was a third-level mage, and now with his magic protection, even a third-level warrior couldn't harm him. Just a commoner, he naturally didn't feel any threat. Ignoring the inquiries of the common people, you immediately summoned a mechanical exoskeleton, cold and expressionless, and put them on yourself one by one. Give me death. The mage suddenly felt a sense of crisis. He raised his hand to cast a fireball spell, but with the assistance of the mechanical exoskeleton, you swiftly arrived in front of the mage like an arrow released from a bow. Ha! You really don't know your own limits. The mage smirked coldly. His shield is strong enough to withstand the attacks of a third-tier warrior. He doesn't believe that your punch can exceed one ton. Shattered. Extreme anger brings extreme coldness. The flames of revenge devour your emotions. The only remaining belief is to kill. Kill everything related to the death of my sister. Boom. The mechanically alloyed exoskeleton is extremely terrifying. A punch brings forth a sharp tearing cyclone. Not good. The mage's face turned pale. Just realized something is wrong. The golden light shield on his body was shattered by a punch. How is it possible? The mage's face twisted in fear. Bang. This punch shattered the golden light shield and the chest bones. Blood mixed with fragments of internal organs splattered everywhere. Blood blocked his throat, making him taste the flavor of death. The sense of fear and pain quickly pulled him back into reality. Consciousness came back. I didn't die. At this moment, you hold two electric sticks in your hands and step on his head, saying, say everything you know. Ha! Huh? The arrogance of the lower class rat made him blurt out insulting words, but soon he felt the unbearable tearing pain. I keep electrocuting you. With your current injuries, you can survive for a day and a night. I will make you unable to survive and unable to die. I want you to die in 10,000 times more pain than my sister. Madman. You're a madman. His pupils tremble and he loses control of his bladder and bowels. At this moment, you are a thousand times more terrifying than a demon in his eyes. Sizzle. The electric current echoes with screams in the dark and silent slums. With his eyes rolled back, he begs for mercy with the last trace of consciousness. Please stop. I said. The person who killed your sister is called Yi Lingshan. She is the young lady of the Yi family. And even among the upper class, she is not an ordinary person. It's a pipe dream to seek revenge from her. You smirked didn't you? Then I'll take you to see it for yourself. The hopeful look in the eyes of the surviving mages brightened. In his opinion, even if you, a newly awakened commoner, are powerful, you cannot stir up trouble in the Yi family. The Yi family has fourth tier powerhouses guarding it. If you dare to go there, you are doomed. The mage used his last bit of strength to write down an address on the ground with his blood. Very well, you stood up and walked to the mage. What are you doing? Didn't you say you would take me to Yi mansion? The mage looked at the knife in your hand approaching his neck in horror. Yes, it's just your head that I want to bring along. With a forceful motion of your hand, the long knife directly pierced the mage's throat. Drip, drip, the blood fell to the ground, and the dark night started pouring rain at this moment. Thunder and lightning, pouring rain, you walked out of the house with a bloody head, numb and cold, walking on muddy ground, letting the rain wet your whole body. As a modern society person, you have struggled in this twisted end of the world for 18 years and you have long been mentally distorted, perhaps more suitable to be called a paranoid. If it weren't for the love and warmth of my sister always soothing the angry dragon in my heart, I would have wanted to slaughter this decaying end of the world long ago. Now, the only sunshine in my heart has also gone out, leaving only pure desire for destruction. At this time, in the security room of the Lucas, 
Two night shift police officers saw you walking in the rain, looking lost and disoriented, and sneered at you coldly. Lowly commoner, it is already curfew time, and you are not allowed to enter the residential area of the upper class. However, you did not stop. Hey, 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 didn't you hear me? The fat security guard stood up stubbornly, flames flickering around him, and then summoned a B-level talent. The flame warrior, get lost. The fat police officer's eyes revealed a murderous intent. Bang. In response to him was the sound of Desert Eagle gunshots echoing in the pouring rain. In the next moment, the skinny police officer couldn't believe what he saw. His colleague, a third-level flame warrior, was mysteriously killed in front of him. It wasn't until the fat officer fell to the ground that the skinny guard reacted in horror and stood up. Seeing the bloody head in your hand, he screamed in horror and hurriedly tried to sound the alarm. Bang! Another gunshot rang out, and the skinny guard collapsed to the ground. He clutched his chest, unable to believe that he had been killed by a commoner. After killing two enemies of the third rank, you once again felt a burning sensation. You glanced at the summoning panel and saw that you had upgraded to the second rank, unlocking some new summoning items. How about the optical invisibility cloak? Without any hesitation, you summoned the invisibility cloak and changed into it. Although a rainy night is already the best cover, what you want is a silent and despairing revenge. Carrying the mage's head, he continued walking through the rainy night streets. Is this the abode of the upper folk? Something touched the bottom of his numb eyes. Dust folk were not allowed to enter the upper folk area since birth, unless they were chosen servants who could temporarily enter the upper city to serve the upper folk. However, these servants were also never allowed to talk about anything related to the upper city after returning to the dust folk area, or else they would face the death penalty. Sure enough, it's just as I thought. Lin Yan's smile was cold to the extreme. Everyone in the dust folk district lived in leaky, dilapidated wooden huts on all sides, eating cockroach nuggets and wearing clothes that were hard to cover their bodies. In school, the teachers constantly taught the dust folk to know gratitude. They said that the fact that they, the dust people, were able to live, eat food and live in a house was all a gift from the upper people. The upper folk saved their money just to be able to bring them out of the hard end. But, now broke headlong into the world of the upper people. Instead, he saw tall and neat buildings, bright and white glass, warm and shining street lamps, and smooth and solid roads. Everything was like two worlds away from the dust bowl. The end of the day is even more and what you see in front of you do not match. Liar, everything is a lie. The flame in Lin Yan's heart burned even more frantically. 18 years of struggle, the death of his sister, a huge lie throughout his life. The dark and rainy night couldn't even block the bright light. The level of technology in this world is higher than I expected. But that couldn't stop his heart for revenge. Lin Yan recognized the direction and soon, touched the Lin family mansion. With an optical stealth suit, no one could see his presence, and he swaggered in through the Lin family's mansion door. What a grandiose awe. Is this the Shangmin? Lin Yan looked at the expansive mansion in front of him, the corner of his mouth lifting into a cold smile. He walked slowly, searching door to door for Yi Lingshan's traces, like a lone wolf on a hunting patrol. Yi Lingshan's boudoir. Aya, ah, isn't it just a pariah? I've already compensated him with a loaf of bread. What more do you want? The life of this kind of pariah is only worth one loaf of bread at most. Yi Lingshan, wrapped in her bathrobe, chatted with a noblewoman holding a red wine glass across from her. Oomph, speaking of which, what a great time tonight. That little bitch was tortured like that, and she's still clutching a piece of bread in her hand. Ha ha ha, it's so pathetic and ridiculous. She couldn't stop thinking about tonight's scene. A pariah is indeed only worth a piece of bread. The noblewoman drank a glass of red wine, but her face held a hint of worry, however, that brother of hers seems a bit unusual. Wasn't it established that it was a low-level talent and was defined as a dust folk? Otherwise I wouldn't have played her to death. Yi Lingshan frowned, Mom, is your information reliable or not? The noblewoman shook her head. There were some changes later, that kid initiated a secondary determination. According to inside information, his talent will most likely be assayed to be above grade B, thus becoming a Shangmin. So what? What qualifications does a newly promoted upper folk have to fight with our Yi family? Yi Lingshan sneered, the big deal is just compensating him a few thousand dollars. After all, his sister is just a veritable dust folk mouse. Well, the noblewoman took a drink and rubbed her brow. While the reasoning did make sense, she always felt jittery inside, what if the kid doesn't agree? Give his face? Then cut the grass to get rid of the roots. Yi Lingshan was so young, but her heart was extremely venomous, before, when he was a dust folk it was fine, even if he died, he couldn't threaten us in the slightest. But now since he has the possibility of becoming an upper folk and is still unwilling to let go of the hatred in his heart, then we can only let him die. H.M.? The noblewoman raised her eyebrows and nodded. Not bad, have your father arrange for him to be placed in the outgoing expedition team, then find a reason to kill him and plant it on the head of the mutant beast. Being at the end of the world and still able to climb to a high position, this kind of thing the Yi family had naturally done quite a bit. It could be described as a lightweight. Good plan. 
It's just that I don't know, when completing the plan, can you let me participate in it as well? A hoarse voice with an evil frenzy suddenly rang out. Who? Ye family mother and daughter's face pale, ye mother was so shocked that the red wine in her hand did not hold steady, snapped and scattered on the ground. Gulp. Answer them, is a blood-stained head. That head was ghastly white and stiff green, obviously dead for a bit of time. Ah. The Yi family's mother and daughter let out sharp bursts in unison. Yes, it's Zhang Xiaowu. Yi Lingshan's face was pale and her lips were trembling as she recognized the head. Although she had a vicious mind, she had never seen a human head rolling around after all, and at this moment, her heart was frightened. Who is it? The noblewoman looked around in a panic, but she didn't even see a ghost. Yi Lingshan, you enjoy playing sadistic games, don't you? Footsteps came from the darkness. Lin Yan's figure emerged from it. It's you. That little bitch's brother. The noblewoman stood up and looked at Lin Yan with unrivaled vigilance. Oh, you're that lowly bitch's brother. Yi Lingshan laughed out coldly, her expression regaining its composure. That feeling of heart superiority of the upper folk over the dust folk went deep into her bone marrow. You're seeking justice for your rat sister? Lin Yan's chilling eyes stared at Yi Lingshan, his hands trembling slightly. If he didn't want the other party to die in ultimate despair, he absolutely couldn't suppress his killing intent to kill the other party with a single slash. What are you staring at me for? A lowly dust folk, dead is dead. In the future, when you become a Shangmin, you'll play with those dust folk like that too. Yi Lingshan laughed and casually pulled out $3,000 from her pocket and threw it on the ground. This money is enough to buy a hundred of your sister's lives. Take it with a grateful heart. If you dare to mess around again, I'll let you know that the Yi family is not something to be messed with. Lin Yan laughed, extreme anger wouldn't bring tears to one's eyes, it would only bring out an extremely chilling smile from the bottom of one's heart. He took a step towards Yi Lingshan, the white blade in his hand flickering under the oil lamp. What are you going to do? Do you know what this place is? Trespassing into the Yi residence, you're dead. Get the hell out of here. The noblewoman was strong and calm, and her face was vicious as she cursed. Scram! Lin Yan casually slapped out, sending the noblewoman flying, her teeth popping out, blood gurgling out of her mouth. How dare you! You're finished I tell you. The Yi family's guards will kill you by a thousand cuts. Yi Lingshan looked around suspiciously. To be able to kill Zhang Xiaowu, Lin Yan had at least a third order gifted person behind him. It was impossible for her to believe that a newly awakened dust folk had killed a third order mage. Really? Lin Yan spread his hands, a twisted and terrifying smile on his face. He instantly closed in on Yi Lingshan, his blood red eyes forcing his eyes on her. Then, Miss Yi, make a good guess. As to why not a single guard has come over after such a long time. You, you. Yi Lingshan's body was scared stiff. After so much time had passed, she had long had a foreboding feeling of uncertainty within her heart, and at this moment, when she was punctured by Lin Yan, her inner defenses completely collapsed. Her entire body trembled as tears unconsciously flowed from her eyes. The noblewoman's mind was even more blank as she struggled and wanted to run out the door. Lin Yan did not stop it. M.S. Yi, the game has begun. Lin Yan grinned as his body gradually retreated into the darkness. Wait, the game? What game? If I win, you won't hurt me. Yi Lingshan shouted eagerly. Of course it's the game of hunting you. Lin Yan licked the corner of his mouth and his figure completely disappeared into the darkness. Hunt, hunt me. Yi Lingshan's body stiffened, she was so stunned by Lin Yan that it was difficult for her to move her body at all. Suddenly, she felt a coldness in her back. Snort. The blade of the knife brought up a blood red piece. On her back, she was slashed by a knife, and blood gurgled out. The intense pain caused Yi Lingshan to scream out miserably. If you don't run, I'll disintegrate you piece by piece hero? Lin Yan's devil-like voice echoed in her ears. Ah! The will to survive overpowered her fearful heart, Yi Lingshan frantically ran towards the outdoors. Just after running to the door, she saw a scene as horrible as hell. In the corridor, several Yi Mansion's guards were lying in a pool of blood, or their heads had fallen off, or they had been disemboweled. The deaths were miserable. Put. She was so shocked that her knees went weak and she directly kneeled to support herself on the ground. Acid churned in her stomach, wanting to vomit. Snort! The blood-red blade light reappeared, causing her to be hit with another knife in the back. Ah! Ah! Yi Lingshan struggled madly, twisting and crawling on the ground towards the entrance of the Yi residence. Lin Yan icily followed behind her, constantly making up for it. All of the guards within the Yi mansion had already been killed by him, and the doors and windows had all been sealed by him. The Yi mansion had completely turned into a hunting ground for his revenge. Sister! Did you see that? Lin Yan looked at the stake crystal in his hand. This was what he had seen in the Yi Mansion staying shadow room. Yi Lingshan had tortured her sister for fun and had even recorded the torture process to satisfy their perverted hobby. Don't worry sister, I will make the pain and despair you suffered. Ten times, hundred times, thousand times, ten thousand times. The return. Lin Yan was sad and angry to the extreme, and an icy smile solidified on his face. Bang bang bang. Yi mother crawled to the gate of the Yi residence and kept knocking on the gate that was sealed shut. 
Unfortunately, the Yi Mansion's gate was specially made. Once it was closed, even a fourth-ranked gifted person couldn't blast it open. Not to mention her, a second order. As Lin Yen took one step in front of her, the noblewoman's face turned whiter and whiter, and her lower body became incontinent. Would a noble upper folk be afraid even when faced with life and death? Lin Yen laughed disdainfully as he flashed the military spike in his hand. No, I beg you to spare me. You go kill my daughter, this has nothing to do with me in the slightest. The noblewoman shook her head repeatedly, looking at Lin Yen in horror. This determinately vengeful, demon that had crawled out of hell. Nothing to do with it? My sister's death was thanks to you teaching your daughter well. Lin Yan raised the military spike in his hand. No, 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 no. My Yi family has money. The noblewoman cowed out and pleaded, You just became a Shangmin, you must be very short of money, right? I have plenty of money. I. Too late. Lin Yan yanked the noblewoman's hair as he pressed the blade against her neck. Snort. With a flash of the knife, the steel blade sliced off the noblewoman's head. No. Yi Lingshan covered her mouth and looked at this scene in despair, her pupils trembling. Now, it's your turn. Lin Yan turned his head and grinned at Yi Lingshan. You're a murderous demon. Yi Lingshan screamed and frantically fled. Lin Yan was like a ghost, following her, and from time to time, he made a knife, but it wasn't fatal, just painful. You're simply a pervert. Yi Lingshan grew desperate, hissing mournfully. Is that so? Lin Yan shook his head, then what are you considered? A beast? Or are you worse than an animal? What's wrong with me torturing a dust folk? What makes a dust folk more beautiful than me? Yi Lingshan said in a frenzy, the boy I like doesn't care about me, but instead, he wants to sleep with her. As a result, not only did she not cherish it, she even rejected it. What right does she have to refuse? Such a lowly thing dares to reject something that I even begged for. Then what am I? Under the extreme mental pressure, Yi Lingshan frantically began to spit out what had happened tonight. She desperately wanted to prove that she was innocent and her behavior was justified. So it's like this. Lin Yan murmured lowly. Sister was actually tortured to the brink of death because of such a ridiculous reason. His eyes turned bloodshot as he grabbed Yi Lingshan's collar and threw her ruthlessly into the toilet. You, you can't kill me. I am a member of the Yi family. My father is Yi Shanhai, the chairman of the Shanhai Corporation. Yi Lingshan revealed her identity to herself. She was not unaware that it was of little use, after all. What could you expect from a bottom duster to have any knowledge of this society? He was afraid that he wouldn't even know what a company was called or what a chairman was, right? After all, the Dust Folk School will only hand over the Dust Folk's children how to dig mines, how to be a servant, as well as being grateful to the Upper Folk for letting them live in this apocalypse. Ka Ching! Lin Yan stomped on her knee, bending her leg upside down. Yi Lingshan let out a miserable scream. No screaming! Lin Yan's eyes were like hellish evil spirits. It hurts so much, how can I not scream? Yi Lingshan's words came out of her mouth, but in an instant she realized that this was exactly what they had said when they tortured Lin Wan tonight. Ka Ching! Lin Yan stomped Yi Lingshan's other knee as well. As long as you can hold out until I count to one without screaming, I'll let you go, how's that? He bent down and revealed an icy smile. Yi Lingshan shook her head frantically, she understood that Lin Yan was going to return the means they used to torture Lin Wan today a hundredfold. It was a word trap, counting down from ten. As soon as you count to two, you will start counting again again, never ending. Never counting to one. Between two and one, the tiny difference of a single digit becomes an insurmountable chasm of torment and pain that will never be filled. This is the true despair. Don't want to play this game? Lin Yan revealed a look of disappointment. Actually, I don't like playing games either. Or just purely chop you into meat paste. No. No no no. Yi Lingshan waved her hands frantically. I'll give you whatever you want. What do you want to know? I'll tell you everything. Don't kill me. Those people who committed violence with you today, who are they? What are the identities of all of them? Lin Yan grabbed Yi Lingshan's hair and forced himself to look into Yi Lingshan's eyes. What is the man I like? His name is Zhang Fu Hao. He's the young master of the Zhang clan. The other few people. Yi Lingshan wanted to say it, but great fear held her throat back. Even the fear of death couldn't overcome that sense of suffocation. I can't say. She hung her head. Say it. Lin Yan gathered her hair up and stabbed a knife into her finger. Just Zhang Fu Hao, you can't afford to mess with him. The Zhang group is one of the three biggest corporations in Lighthouse City. Even the city lord of Lighthouse City has to sell Zhang's group three times. Why don't you understand? You're a bullshit dustman who can't turn the sky over at all. Release me. Quickly release me. Yi Lingshan felt like she was on the verge of losing her mind, hissing in despair. Speak. Lin Yan just coldly stabbed her fingers one after another, his eyes cold to the extreme. What big families, what powerful people. As long as it was in the way of his revenge, even if it was the entire world, he would kick it over. No. Yi Lingshan lost her last ounce of strength to struggle and fainted. Put. Lin Yan poured a pot of chile water down on her, waking her up in pain and continuing to press her. Until Yi Lingshan's spirit collapsed, she didn't ask any information about the other few people. 
Lin Yan stood up and looked indifferently at Yilingshan's mentally deranged, crying, and laughing face. She had broken bones all over her body and blood was flowing all over the place. The entire person was like a puddle of mud, losing her human form, and there was not the slightest hint of the appearance of a great lady. Maggot-like, it's really disgusting to look at. He knew that he could no longer ask anything. A knife slashed down, cutting Yilingshan's throat. No matter what, none of those who killed you can run away. Yilingshan won't say anything, but there will always be someone who recognizes them. Lin Yan looked at the shadow retaining crystal in his hand and silently pushed open the door of the Yi family. Boom click. Exploding thunder illuminated his otherwise clear, but blood-stained demonic cheeks. He donned an optical cloak of invisibility and disappeared into the Yi family manor, his footprints covered in blood but quickly washed away by the heavy rain. There's no going back home. He was silent. Not to mention that he was still a dust folk today, even if he was an upper folk, killing so many people in one night was a felony that would surely lead to death. Upper Star Academy? Lin Yan walked in the direction of Zheng Fu Hao School. Nowadays, he only had the word revenge in his heart, he wanted everyone present to regret being born in this world. H.M.? Lin Yan quickly found an inn in the Upper Star Academy. After his judgment, this world had developed its own unique technological tree by combining the abilities of gifted people. However, the overall level was equivalent to that of the World War II period. There was no surveillance or internet, so there was no need to worry about being wanted and then having nowhere to run. Not to mention that he was now wearing an optical cloak, so no one could even see him. Even he swaggered into the inn, found a room where no one lived, and directly laid down on the bed, waiting for tomorrow morning to go to the Upper Star Academy to squat people. The next day dawned, Lighthouse City shook. In the bloodstained Yi Mansion, body after body was carried out. Yi Shanhai, the owner of Yi Mansion, looked at the corpses of the mother and daughter in front of him, his face gloomy to the extreme. Did you find out who the hell it is? His voice was bitterly cold. Last night, he just went out to sleep with a lover, and when he came back his home was stolen, and his wife and daughter all died horribly. The entire Yi Mansion was bloodied, how could he hold down the anger in his chest? The detective at the scene has a talent for profiling and roughly deduced the height and physical features of the murderer. The murderer is probably a male around 18 years old. The height is around 1 meter 83. Gifted ability unknown, but the killing method, much like a dust folk who just awakened in the lower city yesterday. The police inspector general at the side stroked his chin and said in a deep voice. Dust folk. Yi Shanhai's pupils instantly shrunk, and he couldn't help but question out. Not bad, it's that dust folk who killed an upper folk in the testing ground yesterday and also proposed a second test. The police inspector general reminded. This kind of thing hadn't happened in how many years, and the upper folk were still doing a good job of educating the dust folk on discipline and gratitude. All the dust folk had basically lost their will to resist. Yesterday, this incident was a big deal, and the entire circle of upper folk in Lighthouse City knew about it. Now everyone is demanding that this dust folk named Lin Yan be executed. The police inspector general took out a leftover photo and showed it to Yi Shanhai, now we're looking for him all over the city, but he's no longer at his previous residence. We found a headless body at his residence, after comparing. The police commissioner nodded at the head in the pile of corpses, it happens to be the body of Zhang Xiaowu from your Yi residence. What? Yi Shanhai's eyes were bloodshot, isn't this evidence clear enough to understand? Hurry up and issue a wanted notice for him to be arrested. The police inspector shook his head, the results of the second appraisal will only come out at noon. At that time, it will depend on the meaning of the above to determine whether or not to arrest him. This matter has too much influence for me to make a decision, all you can do now is wait. Yi Shanhai nodded grimly and slipped the administrator a bank card. The administrator raised an eyebrow, and without leaving any trace, he slipped the bank card into his pocket, and sneaked up to Yi Shanhai's ear. But it seems that he killed your wife and daughter because of his sister. This matter involves not only your Yi family, but also the Zhang group's great young man, and even. Yi Shanhai's pupils shrank and he let out a cold laugh, it seems that that kid is dead. The police inspector general patted Yi Shanhai's shoulder and smiled, this is internal top secret information, don't talk nonsense to the public oh. I understand. Yi Shanhai nodded. After the detectives left. Yi Shanhai's brows resumed their coldness. The death of his wife and daughter was nothing, but the face of the Yi family was considered completely disgraced. In this man-eating apocalypse, once you show your vulnerability, you will be surrounded by wolves that will eventually eat you dry. We can't wait for those families to take action, he can only be killed by my Yi family. Yi Shanhai returned home, made up his mind, took out a communication crystal, then crushed it. Upper Star Hotel. Lin Yan felt an aroma coming from the end of his nose and opened his eyes alertly. However, he found that a woman without pajamas beside the bed had unexpectedly lunged directly towards the bed. The woman looked to be around 20, with soft skin, and should be a college student who had gotten drunk and stayed overnight at the hotel. Bad luck. Lin Yan rolled over to dodge and frowned. He had been wearing an invisibility cloak to sleep on the bed, so this drunken female student hadn't even noticed him. Just as he was about to leave, he saw the emblem of Upper Star University hanging on the coat rack. Maybe she can provide some news about Zhang Fu Hao. 
Lin Yan thought for a moment and turned around. The blade in his hand was pressed against the girl's neck, don't move. Ah, the girl subconsciously screamed, her drunkenness instantly dissipating in fear. Don't scream, Lin Yan frowned and chided. Okay, okay, you take it easy. The girl was surprisingly quick to calm down. Her eyes rolled and she looked at the mirror across the room. The mirror away showed that she was the only one on the bed, there was no one present around her at all. But then again, he did have a military spike against his neck, causing her to feel sharp pain. What kind of talent is this? Stealth? Nemesis? The girl's head raced. Both of these talents were S rank, and once awakened, their status was extremely honorable, so how could they come to hijack her? Answer my question truthfully, do you know Zhang Fu Hao? Lin Yan asked in a deep voice. Of course. Who in Upper Star School doesn't know him? He's the young master of the Zhang clan, there shouldn't be many people in the entire lighthouse city who don't recognize him, right? The girl felt more and more suspicious. A highly gifted upper folk with a stealth-like skill was asking such a question with no common sense? Tell me everything you know about him. Lin Yan frowned and said in a deep voice, including his whereabouts, hobbies. Are you an assassin hired by the Zhang family's enemies? The girl guessed. Answer the question directly. Lin Yan was cold. Good. The girl said all the information she knew, Zheng Fu Hao was a high-profile person, and his daily trajectory of behavior and hobbies were well known. Casually catching a classmate from Upper Star Middle School, they could all tell a story. Very well. You know what he looks like, right? Lin Yan asked. Of the leftover photos he found in the Yi residence, only his sister and Yi Lingshan were facing the camera, and the rest of them, they could only see their backs. Ah, uh, well. The girl nodded. It's 8 in the morning, he'll go to the cafe across the street from the school to look for women. Lin Yan said. You go ahead and don't act rashly. When you get to the cafe and identify Zhang Fu Hao, you'll be safe. The girl assured, no problem. She was now completely calmed down and even felt that this kind of hijacking was exciting. A girl who could drink outside for the night was naturally not some peaceful and honest one. At this moment, her eyes were dribbling, and a strong curiosity rose towards this unseen hostage taker. My name is Xu Qi, what's your name? Less prying into my news, it won't do you any good. Lin Yan said in a cold voice, act naturally, don't play smart. Okay Lord Robber. Xu Qi nodded and walked straight out of the inn, I don't think you're a bad person, why do you want to be a killer? Don't talk to yourself. Lin Yan was speechless. All right. Xu Qi led Lin Yan into the coffee shop that Zhang Fu Hao frequented on the side. The coffee shop was doing well because it was right next to the university. Because Zhang Fu Hao often patronized this place, there were quite a few pretty girls who wanted to marry into the family who would dress up specially and come here to play the prey. Just entering the door, without the need for Xu Qi to point out, Lin Yan sought his target. Surrounded by a group of girls in the middle, drunk and lighted, on the sofa at the center of the entire cafe's gaze, lay a youth. He held his red wine glass up, absently scanning over the girls with an evil smile at the corner of his mouth. You can leave now. Lin Yan drew away his military stinger. Oh. Xu Qi nodded, but didn't leave, only turning around and sitting at the coffee table, raising her hand and calling out, a cup of coffee. What are you doing? Lin Yan frowned. Eating breakfast ah, before I even went to bed, you gripped me over, my stomach is hungry. Xu Qi rightfully said. Lin Yan no longer paid attention, this female student was afraid that she had more or less mental problems. Afterwards, he indifferently sat down opposite Zheng Fu Hao. Intending to wait for him to go to the bathroom, he would torture and abuse the other party properly in the bathroom. If he just shot him to death, it would be too cheap for this clothed beast. After killing so many people this night, I've already upgraded to the third rank. Lin Yan took advantage of this gap to check his summon list. Many more items brightened up. With my current authority, the biggest killing weapon I can do is summon a heavy machine gun. If I want to summon the Vulcan Cannon and Gatling, I need to ascend to the fourth rank to do so. He sank his eyebrows. Though he was certain that the strongest gifted he had ever seen had no way to defend themselves against the Vulcan Cannon. But the most he had seen as a dust folk was a fourth order alien. He wasn't able to confirm how capable any higher ranked gifted were in combat. Before confirming the combat ability of a high ranked gifted person, it's better to be cautious in crowded places. He waited. Soon, Zheng Fu Hao stopped a super short pants girl in his arms and walked towards the bathroom with an evil smile on his face. The little brother at the door also knew his place, and went into the bathroom first, roughly dragging out all the customers inside who were using the toilet. Clearing the room in advance. Eh? The time has come. Lin Yan got up and slowly walked towards the bathroom. Aya, mister. Zhang, you're so bad. The super short pants girl was in Zhang Fu Hao's arms, her face was blushing, before she even entered the bathroom, her buttocks were pinched several times. Oomph. There will be a good time for you in a while. Zhang Fu Hao just wanted to enter the bathroom to have a good time. Just as his front foot stepped in, the door of the cafe was opened. A group of tall suited men walked in. Mr. Cheng, the chairman asked us to take you back. Can't you see that I'm about to run an errand? Don't you guys have eyes? Zhang Fu Hao was upset that his great pleasure was half disturbed. 
This is the boss's order, it's better for the eunuch to come with us. A calm voice came. The men in black suits split into two columns, and a man in sunglasses wearing a white suit stepped out from among them. If you didn't go to protect the old man, why did you personally run to me? Jung Fu Hao was not a fool, and at this moment, he also felt a strange atmosphere. This white-suited man was his father's personal bodyguard, a peak fifth-rank warrior. Such an expert, in Lighthouse City, was considered the forefront of existence. Even in the outbound crusade team, it was considered a stalwart. Alright, I'll go with you guys. Jung Fu Hao directly threw the woman in his arms onto the ground. On the side, Lin Yin frowned. How could it be such a coincidence? It seems like his father knows about the Yi Mansion and is afraid that I'll make a move against his son. Ha! What an old fox. Lin Yan grinned a morose smile. He had found this place, how could he let Jung Fu Hao leave safely? Pying. He raised his hand and fired a shot. The moment the shot was fired, the man in the white suit instinctively felt the danger. He reacted extremely quickly as the surface of his body hardened and grabbed at the Desert Eagle's bullet. After the fourth rank, each talent would awaken unique abilities, epidermal hardening and invulnerability to knives and guns was a special ability of warriors. Pying. There was no suspense. The Desert Eagle's 9. One millimeter large caliber bullet was enough to pierce through steel at such a close distance. The hardened skin that could only manage to be impervious to swords and spears couldn't block it at all. The bullet instantly pierced through the white suit man's palm and struck into Zhang Fu Hao's left shoulder. Ah! Zhang Fu Hao had been pampered since he was a child, or had he ever suffered this kind of pain, and instantly screamed out in misery. Who is it? Get the hell out of here! He roared angrily. Pying. In response to him, there was another gunshot. Puff! This shot directly hit his wrist, blowing one of his hands off. Blood and flesh instantly disintegrated, and inside the cafe, countless customers screamed, either fleeing or hiding under the tables and chairs. Shu Chi chose a clever place, a flash to hide in a dead corner, curiously watching what was happening. Over there. A mage located Lin Yan's position, and a manifestation spell revealed Lin Yan's shadow. Ha! Lin Yan didn't bother to hide himself anymore, removing his optical stealth hood and looking indifferently at Zheng Fu Hao. Your luck is good but only good in that I don't want you to die too painfully. Dustman? Zhang Fu Hao instantly recognized Lin Yan's identity. Dustfolk all wore tattered linen clothes with numbers on them, which was the mark of their identity. It really is you. The man in the white suit forced his bleeding hand to stop bleeding, then grabbed the seriously injured Zhang Fu Hao and frantically ran towards the road. Remember my face, this will become your lingering nightmare. Lin Yan grinned, not caring about what was happening in front of him, just looking at Zhang Fu Hao eerily, his voice hoarse. But don't die easily. I'll fire two shots at your body every day. Until your body is covered with bullet holes. You will slowly rot and die, just like how you tortured my sister. You. Many figures flashed through Zhang Fu Hao's mind, but he couldn't confirm which sister Lin Yan was talking about. The confusion in his eyes caused the killing intent and anger in Lin Yan's chest to blaze even more fiercely. He frantically shot towards Zhang Fu Hao. Those men in suits rushed up one by one, and not a single bullet hit Zhang Fu Hao again. After shooting five suited bodyguards in a row, Lin Yan chased him to the street. Zheng Fu Hao had long since been dragged by the white-suited men and jumped into the mechanical carrier, quickly driving away. It's a pity that there's no way to summon a tank right now. Lin Yan shook his head. Judging from the crystal retention, Yi Lingshan was only an accomplice. The first mastermind who made the abuse proposal was none other than this Zheng Fu Hao. There's no rush. Living in the hell of ultimate fear is far more terrifying than a short death. Lin Yan looked at the police inspector who rushed over to the side and turned around, ready to leave. Although he could summon a heavy machine gun nowadays and casually kill a group of guards in seconds. However, if he dragged it out for a long time, and Lighthouse City city guards arrived and formed an encirclement, he might not be able to really escape. Go this way. I know there's a trail. Xu Qi hid in a dead corner and secretly waved to Lin Yan, shouting in a low voice. Lin Yan looked at the police inspectors surrounding him on both sides, and after sinking his eyebrows and fought for a split second, he nodded to Xu Qi. Following the path pointed out by Xu Qi, the two somehow managed to go around to the back door of the Upper Star Academy which was on the opposite side of the cafe. Alright, now you're sort of out of the woods. Xu Qi patted Lin Yan's shoulder. Lin Yan frowned at her, why did you help me? Just now I was still the kidnapper who hijacked you. Xu Qi gave him a mischievous smile, I can feel that you're not a bad person. Just because of that? Lin Yan didn't believe it. Consider it your payment for letting me watch a wonderful and good show. Xu Qi could only find another reason to add. Lin Yan took a deep look at this girl, there must be a demon when things go wrong. However, the other party had also helped himself, so he didn't bother to pry into what secret she had. Then this is goodbye. Lin Yan turned around and was about to leave. Hey, I have just saved your life. You could at least say thank you. Xu Qi was displeased. Thanks. Lin Yan nodded at her. If I'm not mistaken, you have a personal grudge against Zheng Fu Hao? You want to get back at him right? Xu Qi spread a smile after receiving Lin Yan's thanks and said. Anyone who isn't a fool can see that. 
Lin Yan glanced at her and disliked her. But you're a dustman, yeah. Xu Qi looked Lin Yan up and down. Ha! Huh? Lin Yan laughed coldly, he had thought that Xu Qi was different from the others, but it turned out that she was still all the way. Were they all higher beings who looked down on the dust folk and pretended to be extraordinary? Farewell. Don't tell the truth about what happened today, just pretend that nothing happened. Otherwise I won't guarantee your safety. Lin Yan's voice grew cold and he was about to leave. Hey, don't you misunderstand. Xu Qi stomped her foot, I mean, you're a dust folk. Now not only did you kill a Shangmin, but you also attacked a big shot like Zheng Fu Hao. You'll definitely be wanted all over the city. So what? Lin Yan frowned, it's none of your business. No. Xu Qi shook her finger, you won't be able to find a place to land in Lighthouse City right now, even if you have stealth skills. But as you can see, the mage's staying shadow spell, the detective's profiling spell, and the psychic sense of smell passes. Many ways to find you. You're in danger now. Lin Yan turned his head and stared at Xu Qi, are you mocking me? I am, actually, I was going to say. Why don't you just hide in the Upper Star Academy? Xu Qi blushed, my student dormitory, it's quite big. Lin Yan frowned, completely confused by Xu Qi's brain circuits. It's also good. Lin Yan nodded after thinking. Zhang Fu Hao was a student of the Upper Star Academy, if he had been unable to find himself. It was also impossible for his father to keep bringing him around all the time, he always had to come back to school. Whether it was out of the secrecy of hiding or the implementation of the plan behind, Upper Star Academy was a good choice. Harboring a wanted criminal is a major crime, you better think clearly. Lin Yan frowned. He he, aren't you not a wanted criminal now? Those who don't know are not guilty. Xu Qi laughed, moreover, even if I'm found out in the future, I'll just say that you're the one who held me hostage, what crime do I have? Well, Lin Yan nodded and was about to enter through the back door with Xu Qi. The next moment, his consciousness suddenly tightened, and the power arm on his hand exerted force as he pushed Xu Qi away, and he himself fell backward. What are you doing? Xu Qi's words had not yet fallen. Snort! A dozen or so steel arrows missed the place where they were standing just now, the penetrating power was extremely strong, already no weaker than the desert eagle's bullets. So close, so close. Xu Qi patted her chest, feeling scared and excited at the same time. Pying. Lin Yan raised his hand and fired a shot at the place where the arrow had come from. In order not to be noticed, he had installed a silencer on the muzzle of his gun. Gulp. Dark shadows rolled out of the shadows. It was an enchanting woman with a bewitching figure, wearing tights and holding an enchanted bow and arrow in her hand as she looked at Lin Yan with a demonic smile. Fast enough reflexes little brother looks like you have at least a third rank strength. Obviously you just awakened yesterday, how could you grow so fast? She looked Lin Yan up and down, like a beautiful snake. Dead people don't have to know that much. Lin Yan shook his head and pointed his gun at the enchantress. Tell me where you came from so that you can die a quick death. Little brother's breath is quite big oh. The enchantress let out a winking smile, but there's no harm in telling you, letting you die a quick death, someone wants to buy your life. You should not struggle, I am a fourth rank divine archer from the crusade team. Practical combat experience, rank reaction speed, you are not as high as me oh. Ha! Lin Yan knew that the other party was stalling for time, the infrared scanning that came with the mechanical exoskeleton had already detected that another of the woman's teammates was approaching. However, he was also taking the trick into account. By the time the black shadow groped the bushes above his head, he leapt down with a vicious leap, and his long blade slashed down. Clang! Lin Yan grabbed the blade, and his other mechanical arm popped out an alloy iron blade, chopping off the black shadow's arm with a single slash. Hoof! The black shadow stifled a grunt. Worthy of being from a crusade team, only a muffled grunt even after having his arm broken. Lin Yan's heart was grave. The crusade team was a team that went out to look for supplies, and was composed of experts of the fourth rank and above. Nowadays, the world was polluted, alien beasts were rampant, and outside of human cities, the environment was extremely harsh and dangerous. To keep a city running, one needed to go out and grab resources from the alien beasts. The mortality rate of a crusade team is as high as 90%. Those who can survive in a crusade team are absolute experts in actual combat. Lin Yan took advantage of people's illnesses, and it was enough to keep one of his tongues. This assassin was killed outright when he broke his arm. What a decisive little brat. The shadow assassin was startled and immediately had to hide in the shadows. But Lin Yan, who was empowered by his mechanical exoskeleton, moved too fast. In a flash, he arrived in front of the assassin. Boom. With a punch, the shadow assassin's head was directly shattered. How is that possible? The divine archer's cold sweat cascaded. In a short exchange of more than 10 seconds, Lin Yan demonstrated a long-range attack comparable to that of a divine archer, a counter-surveillance ability comparable to that of a detective profession, the unarmed hand catching white blades comparable to that of a high-level warrior, as well as the special possession device of the mechanical department. What exactly is the talent you awakened? How is it possible for one person to have so many talents at the same time? The enchanting female archer was completely confused. 
According to the information she had gotten, Lin Yen had clearly only awakened yesterday, and what he had awakened was clearly a summoner skill. Escape. The goddess archer's intuition honed on the battlefield told her that Lin Yan was simply not something she could deal with, and that she had to flee in a hurry. Without hesitation, she turned around and was about to run. But as an archer, her movement speed wasn't fast, or at least there was no way to compare it to the mechanical exoskeleton enhanced Lin Yan. Lin Yan, who had a mechanical exoskeleton, could move at a speed of fully 80 mph, no different from a wildly running car. Where are you going? The moral-like horse voice came against her ear, causing the female archer's scalp to tingle. Gulp. She only had time to turn her head and see that clear and morose face before her consciousness fainted. Lin Yan put away the stun baton and put the unconscious woman on his shoulders. This. Xu Qi looked dumbfounded. Frightened? Lin Yan turned his head and looked at Xu Qi, thinking that this girl also had a time when she was frightened? A hint of a smile flowed from the corner of his mouth. It was then that he realized that he hadn't laughed in what seemed like a long time, and his face muscles were stiff. No. Xu Qi firmly shook his head, stuck out a thumbs up and exclaimed, You're so handsome. Lin Yan was speechless. You know what? You're like a knight errant in the novels I read. I feel so exciting. So hot-blooded. Xu Qi waved her small fists in excitement. Lin Yan carried the unconscious body of the enchanting female archer on his left and the body of the shadow assassin on his right. I need to dispose of these bodies. Otherwise, once they are discovered, my hiding in the Upper Star Academy may also be exposed. Aha! I'll help you. Xu Qi looked at the broken arms and shattered brains on the ground. She frowned, then still said, I'd better just help you with the bloodstains, you can do the rest yourself, it's so disgusting. Lin Yan carried the two of them on his back and headed towards the back of the mountain, after a few steps, he paused, turned his head, and said in a light but sincere manner, thank you. Hey! Xu Qi was just about to make a wave of modesty when Lin Yan had already turned his head and walked away. What a waste of my expression. Xu Qi poked her tongue out towards Lin Yan's back, looking for a shovel, and some cleaning utensils. Does this count as becoming an accomplice to a wanted criminal? Will I be wanted all over the city if I'm exposed? Will I be involved in some huge conspiracy? Xu Qi muttered while sweeping. She then spread a smile, so looking forward to it. Back mountain. Snap. Lin Yan slapped the archer girl awake. Um, it hurts. The archery woman frowned, then turned awake. She looked at Lin Yan incredulously. I, I'm still alive. She then looked at the land under Lin Yan's feet that had obviously been renovated, with some blood seeping out of it. Lin Yan was still taking a shovel and filling the soil towards it. You buried Luo Yan's corpse. The archery woman knew that she definitely wouldn't be able to survive today, and her heart fell into despair. You said that assassin? That's right. Lin Yan turned his head and grinned at the archery woman. If you don't give an honest answer to the questions I raised, you'll be buried alive. Gulp. Archeress shook her head. Better give me a hard time then. Choosing to do the crusade's job, and then choosing to be an assassin after being discharged from the army. She had long been prepared for death. Having killed so many people and done so many evil things, sooner or later retribution would return to her. After all, those who kill people will always be killed. Who sent you? Lin Yan looked down at the archery woman and asked in a cold voice. This is professional ethics, it cannot be revealed. The archery woman shook her head. Lin Yan laughed and slashed the female archer's face with a knife. I have 10,000 ways to make you beg for death. For torturing people, it was perfectly fine to follow the example of the tortures in the movies he had seen in his last life. And those torture devices are probably considered technological products. Buzz. He tried to summon it, and as a result, he actually summoned a tiger bench. Want to test your willpower? I'll fulfill you. Lin Yan tied the archery woman to the tiger bench, not showing any mercy at all, and prepared to torture her. Wait. The archery woman's eyes rolled and she said evenly, that's professional ethics, I can have no ethics too. Then say it. Lin Yan frowned. But you have to fulfill my last wish in life. The archery woman was delicate and shy, I haven't had a man for a long time. If you fulfill me, I'll. Beauty tricks don't work on me. Want to kill me while you're doing it with me? Lin Yan laughed coldly and drank coldly. He had long since been transformed into a paranoid disposition by this doomsday. After all, if he was an old colorful batch of spermatozoa, he wouldn't be able to survive more than a day in this doomsday. You. The archery woman had no choice but to explain, it's Yi Shanhai of the Yi family, he hired us to kill you. Whom? Lin Yan frowned. The murder of his sister was only related to Yi Lingshan and her mother who was at home at the time. In the information he had gotten, Yi Shanhai had nothing to do with it. Therefore, after taking revenge on the Yi family, he didn't intend to waste any more energy on killing Yi Shanhai. He he. Cutting the grass to get rid of the root saw. I can't believe I almost forgot about the law of survival in this apocalypse. Lin Yan grinned in self-deprecation. However, this was not a mistake on his part. Last night Yi Shanhai was not even at the Yi residence, or else he wouldn't have minded killing him and passing it all. Since you seek death, then don't blame me. Lin Yan had a murderous look in his eyes. Yi Shanhai is the boss of Zheng Group's company, his hands and eyes cover the sky, you don't need to go against him. 
His Shanghai company has at least hundreds of third-order experts sitting around on weekdays. Even if you can kill him, it won't be easy to get out of the trap after killing him. Little brother, you, you let me go. The female archer was still begging for her life. It's not impossible. Lin Yan sneered, however, you have to first make an appointment with Yi Shanghai to the location I stipulated. He didn't believe in humanity, and he didn't intend for the female archer to honestly obey. Snort. He tied the time bomb into the female archer's tights. At the time if I don't see Yi Shanghai come by himself at the specified location, you will die. Lin Yan pressed against the enchantress's ear and said indifferently. Don't worry. Don't worry. The female archer nodded her head repeatedly. She had seen Lin Yan's methods, his methods were too rare and outrageous, only she couldn't think of them, there was nothing Lin Yan couldn't do. She was already a little afraid, and naturally believed in what Lin Yan had tied to her. It should be similar to the curse of a cursor, which would kill him if he didn't fulfill the agreement by the time. Could it be that he has awakened multiple supernatural abilities? The female archer couldn't understand how Lin Yan possessed so many means even if she thought about it. After descending the mountain, Xu Qi, who had packed up everything, waited at the entrance of the back door. Lin Yan. She was a little surprised to see Lin Yan bringing the woman down the mountain, you actually didn't kill her? It's not like you. Why is her stomach so bulging? You two have only been on the mountain for less than an hour, how come you're pregnant? The female archer cut Xu Qi severely, she really hated her early death. Don't talk nonsense. Lin Yan frowned. Hey, okay. Xu Qi nodded. Are you going to bring her along to live in the dormitory with me? No. I'm going to kill someone first. Lin Yan said in a cold voice. Kill someone again. You're a homicidal maniac, aren't you? Xu Qi spat out, blocking Lin Yan's path. You want to block me? Lin Yan's tone flashed with murderous intent. You're wearing this dust folk costume, it's too eye-catching. And it's not comfortable either, so change your clothes before you go. Xu Qi nodded her chin. Lin Yan frowned, this girl seemed a little too enthusiastic about him. What exactly are your plans for me? He stared into Xu Qi's eyes. Xu Qi gulped. You want to kill me again? I really just simply think you're handsome. Ha! Lin Yan moved his eyes away. There was no such thing as love without a reason in this world, especially so in the middle of this apocalypse. However, Xu Qi wasn't a threat to him for the time being, and could even offer help. Then he would be happy to enjoy it, just keep vigilant in his mind. I'll be right back oh. Xu Qi commanded. Lin Yan looked at the female archer, I'll be following you all the way, you'd better not play smart. Okay. The female archer nodded, and a flash of anticipation actually flashed under her eyes. Ha! Lin Yan sneered, Yi Shanghai's company has gifted people who can detect stealth skills, right? Nope, how could there be? He's a small Shanghai company. The female archer denied it. Snap. Lin Yan slapped her across the face, sending several of her teeth flying, as I said, don't play small minds in front of me. Otherwise, you won't die until you shatter into 10,000 pieces. Gulp. The female archer gritted her teeth, you saw it all and still asked me. Just wanted to beat you up. Lin Yan grinned. You're fucking psychotic, aren't you? The female archer wanted to spray like that, but Lin Yan was really a bit of a psychopath. After thinking about it, she still swallowed her words back. The clothes are back. Hurry up and change into them. Xu Qi threw a set of clothes over. Surprisingly, it was a tuxedo. Where did you get this? Lin Yan asked with a frown, you even have clothes that boys wear? Eh, the auditorium is holding a celebration, I borrowed it from there. Xu Qi blushed, you take a look first to see if it fits, if it doesn't I'll go back and borrow a set for you. Lin Yan shook his head, this borrowing, 80% was not the intention. But now that things were urgent, he was too lazy to count. Changing into a tuxedo. Previously, as a dust folk, he had grown up only being able to wear unclothed numbered hemp clothes. 18 years, or the first time I wore a tuxedo. But he wore it skillfully. Wow. Xu Qi's eyes widened, sure is handsome. People rely on their clothes, rough and gray, even a big star would be unattractive. After Lin Yan changed into this tuxedo, his already clean face looked extremely handsome. Paired with his cold eyes and hard-lined facial contours, it gave people a strong sense of oppression. Indeed not bad. The female archer also had to nod in agreement. Let's go. Lin Yan wasn't moved by any external distractions and was bent on nothing but revenge. Yi Shanhai was very powerful in Lighthouse City, and if he was left alone, he would definitely bring a lot of trouble to himself. He must be eradicated as early as possible. How did he know my location? Lin Yan asked with a frown. You just made a scene at the cafe, making such a big commotion, and you're asking me how I found you? The female archer was exasperated and laughed. I mean, how did you achieve such an efficient transfer of information? Lin Yan asked indifferently. There were no cell phones in this world, not even landlines. The fact that he had slaughtered the Yi mansion last night and hadn't found any similar creations was proof of this. Communication crystals. The female archer glanced at Lin Yan in surprise, and then sneered indistinctly after remembering that he was a dust folk. Sewer rats, it was only natural that they didn't know anything about the outside world. Ha! 
Lin Yan took out a few crystals that he had pulled out of the female archer's tights earlier. Is this it? HM. After you crush it, you can send a message with the crystal that has been bound to this one. The female archer explained. What a pain in the ass. Lin Yan frowned. This means of communication was far less convenient than a cell phone. But it was after all the ability to communicate remotely. Until we can summon satellites and base stations, we can only make do with this first. He tossed a communication crystal to Shu Qi. I'll contact you when I come back at night, and if you regret it send me a message in advance as well. I won't be back. Don't worry. Shu Qi accepted the communication crystal in a very precious manner. This thing was very expensive, general communication was still expressed by letters, only very urgent matters would use the communication crystal. Let's go, go kill Yi Shanghai. Lin Yan gave the female archer a push. I have legs. The female archer muttered indignantly. Outrageous, actually being rushed for more by my girlfriend. Families, ask for a recommendation, five-star praise, reward trifecta. Don't play smart. Lin Yan stood outside the gates of the mountain and see company and grimly instructed the female archer. Don't worry. The female archer nodded and walked into the mountain and see company's building. Lin Yan indifferently watched as she disappeared into the building's entrance and lowered the brim of his hat. He bought a newspaper on the side of the road and then leaned against the wall, waiting and looking at it at the same time. Sure enough, it's the front page headline. Lin Yan sneered. In the Dust Folk District, the Lighthouse newspaper was distributed for free. Every day on it, it recorded what kind of achievements the Upper Folk had gained and what decrees the Upper Folk had enacted that were worthy of gratitude. The all-encompassing information inculcated the Dust Folk to believe that Lighthouse City was getting better and that the end would soon be over. All this was because of the tireless efforts of the Upper Folk. But today, different words appeared in the Lighthouse newspaper and on the front page. Wanted. Vicious extra-legal maniacs, unforgiving murderous demons. Bright red in huge fonts served as the headline. Lin Yan grinned and looked down. Dust folk Lin Yan's awakening of a special talent led to an inflated personality and insanity. Afterward, he broke into the upper folk district for no reason, killing two police station sentries, brutally abusing the Yi Mansion's mother and daughter, and slaughtering all 18 of the Yi Mansion's guards. At 8 o'clock this morning, the thug Lin Yan appeared again at the Lucky Cafe of the Upper Star College to carry out a terrorist attack. This attack resulted in five deaths, and the son of Zheng Zheng Fu Hao of the Zhang clan was injured. Mr. Yi Shanghai, the general manager of Shanghai Corporation, and Mr. Zheng Tuzin, the chairman of Zhang clan group, expressed their indignation and strongly condemned this. They called for the arrest of the culprit Lin Yan as soon as possible and jointly funded a reward of $1 million as a reward for the arrest. Rather willing to give up. Lin Yan's eyes grew colder and colder. The newspaper described in detail the details of his murder yesterday, completely portraying him as a heartless psychopath. On the other hand, not a single word was mentioned about what happened to his sister. After all, the Lighthouse City General Police Department has confirmed that the sinful citizen Lin Yan is now classified as an S-Class wanted criminal. Danger level, extremely dangerous. It's highly likely that he's still roaming around in the upper civilization district, so all the people are invited to actively report him. If the report is true, you will receive a reward of $10,000. If he can be captured alive and twisted to the police station, he will receive the title of honorary citizen, plus a reward of $1 million. Overnight, I'm worth a million dollars? Lin Yan laughed more and more morosely. He could still remember. Before he had killed anyone, as a dust folk, he was only barely equal to a loaf of bread in the eyes of the high and mighty Shang folk. He scanned the paragraph at the end of the page. The dust folk are all harboring sinful genes, the seeds of the worst of the worst. But the upper folk remain merciful at heart, and will not blame the entire dust folk for the crimes of the murderous demon Lin Yan. But given the serious damage he had caused as well as the losses. For the next week, all the dust folk of Lighthouse City will need to collectively work one hour of overtime to make amends. Please cherish the limited resources in Doomsday and our hard-won lives. By the end of it, there was no forgetting to publicize their righteousness. Next, it's all the usual publicizing of feats and painting big pies. Ha! Lin Yan put the newspaper away and casually threw it in the trash. Yi Shanghai had already followed the female archer out of the company. Lin Yan silently put on his invisibility cloak and began to make his move. Soon, Yi Shanghai was led by the female archer to a secluded street corner. Why isn't that kid here? Yi Shanghai frowned. He and I agreed to meet here, so I guess he wanted to make sure the surroundings were safe? The female archer shook her head. Why don't we wait for a while? Ha! Yi Shanghai morosely showed his teeth and smiled, good, as long as he dares to come, I will definitely let him die without a burial place. He had a mage made silence note on him, the sound could only be heard by those within a meter. And there were also items that could detect stealth. As long as Lin Yan appeared, an alarm could be raised. Will your plan work or not? That kid is very strong. I almost died in his hands, and he even put a curse on me, so I'm putting my life in your hands. The female archer asked Yi Shanghai in a low voice. Don't worry. Yi Shanhai nodded, I've already notified the police department, the city guards, and Zhang Tuzin. 
A large number of experts under them have already formed an encirclement around the periphery. That brat will definitely not be able to escape as long as he dares to show his face. He paused and looked at the female archer with a cold smile. And you know very well that with that brat's viciousness, after he kills me, he will never leave you alive. You would have had no choice but to trust me. The female archer laughed and did not reply. Why hasn't? It appeared yet? Yi Shanhai frowned, his heart growing more and more jittery. This time, he had brought out all the experts who could detect stealth. These experts were spread out in all directions, but whenever Lin Yan dared to enter the 300 meter range around him, he could immediately detect it. The roof of the Shanghai Corporation building. The wind blew Lin Yan's sleeves around. After he placed the explosives on the last burst, his feet stepped on the roof of the building, and his military binoculars observed the alley where he had agreed to meet, a kilometer away. Looking at the two people, Yi Shanhai and the female archer, who were whispering, a chilling smile appeared at the corner of his mouth. That's right, this was exactly the game he was playing to get rid of the tiger. Because Yi Shanhai was surrounded by gifted people who could detect stealth, there was no way for the Shanhai group to enter. Now that Yi Shanhai had brought the experts of the Shanhai group with him, they were all transferred out of the building by him. He then entered in a dignified manner. Strutting around, he set C4 explosives in the building's hallways. Now that all the bombs had been placed, once detonated, it would blow the entire Shanghai building into rubble. Appreciate it. Appreciate your life's work turning into ruins before dying in despair. Lin Yan leaped down the building. After deliberately revealing his face, causing a huge commotion and scaring away all the innocent people, he once again donned his invisibility cloak and came to safety. Within the alley, Yi Shanhai received the communication. What? That kid appeared over at the Shanghai building? What's going on? The female archer frowned and asked. I don't know what's going on, that kid appeared over at the mountain and sea building, we've been tricked. Yi Shanhai angrily waved his hand, all of you rush back to the Shanhai group with me. The experts hidden in the shadows all ventured out and followed Yi Shanhai back to the Shanhai building. That kid should still be in the vicinity, give me a carpet search, dig three feet into the ground and dig him out for me. Yi Shanhai's eyes were bloodshot. This time, I've been completely fooled by this kid. The female archer felt immense fear. She was still carrying the curse placed on her by Lin Yan. The police department and city guards are also coming this way, he can't escape. Yi Shanhai shouted angrily. The roof of the house in the distance. Lin Yan used his military binoculars to admire the frantic Yi Shanhai while pressing the detonation button in his hand. Boom! In the next moment, the Shanhai building shot out blazing flames. The powerful shockwave caused the glass to all shatter, the rocks to crumble, and the building's walls to directly collapse. Rumble! The explosion triggered a chain of explosions that pushed the flames higher and higher, eventually turning into a skyward mushroom cloud that rose tens of meters. The pulse waves caused by the explosions swept all around, and the gifted who had entered the building to search were instantly crushed by the terrifying air pressure and blown into a blur of blood mist. The many experts outside the field were also crumpled and spat out blood as they flew backwards, and it was unknown how many people died. Bang bang bang. Yi Shanhai and the female archer were farther away, but they were also both shaken to the ground, their ears buzzing and their seven orifices gurgling with blood. Flames rose and smoke filled the sky. Broken explosion scene. Yi Shanhai coughed and crawled out of the shattered pile of building materials, his head blank. This level of destructive power had never been seen before in the history of Lighthouse City. This, is this the wrath of the gods? The Shangmin in the distance also shivered, their faces pale. No. Yi Shanhai's eyes glared as he saw the building that had been blown to rubble. He didn't care about his wife, much less his daughter. What he cared about the most was his own building his own money. But now, all of his life's achievements and efforts collapsed, as if it had been wiped off the face of the earth by the wrath of God. It ceased to exist in an instant. This, what kind of power is this? He was shocked and angry, appalled and afraid, his body trembling constantly. Lin Yen. Must be that dust folk. Bastard. He did this. He hissed. This beast must have made a pact with the evil god. He, the minion of the evil god. In the distance, Lin Yen admired the scene with a crazy smile on his face. That's right. That's it. He just wanted to see, these hateful sons of bitches, die in despair. What the hell is going on here? What's happening? Both the police commissioner and the city guard's governor arrived. Both of them were shocked by the scene in front of them when they arrived. Instantly destroying a building, even a top-tier gifted person above the seventh rank might not be able to do that, right? Can that freshly awakened dust folk have this kind of ability? They all frowned. Administrator. Do do. You guys have to do right by my mountain and sea group. It's all because of that brute. He must have degenerated into a minion of the evil god. Yi Shanhai was in a state of madness, hissing. Got it. You go home and wait first. The police commissioner frowned and looked at Yi Shanhai, whose clothes were broken and scorched black. His face was as cold as frost, and he waved his hand in disgust. Now that the Shanhai building had collapsed, the doomed Yi family had lost their power. There was no human feelings to speak of in the doomsday, and Yi Shanhai was already no different from a dead man in the administrator's eyes. 
Therefore, the attitude of facing Yi Shanhai at this time was completely different from when he was at the Yi Mansion this morning. Me, Yi Shanhai gritted his teeth. Shanhai Group was a subsidiary under the Zhang family's name, and now that the Shanhai Group building had been blown up and collapsed, with Zhang Tuzin's character, he would definitely let him take the blame. He would most likely be imprisoned for dereliction of duty. Damn it, damn it. It's all because of that damned beast. His heart was filled with despair and his mouth was filled with a bitter taste. To this day, he didn't regret what he had done in the slightest, didn't regret restraining his daughter's character more. He only blamed Lin Yan, this damned dustman, for ruining everything he had worked so hard for. Cough cough. The female archer staggered to her feet and spat out blood, her head spinning as she looked around at the bodies being carried away. With this wave of explosions, it was feared that at least hundreds of people had died. It's now. In the distance. Lin Yan watched the moment Yi Shanhai and the female archer brushed shoulders. He pressed the bound bomb initiator in his hand. Boom. The flames lit up once again. The powerful explosive force instantly tore through the female archer's tights, followed by the terrifying explosive force that tore through the female archer's body as well. It directly blew up her body into pieces. Not good. Yi Shanhai's eyes widened, his will to survive was extremely strong, and he directly pulled in two cushions and yanked on his chest. Boom. Under the wave of explosions, he was crumpled away and fell in the distance in a bloody mess, not knowing whether he was alive or dead. What? The police commissioner felt his face being smacked. It was just a matter of the building bizarrely exploding just now, but now Yi Shanhai was actually blown away in front of him. Cackle cackle cackle. He clenched his fists, lawless. This beast is simply looking for death. Give me an immediate search, search the entire city. Catch and kill immediately, leave no survivors. The city guard governor also roared angrily. He wasn't standing too far away, but he was also blown up enough that blood was spilling from the corners of his mouth at this moment. 222. Two, two. The police inspector and the city guards immediately spread out and began a wide search. It's too bizarre. The metropolitan governor felt icy cold all over his body. Such a terrifying destructive power, yet it could be triggered without any fluctuation of alien energy, and the caster could not even be seen. This kind of killing method was simply like a ghost or god. I saw it. Beside the two, a detective with the gift of farsightedness projected the image he saw. The brick roof. Lin Yan stood indifferently and gave a middle finger in that direction before turning his head and jumping off the roof, disappearing from the detective's view. Arrogant. Arrogance. Arrogant. The administrator was so infuriated that he broke his defenses and his eyes turned red. He must be caught out for him in a hurry, or there will be no peace in Lighthouse City. The governor and the administrator came to a consensus, immediately reported to the police, and adjust both his danger level and bounty upwards. Arrest him at all costs. Lin Yan had been outside the encirclement, and those gifted with the ability to detect stealth were ultimately in the minority. Cloaked in an optical cloak of invisibility, trying to capture him in the bustling uptown area was like looking for a needle in a haystack. And it was still a transparent needle. Touché. He easily escaped the manhunt. He returned to the backdoor path of the Upper Star Academy, and then with a little footstep, he tumbled inside the school wall with the help of a mechanical exoskeleton. Shu Chi hasn't contacted me yet, so it seems there's no backtracking. Lin Yan followed the location provided by Shu Qi and traveled through the campus. It's worthy of being Shang Min's academy ah. He took everything in and his fists clenched together. At the Dust Folks Academy, the lunch was better than the miners, but it was only a choice between wood chip porridge and rotten apples. But the Academy of the Upper Folk, on the other hand, could have four dishes in one soup, and could even see in the garbage cans, fat meat that students had dumped because they disliked it. Damn. Obviously, Lighthouse City's resources are enough for everyone to live in abundance, fed, and clothed through the end of days. But, Lin Yan's killing intent grew more and more bitter as he looked in the direction of Lighthouse City's main residence, but my sister, she was forced to die by a piece of ordinary bread. All of you consuls, deserve to die. 9527. Well, this is her dormitory. Lin Yan confirmed, then directly rolled over the window and entered the house. Is this Shang Min's dormitory? He looked around. There were no dormitories at the Dust Folk School, and no matter how far away from the school, one had to walk there on foot. Once they were late, they would be whipped and physically punished by the perverted upper folk teachers until they were bruised and bloodied. It was also beautifully described as a way to teach people to have a sense of time. I still remember when the teacher was still saying that at Shangming School, there were no students who were late at all. Lin Yan grinned and laughed to himself. Many dust folk kids didn't have the ability to think straight, so they really thought that the upper folk were just more self-disciplined than the dust folk, and were genetically just better. However, if you lived in a warm and bright dormitory, and downstairs was a classroom, it was also simply impossible for you to be late. Forcibly ignoring objective factors and demanding perfection. All for the sole purpose of enslaving and disciplining, making people feel inferior and not dare to resist. This, this is Sean Mean's educational philosophy ah. Touché. His eyes lowered as he walked through the bright and spacious single dormitory. The single student dormitory, which was a full 30 to 40 square meters, 
was fully equipped and had the right temperature. There was even a magic ice oven that could keep food fresh. Doomsday. Ha. Lin Yan opened the ice oven, took out the bread and milk that was preserved inside, and chewed silently. Doomsday is a lie. Ah. Wrapped in her bathrobe, Xu Qi walked out of the bathroom and couldn't help but exclaim when she saw Lin Yan in front of the refrigerator. Lin Yan swept a glance at Xu Qi. It had to be said that the girl's figure was very material. Now that only her front breasts were covered, her freshly bathed skin was soft and smooth, it was truly the best on earth. But unfortunately, nowadays, he simply had absolutely no interest in the affairs of men and women. The day my enemy doesn't die out, the day I can't rest in peace. He turned his head, his gaze cold, and continued to lower his head to eat bread. Hey! You just sneak in like that and look at my body. Isn't there any need to apologize? Shuki questioned, disgruntled. Sorry. Lin Yan said coldly. Don't explain too much when things can be solved with a single sentence. You. Shu Qi wanted to say something else. Lin Yan threw a few gold bars he found in Yi Shanhai's office safe onto the table. This should be quite valuable, right? Wow. Gold bars. Where did you get that? Shu Qi was surprised. Gold was hard currency in Doomsday, and these few gold bars were worth at least a few million dollars, equivalent to Yi Shanhai's family fortune. For your lodging, and all my expenses will be deducted from this in the future, I don't want to take advantage of people for nothing. Lin Yan was straightforward, and I'm wanted right now, there's no way I can exchange it myself. You're quite preachy. Shu Qi smiled slightly, she was holding a newspaper in her hand. But you're really bullish, a special edition of the newspaper was actually urgently reprinted for you today. Oh? Lin Yan raised an eyebrow, and finished the newspaper. The response is actually so fast. He sneered. It had only been a matter of time before the consul had set his wanted level at S, and the bounty had been set at five million dollars. Ha! Back when my parents' mine collapsed, you guys dragged your feet for four or five days before reluctantly rescuing them. If that time had half the reaction speed of now, both parents would have survived. His intention to completely destroy the lighthouse council grew more and more resolute. You're now one of the most vicious wanted criminals the lighthouse has ever seen. Shu Qi felt incomparably irritated. Such a great wanted criminal was hiding in his room. Since the establishment of the entire lighthouse city, there had only been 10 S-class wanted criminals, and all of them were extremely evil people who had shaken the city for a while. The $5 million bounty, even among these 10 people, could be ranked at the top of the list. You must do your best to become the super criminal with the highest bounty in the history of the lighthouse. Shu Qi's eyes contained endless expectations, and he patted Lin Yan's shoulder expectantly. Lin Yan frowned, he was indifferent to bounties. Hey, what will I call you from now on? Calling you Lin Yan directly doesn't seem convenient in school. Shu Qi nodded his chin, then had a flash of insight. There, how about I call you Brother Sin from now on? Ha! Lin Yan shook his head breathlessly and didn't bother with this nervous woman. He was really tired. Where do I live? He asked. This sofa is a single bed when you put it down, I've prepared all the sheets and bedding for you during the time you've been out, so you'll sleep on it from now on. Shu Qi pointed to the sofa. Well, I won't stay long, after I kill Zhang Fuhao, I'll leave. Lin Yan laid down on the sofa, preparing to supplement his sleep. Don't be in a hurry, I'll go to the cafeteria first and get you some food. Shu Qi spat out her tongue, then turned around and left the dormitory door. By the way, she unlocked the door, lest someone enter the dormitory and discover Lin Yan. Lin Yan put on his invisibility cloak, placed the sensors around him, and slept with his clothes. This journey was too exhausting, not only was he mentally tense, but he had also suffered a lot psychologically in the past few days. He slept until the next morning, refreshed. He rolled over and sat up, seeing the meal and note on the table. I warmed it up for you before class, so eat when you get up. I didn't see that you love sleeping so much, it's almost like you're more sleepy than a pig. Oh, oh. Lin Yan smiled slightly, this little girl, is really different. He silently ate all the food, then cleared the table and washed the bowls. Then opened the summoner panel. Familiarizing himself with the items he could summon. HM? The experience bar is rising so fast? Lin Yan raised an eyebrow. The progress bar of a third rank summoner had already met most of it. It seems that any kills caused by the items I summoned are counted in my upgrade experience bar. He nodded. This was very good news for him. In the next rank, a qualitative leap in strength will be realized. Vulcan cannon, gatling, mechanical battle armor, laser sword. As long as you upgrade to the fourth rank, you should be able to walk sideways, at least in Lighthouse City. He had been following today's explosion scene with his binoculars. When the female archer exploded, the city guard governor was five meters away and was bleeding from the blast. And the city guard governor must be the strongest group of gifted people in Lighthouse City. From this, we can speculate that there should be no gifted person in Lighthouse City who can carry the Vulcan cannon. He was analyzing. The lock of the dormitory door was opened. Shu Qi came in with two lunches and her eyes lit up when she saw Lin Yan. You finally woke up. You don't know what a mess it's gotten into outside now. Has Zhang Fu Hao returned to the Upper Star Academy? Lin Yan asked indifferently. He didn't care about Lighthouse City, he was only concerned about the movements of his enemies. 
No, after he was injured by you yesterday, he was dragged back to the Zhang family, and he probably won't come back until he recovers from his injuries, Xu Qi said. Well, Lin Yan was a little disappointed but not surprised. It seems that I still have to take the initiative to do so. Lin Yan rolled over and stood up. Where are you going again? You've made too much of a fuss in the past two days. The entire upper city is under martial law. A lot of people are patrolling the streets to line up. Xu Qi said evenly. I only want revenge now. The risk was already there for me. Lin Yan shook his head. The most important thing was that as long as he rose one more rank, he would basically be able to ignore the strongest people in Lighthouse City. Once the Vulcan cannon was out, even a siege might not be able to take him down. After all, there were only so many Shangmin in the entire Lighthouse City, and the city guards and police department together were estimated to be only a few thousand. Brother Sin, you really don't stop, your hands get itchy when you don't make some big news for a day. Xu Qi was speechless. Hmm. Mentioning the news, Lin Yan reached out and shook his hand, today's newspaper, did you buy it? Newspaper. You're quite concerned about current events. Xu Qi handed the newspaper to Lin Yan, I've read it, you're still wanted, but the rank and bounty haven't changed. Sigh, so disappointing. I thought they wouldn't be able to catch you for a day and raise your bounty to 10 million dollars. That makes you the most wanted villain in the history of Lighthouse City. I would like to call you, the Emperor of Crime. Lin Yan ended up with the newspaper and didn't pay any attention to Xu Qi going crazy, focusing on reading the newspaper. Soon he found the follow-up report on the Shanghai building incident. Hmm. He frowned. Yi Shanghai didn't die? Yeah, he's a fifth order expert, and he's so afraid of death that he's rumored to wear internal steel plates every day. Xu Qi grinned. It's already a miracle that you were able to blow up that cautious miser like that. Well, it's good that he didn't die. Lin Yan nodded. Yi Shanhai was the general manager of a company under the name of Zhang Clan, so he must have a lot of involved connections with Zhang Tuzin. Perhaps he could get more information about Zhang Fu Hao from Yi Shanhai. He put on his optical cloak of invisibility and prepared to go out. Brother Sin, what are you doing? Xu Qi's head was full of questions. Going to the hospital. Lin Yan was succinct. You're going to the hospital to kill Yi Shanhai. Xu Qi's eyes widened, you're crazy. Yi Shanhai is now under key protection, there must be quite a few people in the hospital waiting for you just to catch you. Lin Yan waved his hand, don't worry, I have a plan. Alas, then you won't eat your lunch? Xu Qi asked. I just finished eating when you entered. Lin Yan closed the dormitory door. Xu Qi puffed out her face, it's really more like a pig than I thought. She turned her head to angrily show off her lunch, her big eyes rolling, not knowing what she was thinking. Snort. After Lin Yan flipped out of the Upper Star Academy, he took off his invisibility cloak in the back of the mountain and summoned a mask. This was the optical mimicry mask. In Blue Star, it was reserved for agents to use in emergencies and to disguise themselves. They all only know that I can be stealthy, and the focus of the guard is definitely on defense against stealth as well. Lin Yan snapped the mask onto his face. Soon, the mask began to fit automatically, changing his face. Then I'll do the opposite and press on without stealth. Walk in with a big strut. The corner of Lin Yan's mouth raised in a dangerous arc, his eyes cold and sharp. Lighthouse Consul Hospital. This was the best hospital in the lighthouse, with the most excellent medical resources, and it was exclusively supplied to the city councillors as well as the consuls and other aristocrats among the upper folk. Even ordinary upper folk were not qualified to enter this place for medical treatment. Yi Shanhai was able to enter this place because he ate the dividends of the key protection, otherwise it would be impossible for him to recuperate here. The streets were filled with patrolling city guards and police stations. Compared to yesterday, it was indeed a lot more tightly guarded. He squatted at the cafe in front of the hospital, his eyes constantly surveying the flow of people entering and exiting the hospital. After finally confirming the target, he pressed the money under the coffee cup and walked out of the cafe. This squatting, directly squatted until dusk, the moment when the doctors got off work. Dr. 1. The two city guards guarding the door saluted. Um, Wang Defa walked out of the gate coldly and proudly, and even the city guards guarding the gate only dared to check his credentials before letting him leave. As the chief physician of the consul's hospital, his social status was extremely esteemed. Even those counselors had to look up to him and befriend him. The difference in status between him and an ordinary Shangmin was almost the same as the difference between a Shangmin and a dustman. Touche. Just as he walked around the corner, his mouth was covered. Eh? Wang Defa was inwardly horrified and wanted to struggle, but his awakened talent was for medical treatment, and he didn't have much of a fighting ability at all. Soon, he felt his body go numb, his white eyes rolled up, and he was electrocuted. He was then dragged to the alley. Lin Yan indifferently looked at the unconscious Wang Defa. This was the imitation target that he had carefully selected for his squatting. One was that it was similar to him in stature and would not be easily recognized. Secondly, Wang Defa had a higher status and would not be easily interrogated in detail. Most importantly, Wang Defa's force value was weaker and good for hijacking. If he disguised himself as the other party, the success rate of infiltration would be great. Snort. 
Lin Yan stripped off all of Wang Defa's clothes, folded the clothes that Xu Qi had given him, and carefully placed them in the summoner space. Put. Wang Defa, who only had a pair of underwear left, was thrown directly into the trash by Lin Yan. He just wanted to leave, not too worried, turned back and lifted the lid of the trash can again, turning the voltage of the electric stick to the maximum. Zip. Zip. Zip zip zip. Until Wang Defa was foaming at the mouth, incontinence of feces and urine, after a moment it was estimated that it was impossible to wake up. Only then did Lin Yan feel relieved to leave. Before leaving the entrance of the alley, he inputted Wang Defa's facial features into his mask, and his appearance changed. Dr. 1. Why are you back again? The two city guards were a little confused. Lin Yan indifferently swept a glance at the two men and casually pulled out his credentials. The two city guards did not become suspicious. The attending physician of the ruler's hospital had a high status and a high eye socket, and didn't treat the city guards as human beings at all. Naturally, they were too lazy to explain anything to them. Probably lost something. After the two men had seen the documents, they released Lin Yan. Dr. 1. Dr. 1. After coming in, the nurse and the other doctors greeted Lin Yan with smiles. Lin Yan kept a cold face and didn't have to pay attention to anyone, at most he just nodded. Dr. Wang is really cold and fascinating, if I could marry into his family, it would be a turnaround. It's a pity that he can't see me. The nurses were pity. Heh, what kind of dog are you pretending to be? It's just an awakening of a medical talent. Why can't a person like me, who worked hard to become a doctor later in life, be better than him? The doctor who was ignored then inwardly cursed, looking down on me huh? In the future, I'll make sure to report you to the dean, so that you'll be docked your bonus. Lin Yan walked from ward to ward, looking for Yi Shanhai's ward. Soon, he saw Yi Shanhai's name on the patient information sheet at the entrance of the intensive care ward. Found you. A cold sharp light flashed in Lin Yan's eyes. Yi Shanhai's hospital bed was identified, but there were two guards playing cards at the door. It was estimated that they were both gifted with stealth detection skills, squatting here to guard themselves. How should I blend in? Lin Yan frowned. It was easy to enter the hospital, but Yi Shanhai's ward was definitely a key guard, so getting in was probably not going to be that easy. Cough cough cough. A coughing sound came from inside the hospital bed. A nurse hurriedly ran out from the door, the patient's condition has deteriorated a bit, his blood pressure is suddenly unstable. Hey, Dr. 1. The nurse's eyes lit up and she hurriedly said to Lin Yan, Dr. 1. You quickly go in and take a look at the patient. Lin Yan froze, but the nurse blinked at him. Lin Yan nodded. The two gifted people were also startled and waved at Lin Yan, doctor, quickly go in and take a look. Um, Lin Yan nodded and walked into the ward with large strides. Afterward, he closed the door behind him. Whom? The two gifted ones frowned, wanting to open the door and observe. 2. Dr. Wang is a medical gifted person, healing can never be disturbed, the two of you should not go in. The nurse said repeatedly. Well, rather, I have heard of it. The gifted person on the left patted his companion's shoulder. We may have to rely on Dr. Wang to treat us in the future, so don't break their rules. Our duty is just to detect if anyone is approaching stealthily. Also, the companion nodded, and the two of them sat on the sofa by the doorway, continuing to play cards. The nurse turned around with relief and left. Lin Yan had just walked into the house and placed a mute baffle that blocked the transmission of sound from inside and outside the house. Worthy of being a medically gifted person, a marvelous doctor, just a few seconds after entering, that she stopped coughing. The awakened one spat while playing cards. Hey, really envious. This fucked up doomsday, people decide their fate at birth. Wang Defa's parents are both counselors, and all of them are also A-ranked talents. He was born inheriting S-class talent, and was destined to be the topmost person in Lighthouse City at birth. Don't even need any effort at all, just need to grow up happily. The companions on the side followed suit and complained. Although they relied on their own efforts and mixed a well-paid job. But there was no comparison to a guy like Wang Defa who was born with a golden spoon. Hey, don't worry about your duty. Come to think of it, aren't we much happier than those dust folk who are only worthy of gnawing on cockroach chunks for the rest of their lives and suffocating to death in the mines at the age of 30? Yeah, yeah. Grateful for the lighthouse, grateful for the lighthouse. Inside the ward. Yi Shanhai coughed violently, his face saucy. His body was scorched black from the blast, and he had just gotten out of a life-threatening situation and woke up from his coma. He looked vaguely at the figure approaching in front of him, pointing at his neck and frantically begging for help. Lin Yan slapped his back patting out the apple core stuck in his throat. Eh? Electricity flashed in Ling Yan's mind, and his eyes looked towards the doorway. It was that nurse. Someone is helping me. Lin Yan frowned. Although he didn't know who it was, as long as the outcome was good, there was no need to worry much. As long as revenge could be accomplished. He turned his head and saw Yi Shanhai's horrified face and glaring pupils, and the corner of his mouth grinned. This is our first official meeting, Yi Shanhai. No, it's impossible. How could you possibly break through so many hurdles? Come before me. Yi Shanhai shook his head, but his injuries were too severe for him to shout at all. 
Lin Yan pulled a stool and sat at the head of Yi Shanhai's bed. Your vitality is tenacious, out of my expectation. But that's good. Lin Yan peeled the citrus at the bedside and stared at Yi Shanhai with cold eyes. Tell me everything you know about the Zhang group. You, want to take revenge on, Zhen clan? Yi Shanhai stopped hissing in a mute voice. He knew that his chances of survival had been cut off today, and he would definitely die. After understanding this, he instead calmed down completely. Zhang Fu Hao must die. All those who participated in my abuse of my sister must die. Lin Yan silently looked at Yi Shanhai, of course, Zheng Tuzin, who offered a reward for killing me, can't escape either. Ha! Cough, ha ha cough. Yi Shanhai knocked his head on the pillow, tears coming out of his eyes as he laughed. Do you know who Zheng Tuzin is? And do you know what Zheng Tuzin means? He shook his head, one of the top three groups in Lighthouse City, with tens of billions of assets. In the entire Lighthouse City city guards, police system, and even the council, there are all people from the Zhang family. You should think that I am hard enough to kill, right? The Yi family should be a force that rat dust folk like you feel like a behemoth, right? But, to tell you the truth, I'm just a dog raised by Zhang Tuzin. You want to kill Zhang Tuzin? Ha ha ha. He laughed maniacally, you might as well say that you want to overthrow the entire Lighthouse City all by yourself? As the culprit for all this tragedy, the counselors and consuls of Lighthouse City will also face the judgment they deserve. Lin Yan's voice was cold and firm. His face was half hidden in the darkness and half in the dusk sunlight. Looking at it in a trance, it was like a two-faced shura. Good, good, good. Yi Shanhai laughed in exasperation at Lin Yan's childish statement, I can tell you all the information about the Zheng family. Before dying, it would be fun to push the enemy who destroyed my Yi family into the abyss. You say. Lin Yan took out a tape recorder and started recording. The sun completely set. After Yi Shanhai explained everything clearly, he quietly lay back down, kill me, my undead spirit will be staring at you from the sky. See you crushed like a bedbug by the Zhang family. A hideous smile appeared on his face. Snort. The military spike in Lin Yan's hand reflected the arc of light and stabbed out instantly. Ah. Ah. The vicious smile on Yi Shanhai's face froze, and he closed his eyes tightly in fear. He was not a good man after all, and could not withstand the fear of death. In the next moment, he slowly opened his eyes and realized that the military spike was actually stuck on the wall next to his face. I suddenly changed my mind. Lin Yan grinned, leaned down, and patted Yi Shanhai's cheek. I want you to watch me kill your master with your own eyes and destroy the lighthouse's council with your own eyes. And then, then kill you at the moment of your greatest despair. Cackle. One by one, he crushed the bones of Yi Shanhai's entire body. Hiss. Yi Shanhai's forehead was densely covered in sweat from the pain, and he continuously sucked in cool air, kill me. Quickly kill me. Just now, there is one point you said wrong. I don't find it difficult to kill you. Quite the contrary, I kill you as if it were a bag of tricks. But, don't let people like you die in utter despair. The lighthouse will never become better. Lin Yan grinned. He punched down, smashing Yi Shanhai's spine and paralyzing his entire body. Laying rotting in a hospital bed, watching the destruction of everything that is stale. Wait quietly for the moment when the scythe of death returns to your neck. Lin Yan made a neck wiping motion at him. At this moment, the sun set completely, and Lin Yan's face fell into complete darkness. Kata. The two gifted people at the door frowned, increasingly realizing that something was wrong. Dr. Wang had gone in for too long. They hurriedly opened the door and lit the oil lamp. Mr. Yi. The two men's eyes widened. The entire hospital bed had been dyed red with blood, and Yi Shanhai's entire body was paralyzed, collapsing onto the bed like a deflated balloon. The gifted man looked at the fluttering curtains and the open window, and reacted extremely quickly, immediately running to the window. Catch him! He yelled. But Lin Yan's speed was too fast, and he happened to hurry to escape within the time gap between night and day, when the street lights were not lit. Not many people could see him at all, let alone capture him. Damn it! The companion looked at Lin Yan's completely disappeared figure, cursed angrily, turned his head to look at the dying Yi Shanhai, ran out of the hospital room, and shouted. First aid! First aid! The entire consul's hospital, instantly in chaos. At the core of Lighthouse City, a lighthouse stood. Lighthouse City could guarantee that it would not be invaded by foreign beasts precisely because of the special energy waves emanating from the lighthouse. Every day, there would be many people outside the lighthouse who would make pilgrimages to give thanks for the lighthouse's shelter. At this moment, the highest level of the lighthouse, the council hall. The three consuls of Lighthouse City and dozens of counselors were gathered together. Pong. The desktop was knocked with a fluffy sound. Strange shame. Simply a strange shame. Our key monitored, layer by layer guarded hospital was actually infiltrated by thugs. They even crushed the target's entire body in front of our guards before leaving at large. Rampant. Too rampant. Could it be that the law and order of our lighthouse city is already unbearable to such an extent? A freshly awakened dust folk rat is able to act recklessly. He can come and go as he pleases. Ah. The counselor grew angrier and angrier as he kept slapping the table. Zheng Tuzin, be quiet. 
The console on the left-hand side of the main seat frowned and knocked on the table. Only then did Zhang Tuzin force down his temper and leaned back in his chair. His veins crumbled and he still hadn't abetted his anger. Although he was very confident and didn't think that a bedbug dustman could threaten his safety. But Yi Shanhai was really a lesson from the past. The key protection for the consul's hospital had been raised to S rank, higher than his home's defense level, even higher. If Lin Yan was really that skillful, it might not be impossible for him to actually sneak into his home one night. He felt a crisis, and it made him restless. He didn't want to open his eyes tomorrow and see Lin Yan standing at the head of his bed, stabbing him in the throat. Although Counselor Zhang is a bit more emotional, what he said does make sense. There were also counselors who chimed in, they felt the same fear. Five million bounty plus martial law didn't even touch his shadow, but instead, we let him abuse our key protection target to the point of total paralysis. This really makes me doubt the police department's ability to handle cases. The obese counselor looked at the police commissioner in a conspiratorial manner. The police department is no better than contributing people. What contribution did your education department make to the capture of Lin Yen? A bunch of maggots who can only play smart, apart from planting steel seals of thought on others, what else can you do? The police commissioner sneered back grimly. You. The obese counselor's eyes widened. All right. Stop it. The city guard captain waved his hand. It's already been investigated clearly that Pariah was disguised as Wang Defa from the consul's hospital and blended into the ward. We found the knocked out Wang Defa in the trash can next to the hospital. This proves that this brat should have an ability similar to the gift of disguise in addition to stealth. The police commissioner added. Stealthy and transfiguration again. Isn't this pariah a summoner? What's wrong with your education department? Is there something wrong with your awakening ceremony? Many counselors turned on the education department's obese counselor and chastised him. The obese counselor was unable to defend himself and his face turned into a pig's liver color in anger. All right. The consul in the main seat frowned. Give me solutions. Stop the pointless bickering. The wanted level of this brat must be raised even higher, and the reward amount increased even further. A counselor suggested. Not bad. Mobilize the police department and city guards to search from house to house. Scratch the ground and find him. The counselors spoke up. Ha! The city guard governor laughed out coldly. What are you laughing at? Why is the governor laughing? The counselors were puzzled. As I see it, your thoughts are all wrong. The city guard governor shook his head. Where would a mere dustman who just awakened come up with such great abilities? You mean? A counselor seemed to have remembered something and his mind shook. Well, he's definitely not alone. The city guard governor tapped his fingers on the desktop. How can a single person have so many natural abilities such as stealth, disguise, summoning, martial arts fighting, long-range attacks, curses, and so on at the same time? Even that ultimate genius who is the most terrifying in the federation is only gifted with three lifetimes at most. Right. Right. The police commissioner immediately chimed in as well. He's definitely not alone. Otherwise, how could we have searched for two days without finding him? Then, who does he represent, exactly? The counselors muttered, fine beads of sweat breaking out on their foreheads. In their minds, a name called out. Jarius. Could it be that organization, has it infiltrated within our lighthouse city? Didn't the Federation send out a notice saying that they had been eliminated? This dustman, is someone from the Jarius organization. The counselors were instantly in disarray, with panicked looks appearing on their faces. If that's the case, we'll have to report it to the Federation. That's not something we can deal with in lighthouse city. Consul. Report it. The counselors said. The black-bearded consul on his right frowned and looked at the city guard capital, have you captured definitive proof, or are you just guessing? The city guard governor's face was embarrassed, it's still just a guess. Nonsense. Blackbeard slammed the table, his face cold, no one is allowed to mention the name of this organization again. Until we get definitive proof, we are also not allowed to mention it again in the newspaper. The lord consul nodded, raised the wanted level, allow special forces to be mobilized, and mention the bounty again as well. With that, the meeting is adjourned. With one hammer, the Lord Consul gave the word, and no one dared to disobey again. After the meeting, the police commissioner and the city guard's governor came in front of Zhang Tuzin, revealing a kind smile, Dong Zhang, a chat? What do you want to chat about? Zhang Tuzin frowned. We have a plan with a 100% certainty to capture that Lin Yan, that is, we need some help from you, Zheng Dong. The police commissioner grinned, his eyes wise and biting. Help? What help? Zheng Tuzin asked. Lin Yan made him sleepless, if there was really a 100% way to catch this bitchy worm, he didn't mind paying some price. According to our investigation, this Lin Yan's motive for committing the crime is purely out of revenge. The police commissioner grinned, he's constantly taking revenge on the people who abused his sister. You're also clear about the origins of those people, it's simply impossible for us to move. Now we can only ask Mr. Zheng to act as bait to lure the snake out of the hole. Don't worry, we will do a good job of focusing on protection and your son will not be harmed. Chang Dudu also nodded his head in assurance. Zheng Tuzin was exasperated and laughed. Don't you think that the words, key protection sound harsh now? 
Administrator Qin and Governor Chang glanced at each other and smiled awkwardly. Yi Shanhai's matter had indeed caused the prestige of the police department and the city guards to fall to pieces. How can you sleep peacefully without drawing out the scourge? Administrator Qin sneered, I don't believe that the Zhang family's protection is still better than the consul's hospital. These words pierced Zhang Tuzan's heart, causing him to instantly break his defenses. Looking at Administrator Qin and Consul Chang's backs, he finally nodded, All right, I'm willing to let my son take the risk. But you guys have to guarantee that he can't be harmed in any way. He he, that's right. Administrator Qin instantly turned around and deeply hugged Zheng Tuzan. Upper Star Academy, Xu Qi's dormitory. Why did you just come back for a meal and have to leave? Xu Qi was puzzled. I've gotten information about the Zhang family from Yi Shanhai, and I probably know where Zhang Fu Hao is hiding. Lin Yan equipped his mechanical exoskeleton and donned an optical cloak, his eyes cold and sharp. I'm going to kill him. There's no need to be in such a hurry. The Zhang family is the counselor family of Lighthouse City, and the family mansion is comparable to a dragon's den. You exposed your ability to disguise yourself again today. Eh? Lin Yan violently turned around, his eyes coldly staring at Xu Qi. How did you know that I mixed into the hospital today by stealth? The newspaper hadn't reported it yet. This. Xu Qi's eyes rolled, of course it was a guess. The consul's hospital is so heavily defended, and you can't be invisible. Aside from disguise, what else can you do to blend in? Lin Yan sneered, this explanation doesn't convince me. Well, actually, my talent is reading minds. Xu Qi spread her hands, I could hear your heart from the very beginning, that's why I made these choices you see. Reading hearts? Lin Yan frowned, then what am I thinking right now? Wanting to kill me? Xu Qi raised her eyebrows and laughed. Ha! The killing intent in Lin Yan's eyes receded, don't use this talent on me again, or you'll be in danger. Oh! Xu Qi sighed in relief and nodded with a smile. Lin Yan looked deeply at Xu Qi, have you gone to exchange my gold bars? Not yet, you need money? Xu Qi asked. After solving Zhang Fu Hao, my goal is too big. In order not to involve you, and for the safety of these secrets inside me, I need to move out. Lin Yan said indifferently. Ha! Huh? Isn't Upper Star Academy good? You don't even have someone who can bring you food when you're out of school. You've been famous throughout Lighthouse City for a long time now. Even if you go out on the street to buy meat, you'll be recognized. Xu Qi was very reluctant for Lin Yan to leave. I have the art of disguise. Lin Yan just said indifferently. Anyway, if you go out on the street one more time now, you'll be in more danger. Xu Qi crossed her arms. Lin Yan sighed helplessly. The bank was also a key regulatory location, and the risk of exposure was high if he went there rashly, otherwise he would have gone to exchange it himself. Looking at Lin Yan's eyes, Xu Qi deflated and muttered, All right, I know, I'll go exchange it tomorrow. At that time, take your stinking money and rent a house wherever you're happy to. Thanks. Lin Yan said thanks before closing the door behind him. Whether Xu Qi was crooked or could read minds, he had no way to ask for proof right now and could only choose to believe it for the time being. Regardless of the other party's purpose in helping him, he could only move out. Such a kind girl should not be dragged down by herself. Inside the dorm room, Xu Qi rolled on the bed in a frenzy. I should have known not to say that I can read minds again, just find another reason. Scared him away. Ah ah ah. Xu Qi ah Xu Qi, you're such an idiot. Soon, Lin Yan arrived at the street level. The martial law was even more severe, and the patrolling city guards were getting denser and denser. They had even mobilized some of the ordinary Shangmin who were gifted with insight into stealth and disguise to join the patrols. Every day, they were paid a thousand dollars. Under this temptation, many people joined the patrol, still really willing to give up. Lin Yan frowned. In this way, it was indeed difficult for him to move an inch. If he wanted to walk all the way to the Zhang family without any obstacles, he would have to feel his way carefully. Just when he wanted to take the roof route, a mechanical steaming car slowly drove through the streets. On the mechanical car, there was someone else using a megaphone stone to publicize. The 35th anniversary of the establishment of the Zhang clan is approaching, and Zhang Tuzin, the head of the Zhang clan, has decided to hold a celebration of the group at 8 o'clock tomorrow, at the Tyson restaurant. All members of the Zhang family will participate in the celebration. As long as the customers who have spent over $10,000 in the stores under the Zhang group, they can participate in the celebration with their consumption records. Hopefully, it will be well known. The mechanical car traveled slowly, to let everyone know about this news propaganda. Ha! <laughs> Lin Yan laughed coldly, playing the trick of luring snakes out of their holes? If it was a dustman from this world who had only been educated in gratitude and hadn't been exposed to any rational thinking upbringing, definitely would have fallen for it, but he came from an information exploding network era and had seen too much. With a single glance, he could see through Zhang's intentions. However, it's convenient, if we can take advantage of this celebration to kill Zhang's father and son together, it would save us a lot of trouble. Lin Yan calculated. The premise of luring a snake out of a hole was that after the snake came out of the hole, they had the ability to sanction the snake. And if what was lured out was a true dragon, it would backfire on all the people who had laid out the plan. You guys think well, it's just a pity that you misjudged my strength. 
his eyes were gloomy. He was not far from advancing to the fourth rank. Take advantage of tonight, upgrade to the fourth rank, and make a big mess of Zheng's celebration tomorrow. Lin Yan's eyes flashed with madness, grinning. If he wanted to make a mess, he would make a big one. He wanted the entire lighthouse city to hear the sound of his revenge. To upgrade, you have to kill people. You have to find a good place to kill people before you can do that. Lin Yan pondered. Starting a killing spree in the uptown area was obviously not a good option, in case he was besieged before he advanced to the fourth rank. It would be troublesome. There. A location came to mind in his mind, and he silently turned around, heading towards the lower city. Tonight, it was destined to be unsettled. Police station sentry card. Because of Lin Yan's matter, the sentry post had specially added detectives who could detect stealth and disguise. This Lin Yan is really evil, a small dust folk who just awakened can stir up the city. He he, just a sewer rat, haven't you guys heard? He's just a front, what's actually manipulating everything behind the scenes is that organization. The bamboo stick guard bragged. What organization? The other two came over. Jarius. The bamboo stick guard lowered his voice. Hiss. That Jarius who almost fucked over the top of the alliance. That's right. Hey, Jarius. It's said that the most core members of this organization are all upper folk. They are dissatisfied with the current social culture of oppressing the dustmen, and they want the alliance to change the laws and try to establish an equal society. Hey, if you ask me, their heads are kicked by a donkey. That's right, it's almost laughable. Now the resources and power are all in the hands of the upper class. Who would want to be equal to those dirty sewer rats? It makes me sick to think about it. Both guards couldn't help but shake their heads. You guys want to die. The detective frowned, Ban 703, the entire alliance is prohibited from discussing any information about this organization. Beware of getting your tongues rattled. Ahem. Both guards bowed their heads repeatedly and had to find another topic. In other words, without that organization behind it, that Lin Yan is a joke. Hey, you're sort of right. I heard that his bounty is going to be raised to 10 million dollars tomorrow. I'm drooling with desire. How so? The bamboo stick guard laughed, I'm just okay with being assigned to this guard post, specializing in the entrances and exits of the uptown area. There's a shitload of oil and water here. Now those who have a bit of connections are all trusting people to find connections to get into the search and seizure team. As long as they can catch that rat, the search team will share the prize money equally, at least a few hundred thousand dollars a person. Fuck. There's such a good thing. My companion was also distressed, it's all because my father is too incompetent, after mixing with the police department for so many years, he's still an ordinary staff. If he had been a captain, he could have put me in the patrol team. If I were to run into that Lin Yen, I could easily crush him with one hand. He he he, at that time, ten million dollars will all be mine. Ha 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 ha. The two guards fantasized to their heart's content, laughing wolfishly. The detective on the side was the most depressed. With his talent level, how could he normally be reduced to coming to see a sentry post? It was all because of the damned Lin Yen. He ate roast chicken and took a sip of mulled wine. As long as that Lin Yen isn't a sand sculpture, how could he choose to go back to the lower city from the sentry card at the tip of this storm? Old brother, I really have a hard life. He shook his head inside. Inside, he simply didn't believe that Lin Yen would appear at the sentry card. Therefore, he didn't even bother to put in his natural skill and was just here to cope with his errands. Hey, who's that? The bamboo stick detective rubbed his eyes and pointed towards the front of the sentry post. HM? who's running downtown this late. Both men were alerted. The sentry post had an easy job. The upper city and lower city were two worlds that basically didn't interoperate. At night, it was even more so that basically no one passed through here. Ha! Huh? The detective's eyes also lit up. Could it be that we're going to get credit for this? His heart pounded, and he unfolded his gifted domain. After probing, he shook his head in disappointment. There's no stealth on, and it's not transfiguration either. It's probably some uplander who wants to take advantage of the night to go hunting in the lower city, right? There were laws in Lighthouse City, but they only applied to upper folk and did not protect dust folk. Some upper folk would sneak into the lower city at night and do some unscrupulous deeds as a way to indulge in the darkest side of their humanity. Or hunting, or abuse, or eat some of the upper city cannot eat the human body feast. Although these are not public, but also a well-known secret. But the Lighthouse Council has always turned a blind eye to these tacit approval. After all, People are restless and stressed out inside in the end times, and they always need a way and channel to vent. As for the feelings of the dust folk? Of course they cared. The lighthouse council had guaranteed it. As soon as they got out of the doomsday, they guaranteed that they would let the dust folk live a good life. In those days, even the dust folk would be able to eat milk and bread every day, and enjoy cozy rooms that wouldn't be unclothed anymore. So, in order to realize that day sooner, one has to suffer the dust folk a little more. Touché. The figure came closer and closer. I say, this guy's figure, it's a bit familiar. The bamboo stick guard frowned and secretly opened his talent. Although he knew that it was almost impossible for the visitor to be Lin Yan, now that it was a special time, he still had to be cautious. Stop right there and be inspected. The bamboo guard droned. His words had just fallen. 
The figure then paused for a moment before continuing forward. Shit, didn't you hear me when I spoke? Again, Pying. In response to him, a gunshot rang out. ka -ching. The Desert Eagle's large caliber bullet lifted off his skull and his brain burst. It's Lin Yen. The bamboo stick partner rolled off his stool in fear as if he had seen a living ghost. Just now, when they said that they would crush Lin Yen to death, it was just lip service. Now that they really saw this living hell, they were so scared that they directly pissed and wet their pants. Pying. He didn't even have his natural skill on before he was shot in the undershirt and died on the spot. Blood mixed with urine flowed all over the place. Gulp. The detective was so shocked that he forgot to spit out the chicken bone in his mouth and curled up in the corner shivering. He was only probing talent. Although every time he ascended the ranks, his physical quality could be greatly improved. But it was simply no match for a real battle sequence. Lin Yan shot a third-ranked guard with a single shot, his methods were harsh and bizarre, it was simply not something he could deal with. There are only three people at the sentry post? Really looking down on me ah? Lin Yan sneered, originally he was ready to fight and kill a fight from breaking through. Don't, don't 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 kill me. I'm innocent. The detective couldn't even speak well. He closed his eyes tightly. I didn't get a good look at you. I won't say anything. You spare my life. Ah. His entire body was lifted up by Lin Yan. Looking at your police label, you should be a detective, right? Lin Yan asked coldly. Yes, 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 yes. The detective nodded repeatedly. Come with me. Lin Yan yanked the tie around his neck and threw him out of the sentry post with one hand. Go with, go with you. Go. Go, 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 go where? The detective's legs went soft and he couldn't stand up at all. Sandworm gang, ever heard of it? Lin Yan grinned, looking down at the detective, a thick killing chance flashing in his eyes. Seeking to catch up on reading, seeking votes. New book period data is critical ah. Jiu Yang pays his respects. Gulu, what are you doing in the sandworm gang? The detective calmed down a lot in his mind knowing that he wouldn't die for a while. Killing people. Lin Yan's reply was short and strong as he sized up the detective. What? You're unwilling to lead the way? The Sandworm Gang was originally a gang established by some rogues and ruffians among the dust folk. In the beginning, they would only collect protection fees and do small evils like oppressing the people. But later, as they grew bigger and bigger, they were noticed by the Upper Folks Council and began to rectify. On that day, the dust people felt that light was shining in. They finally have hope. The council finally want the people to justice. Later, the Sandworm Gang then became an organization under the actual control of the council. The bosses behind it became a few counselors. The business of the Sandworm Gang began to grow bigger and bigger. It almost became the overlord of the lower city, annexing all the gangs and becoming the only evil in the lower city. I, I don't even know where the Sandworm Gang is ah. The corner of the detective's mouth trembled, and his eyes drifted from side to side. Ha! Lin Yan grabbed his shoulder with a mechanical arm. ka -ching. The sound of shoulder bones shattering came out, the detective's shoulder was instantly crushed. Don't think that I don't know about those collusions between Yu Shangmin and the Sandworm Gang. As a detective, can you not know the location of the Sandworm Gang? Lin Yan grinned, a chilling smile that went deep into his bones. Those upper folk sneak into the lower city every night to give vent to the extremely evil side of their humanity. Hunting, abusing, or eating human feasts. Wailing could be heard every night. There were no barracks or police stations in the lower city. But the dustmen of the lower city, in the midst of such darkness, never rebelled. There is certainly a reason for this. The biggest reason is none other than the Sandworm Gang. They were dust folk themselves, yet they did things that were even more cruel, dirty, and evil than the upper folk. Human trafficking, organ trading, underground boxing gym, human banquet. None of them are the items they operate. They are far more cruel to the dust people than the police department. Because the police department at least have to take into account the laws of the alliance, but the sandworm gang's oppression of the dust bugs, but out of pure and extreme force oppression. Without their suppression and operation, it is not yet known whether those upper folk would dare to come to the lower city on a dark day. Ah. The detective screamed miserably. He really had eight lifetimes of bad luck, the family has no power and no power to spread to such a job, and the result has really encountered such a living king of hell. Lead the way, or die. Lin Yan lost his patience, and pinched the detective's neck, choking his face blue. He didn't know the exact location of the sandworm gang. The rule of the dust folk was just to close their homes at night, never daring to take half a step out of their homes at night. Those who dared to roam around the lower city at night were either hungry wolves or fierce tigers. At 6 in the morning, they go digging, and at 10 in the evening, they arrive home. Then immediately close the house and sleep, waiting for tomorrow morning's 6 o'clock gathering number. This is the life of the vast majority of dust people. Okay. I will lead the way. I lead the way. The detective nodded repeatedly. Go. Lin Yan dropped him on the ground. The detective struggled to get up, coughing violently. Touche. The two walked on the dark night road. Compared to the brightly lit upper city, the lower city was simply still living in the ancient times. He he he. Actually someone dares to go out at this hour. 
It's good to take them back to the gang to be used as underground fighters or ingredient piglets. In the darkness, two voices secretly poked and whispered. You're blind. That one's obviously a detective, and human. How dare you move human? Yes, boss. Let's just pick a random dust folk and grab two meat goods back to the gang. A few people tiptoed back down the beams. Where do you want to go ah? Just as they were about to walk out of the alley, they were blocked at the entrance of the alley head on. Tu Shangmin, you are going to the sandworm gang, right? We can lead the way. The boss rubbed his hands together and piled up a lowly smile on his face. Look, they're all on their own. If you have any orders, just say so. They reigned supreme in the lower city, but in front of the upper folk, they were nothing more than dogs. If any of the upper folk were upset and named him as the prey for tonight's hunting ground, the gang leader would definitely not say half a word. Ha! Lin Yan smiled coldly, I do have a request. You say you say. The boss said repeatedly, anything we can do, we will fulfill it with all our might. Who do you want to kill? Which girl do you fancy? We'll do all the dirty work, you just wait and enjoy. Lin Yan looked at his face and felt disgusted from the bottom of his heart. Demand that you die. He indifferently pulled out his gun. Grand Master. What have we done wrong? Why are you killing us? Spare our lives, Grand Master Shangmin. Several people all snapped their heads in succession. It was clear that they were all second or even third order gifted, but they didn't even have the courage to resist. Seeing that Shang Min wanted to kill them, their first reaction was to kneel down and pray. Damned bedbugs. The more Lin Yan looked, the heavier the anger in his heart became. When he was young, his parents had been taken away twice by the sandworm gang, and each time they came back, they were covered in scars. Neighbors praised them for their luck, and it was good to have three of the ten taken away come back. Die. Bang bang bang. Three gunshots echoed in the lower city that was as silent as a graveyard. The three sandworm gang members didn't dare to raise their heads until they died, and kept kneeling on the ground, their heads blown up in a kneeling and crouching position. Many of the surrounding dust folk were awakened and hid under their blankets, shivering, fearing that something would change. After all, the lives of the dust folk are not lives at all. It is more cheap than grass. The slightest change could cause a large number of dust folk to die. Go! Lin Yan could barely hold back his killing intent. He pushed the detective and drank low. Good. The detective's legs were a bit soft. This Yen King was really killing without blinking. 2-2. Two, two. Turning left and right in the lower city. Finally arriving before a house fall that emitted a dark glow. Enter. Lin Yan frowned. The ordinary members of the sandworm gang wouldn't gain much experience by killing them. Those few resident experts were his core target. There was no need for him to expose himself before killing them. Ahem. The detective nodded stiffly, his eyes fluttering, but he didn't dare to make a sound. He had seen the way Lin Yan killed people. It was too bizarre. There was no energy fluctuation to be seen at all, and with a single lift of his hand, a third-ranked gifted person would have to have his brain cracked. Lin Yan was right behind him now, and he was in a cold sweat of fear. Pop. 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 He knocked on the door regularly. This was the sandworm gang's calling code. Ha. Phew. Detective Ma, ha, huh? not on duty tonight? The steward who opened the door saw Detective Ma and instantly recognized him, his words were incomparably warm. We're not familiar with each other, don't call me names. Detective Ma instantly sweated when he thought of Lin Yan's icy cold eyes, and plagued to avoid the stewards. He he. Detective Ma what are you talking about, you've been here more than ten times, can we who are in this business not recognize you? Steward Ren grinned and laughed, not knowing what to do, he continued to get close. You. Detective Ma was just about to lose his temper. Lin Yan coughed. Detective Ma immediately extinguished his flame, not daring to act too abnormally. Ouch, Detective Ma, you've brought a new guest here. I didn't even see it clearly just now, so pardon me. Hello sir, my name is Rin Bowen, the receptionist here. Rin Bowen came up to get close to him. These people are all big spenders, and he can get a commission for spending money here. Of course he had to lick it well. Um, Lin Yan faintly mumbled, not even bothering to look at him. This kind of unscrupulous, mutilating fellow stinker was really something he couldn't bear to look at. He he, ha ha ha. Run Bowen was a little embarrassed. But inwardly, he was overjoyed. Right. This feels just right. The more you look down on the dust folk, the higher that status is ah. The richer they are. The more you have to serve them well. Didn't you see Detective Ma accompanying him? Could it be that? The captain level of the high-ranking civilian plainclothes came to play. Thinking of this, he seemed to hear the sound of clattering incoming money, laughing even lower. The two men walked in from the front yard under the leadership of Rin Bowen. The outside was unimpressive, but after entering the gate courtyard, there was something else. The yellow warm light shone, and the venue was lavishly furnished and filled with smoke and decadent sounds. This is the outermost casino, those who come to our sandworm gang for the first time will basically take the casino to try their hand. We don't have betting limits here, we can play as big as we want. Ren Bowen observed his words and saw that Lin Yan was obviously not interested in this place. He continued to lead Lin Yan and Detective Ma towards the inside. 
To the left of this is the hooker pen, which keeps a lot of well-presented Philly Mares from the lower city. They've all gone through professional training and their skills are absolutely top-notch. For just a hundred dollars, whatever you guys want to do to them, you can owe. Ren Bowen squeezed his eyebrows, to the right of this is the restaurant, which is filled with dishes that can never be eaten in the upper city. Especially those first-born bodies, dish people, not envious of sheep, one eat a good call. What cooking method you want, which part you want, you can customize it. Ren Bowen sized up Lin Yan with confidence. They had carefully prepared these items based on the deepest desires of a person's heart, greed, overeating, lust, tyranny, and so on. As long as the people who came to play, there would always be one that would be to taste. It seems that your lordship has little interest in any of these play items. Ren Bowen scratched the back of his hand. This lord tonight is a bit picky. It seems that your lordship wants to see something violent and straight. He hemmed and hawed, if an ordinary Shangmin came for the first time, he wouldn't really be qualified to go in. But you're Detective Ma's friend, so I'll make an exception this time and show you the underground boxing gym. Please follow me. Detective Ma gulped, stealing glances at Lin Yan from time to time. He had named him as coming to the Sandworm Gang to kill people, but since coming in so far, he hadn't made a move. What exactly is his purpose? Detective Ma's mind raced. According to what the newspapers said, Lin Yan was simply an unforgivable devil, a homicidal maniac who killed people on sight. But at the moment, it seemed as if the other party was quite capable of holding back. Click. The iron door opened. To enter the underground casino, you have to bring a sea stone bracelet first. The two bodyguards at the door bowed and politely said. The sea stone bracelet could suppress natural abilities, lest a riot occur. Lin Yan frowned. Detective Ma, on the other hand, revealed a look of anticipation and sneered inwardly, waiting for Lin Yan to riot so that he could use the opportunity to escape. You guys are really blind. Can't you see that this is Detective Ma's friend? It's just fine for the bracelets to be given to ordinary customers, how can you treat our honored guests like this? Ren Bowen chided. All right, both bodyguards backed away. Although this rule was set by a few counselors. However, they, the enforcers, were all dust folk, and the upper folk wouldn't suffer any punishment if one of them killed them in displeasure. Therefore, this rule was meant to exist in name only, and had even become a means for Ren Bowen to pull in familiar customers. Damn you Ren Bowen, you smarty pants fuddy duddy, after I get out of this today, I'll have to come back and skin you. Detective Ma was so angry that his nostrils were almost smoking, but didn't dare to say anything. Touche. The two of them, led by Rin Bowen, walked step by step down the dark aisle towards the negative floor. Just as they entered the basement, they could smell the smell of blood. There were numerous wrestling stages in the basement. One ring after another had broken bone slags and rivers of blood. The upper folk under the stage were yelling excitedly. The fighters on the stage, in order to survive, desperately struck down their opponents who were also dust folk. Inside the loud and noisy and dazzling space, money, blood drops, red wine, smoke, and fragrance mingled together. This is the playground of the upper folk. Slaughter hell for the dust folk. In order to satisfy the curiosity of the funders, the dust folk had learned a variety of ornamental finishes. Miserable screams and revelry washed over the years alternately like waves. Lin Yan frowned, a cold aura flashing in his eyes. This, you still don't like it? Ren Bowen got a little short of breath, then. To tell you the truth, I'm here to talk business and need to see your gang leader. Lin Yan had only come all this way to step on the Sandworm Gang's spatial layout, so that he wouldn't miss out on killing some stray beasts when they fought later on. Now that he had planned the best route, he was just about to meet the culprits at this point. Those few strongest villains were the founders of the Sandworm Gang. They were incredibly cunning, and once the situation was not right, they would immediately bolt. Today, it's time for them to return to the West. Ahem, our gangmaster is rather busy, if you want to talk business with him, you should at least take counselor-level credentials. Ren Bowen was alert and put away his fawning smile. Can't you understand what I'm saying? Lin Yan chortled coldly. I'm sorry, we are also following the rules. If you don't have credentials, we can only ask you to go out. Ren Bowen frowned and locked eyes with Lin Yan. Fight, fight. Inspector Ma hissed continuously inside. Ha! Lin Yan nodded and looked deeply at Ren Bowen. Good. You're good. He took out Yi Shanhai's personal seal from his pocket. This was the only thing found in the Shanghai building, inside the safe in Yi Shanhai's office, besides the gold bars. If this didn't work, then he had no choice but to go in hard now. Oh, so your counselor Zhang's man. Ren Bowen was covered in cold sweat. Zheng Tuzin was one of the several lighthouse counselors behind the Sandworm Gang. Gulp. I guess it's Mr. Zheng sent down for a private visit, luckily I entertained him just now without any problems, I told you he's a big shot. Ren Bowen even pondered whether he had just done and said the wrong thing. You're actually bringing only one detective with you here, it's also too low-key. Huh, please take a seat first, I'll go inside and report to the gangmaster. Detective Ma blackened his face and looked viciously at Rin Bowen's back. What do you mean by bringing only one detective? I have a low fucking status. Buckle up. 
After walking out of the underground boxing ring, Rinboen led Lin Yan and the two of them to turn left and right to an underground office. The office door was made of thick port steel. Luckily, I left an eye open. Lin Yan frowned. This kind of thick door made of port steel might not be able to be blown open even by a bomb. These core members of the sandworm gang were really afraid of death. Rin Bowen operated for half a day before opening the metal gate. Inside the gate, it was luxurious to the extreme. Deerskin as a carpet, bear's head as a pendant, ivory on the desktop, for the end of the world luxury to the extreme jade was played in the hands. The sandworm gang leader put down the jade in his hands and looked at Lin Yan with a slight smile. He was the direct subordinate of several counselors, and was on equal footing with Lin Yan, although he would be in awe, he would not deliberately curry favor. As a dust folk, he felt immensely proud and proud to be able to mix in this era with this kind of status and achievement. As for the tired bones of his fellow dust folk under his feet, that was nothing more than a bargaining chip on his way to success. If they were to be blamed, they should be blamed for their bad luck. Born lowly. Well, Lin Yan nodded as well. The upper city and the lower city were really two worlds. He had made a huge mess in the upper city, and the whole city hated digging up the ground in search of him. As a result, the overlord of the lower city, the head of the sandworm gang, actually didn't even recognize him. He thought that he was going to tear his face off when he entered the room, but at the moment, his heart settled down, and he slowly sat in front of the sandworm gang's gang leader, how about the other ones? He didn't know that there were a few others, he only knew that there was more than one person at the top of the sandworm gang. What? Do you need them to come as well for what counselor Zheng ordered this time? The sandworm gang leader frowned. Not bad. Lin Yan closed his eyes after saying that, not bothering to talk to the sandworm gang leader anymore. Ha! Really knows how to put up a front. The sandworm gang master sneered inwardly, but his doubts were dispelled a lot. The more important the matter was conveyed, naturally the higher the status of the handlers would be sent. This attitude of completely disregarding him was the right one. Go get old 2 through old 6. The sandworm gang leader waved his hand. Gang master, old 6 accompanied that lord to go hunting today. Ren Bowen reminded in succession. Oh, then let's not call him for now. The sandworm gang's gang master nodded. Soon, the top core members of the sandworm gang gathered. Several people sized up Lin Yan, their brows furrowed together. Tell us what's going on, you invited us all here with great fanfare, there must be something important, right? You can't fool us. The oldest two's voice was eerie and vaguely even had a hint of threatening intent. Lin Yan's gaze swept over the faces of several people one by one. It was these few animals that were worse than pigs and dogs that had tortured to death an unknown number of dust folk before relying on pandering and ruthlessness to enjoy the life they had today. To be born in the doomsday, it really deserved the saying. Kill and set fire to the golden belt, repair bridges and roads without remains. There is indeed a great event that is not to be trifled with. Lin Yan sneered. The people were all together, and it was time to make a move. Please speak. Lao San picked at his ears, looking impatient. Because Lin Yan had spoiled his good deed. Today, he had arrived at a superb chick who had just awakened her S-rank talent, but was directly designated as a D-rank by the gangmaster who had bought off the assessment officer. Then she was forcibly taken captive to the hooker of the sandworm gang. This kind of bridge that had a chance to become an upper folk, but was twisted and humiliated to be designated as a dust folk beauty, and was finally trampled into a female animal. Those upper folk love it the most. Such a superb product can be sold for thousands of dollars a night less. He was just about to go and have a taste and feel the pleasure of casually controlling other people's destinies when he was called over. Actually, it wasn't Zheng Tuzin who sent me here today. Lin Yan's hand flashed with summoning light. Detective Ma, who was on the side, stared wide-eyed, knowing that Lin Yan was going to make a move, and dodged away with his ass in the air. This king of hell was too terrifying. But these guys from the sandworm gang weren't vegetarians either. Under the heavy cultivation of several counselors, the sandworm gang's top brass had all become fifth-order experts. At such a close range, even if Lin Yan's methods were weird, he would have to die. What are you going to do? Sha Chen Liang slammed the table and stood up with a bang. Rather, Yama. Lin Yan shouted, I'm here to take your lives today. He had a crooked machine gun in one hand and instantly opened fire. Not good. The several vice gang leaders all looked shocked, but they had been mixing in the darkness for so many years, what kind of storms had they not seen before? In just an instant, they subconsciously ducked towards the back of the people around them. Using their brothers to block the knife seemed to have long been incorporated into their muscle memory. This was the secret to them being able to live so nourishingly in the end of days. By abandoning morality and humanity, they could live for a long time. Da did day. Bullets rushed out of the barrels like tongues of fire, pouring out indiscriminately. Although a few people pulling people to block the knife had become muscle memory, in the end, some were fast and some were slow. It was just a single glance. Just three people were shot into a sieve. Blood sprayed on the wall. Lao air. Old four. Old five. Sha Qian Liang cried out miserably. It was too bad that three brothers who were used to block the sword fell in a flash. Die for me. Sha Qian Long's muscles opened up, 
his skin all turning into the color of steel as he drew out the long knife under the table and slashed down towards Lin Yan. Lao San also activated his talent, secreting a terrifying corrosive acid on his hands and flinging it out towards Lin Yan. Block! Lin Yan put away his crooked machine gun, and his mechanical palm met the air. The tremendous strength provided by the mechanical exoskeleton and the hardness of the alloy steel allowed him to steadily catch the steel blade. Buzz! He displayed his blast shield with a flourish. Put! Lao San's corrosive acid sprayed on it, and the venom that could have corroded away even iron was completely unable to help the blast-proof glass. Lin Yan sneered. Acid could not corrode glass. Not to mention this special bulletproof glass of the armed police. How is it possible? Sha Chen Lang and Lao San both fell into a state of brain blankness, how is this person so strong? The abilities and weapons used were also strange, it was unbelievable and beyond imagination. Die for me! Lin Yan forcefully pulled Sha Chen Lang down, a knee on his chest, bones shattering. Sha Chen Lang spat out a mouthful of blood violently. He was decisive and incomparable, his other hand directly tore his arm apart, his body taking the opportunity to tumble out of the house, breaking his arm to survive. What a ruthless man, ruthless to others and ruthless to himself. Lin Yan immediately began to turn his head to deal with old three. With the blastproof glass in place, Lao San was a waste to himself and could be resolved extremely quickly. Grandma, how did you pull out such a large piece of glass with your hand? Old San was bitter inside. It was well known that glass was fragile, so who would use this as a weapon? Therefore, after his talent awakened, he was generally invincible. No wood or iron could resist his corrosion. Dry shatter your glass, then melt through you. Lao San shouted harshly, and with all his strength, his fist smashed down towards the blastproof glass. Kaching! The sound of bones shattering came. Lao San's face, immediately twisted together in pain, his hand bones were deformed. What kind of glass is this so hard? He was completely confused. He was a fifth rank. Although he wasn't a power type, but having upgraded to the fifth rank, his body had a few hundred pounds of power in a single swing, to say the least. How could it be possible that he couldn't even break a piece of glass? All that was refined in this era was brittle glass that could be easily shattered. Therefore, glass was also a precious resource in Lighthouse City, and only a small portion of the upper folk could afford to use it. No! This is simply impossible. Lao San continuously shook his head, his eyes showing despair. If this kind of substance existed in this world, what use would his talent be? Ka Ching! With all his strength, Lin Yan held up the special blastproof glass and disliked it forward. Ah! Lao San was directly pushed against the corner of the wall by the glass. Buzz! Lin Yan's mechanical exoskeleton continued to increase in strength, and the blast shield in his hand squeezed deeper and deeper. Ah! Lao San let out an agonizing howl. He couldn't believe that his end had suddenly arrived. Being dependent on the lighthouse council and being in the lower city, shouldn't he have acted as a bully for the rest of his life and then died with a smile on his face? Snort! His entire body began to crack, and strong acid with blood bubbled out from everywhere in his body. The entire person was like a squashed orange, squeezing out all the juice inside. Bones began to pierce the flesh. Lao San was squeezed into a ball of mush in despair amidst unimaginable pain. Who? Lin Yan flung his blast shield, flinging the acid and blood off of it. Turning around, he flew after Sha Qian Lang. Just now, it was said to be slow, but in reality, from the time he had stormed out to the time he had killed the oldest three, it was only ten seconds before and after. Sha Qian Long's hissing sound had just spread through the underground boxing ring. What the hell? Boss, why did your arm fall off? Quickly come someone. Something's wrong. A riot broke out in the underground boxing ring. However, the underground boxing ring was already filled with hissing and murmurs, and for a while everyone was still confused about the situation. Da did day 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 day. But at this moment, Lin Yan had already killed his way out of the chamber with two crooked machine guns. The bullets poured out, the guards near the iron door of the secret room were all shot through and through, or else they were opened up. The effect of the downward strike of modern weapons began to appear. Without defense, even a fifth or sixth order gifted person would not be able to block a machine gun with his body. This shuttle went down, and the blood mist was flaky. There was one counting in the underground boxing ring, not one innocent. Moreover, this was the gathering area of the sandworm gang's experts, so he didn't bother to distinguish who was who, and killed as he saw them, not holding back at all. He stepped out all the way through the fallen corpses and bones, and in a short period of time, dozens of people died suddenly. Blood flowed into a river. Finally everyone noticed the place and started hissing. The underground boxing ring began to fall into complete chaos. Murderous maniac. Holy shit. That's Lin Yen. Some of the uptimers who were paying attention to the newspapers recognized Lin Yen, and one by one, their souls were scattered. That was the absolute Yama who had blown up the Shanghai building in front of the police and the city guards. In the word of mouth of the Shangmin, it had long been the devil's advocate. Catch him, there's a five million dollar bounty. Detective Ma took advantage of the chaos to roll out. While yelling at the top of his voice, making others eyeball to be the scapegoat, he desperately pushed his way out. Gulp. Five million dollars. It can all buy a dozen houses in the uptown area. 
kill, for the identity of the upper folk. Some people's eyes were red. In order to keep the dust folk from completely despairing, in addition to talent, if one paid 1 million federal coins, one could also obtain upper folk status. Of course, other than joining the sandworm gang, there was absolutely no way for the dust folk to get that kind of money is all. At this moment, both the upper folk who came to see the fights and the dust folk who fought in the underground ring had red eyes. Seeing Lin Yan is their once in a lifetime chance to cross over the ranks. After all, it was money. A whole five million dollars. Ha! Lin Yan sneered, want to kill me? Do you guys have that life? He summoned a grenade and frantically threw it towards the front. In the confined environment of an underground boxing ring, the fragmentation grenades exploded with maximum power. Boom boom boom. The ground was cracked, and the entire underground arena trembled. Blood and broken flesh flew across the ground as wails and screams echoed. Lin Yan's face was cold, his left hand dropping bombs, his right hand machine gunning, like an emotionless killing machine. One after another of the upper folk or dust folk that rushed towards him, prostrated in the end, their lives passing from them. The entire ground of the underground boxing ring, blood accumulated into shallow puddles. One foot stepped on it and it didn't go past the soles of his shoes. Blood stained Lin Yan's clothes and splattered on his face, making him look like a shura from hell. At the end of the narrow passageway of the underground boxing ring was the security check iron gate. The two security guards looked inside from time to time. Tonight's fight was intense enough. Why is there so much commotion? The wailing is more intense than usual. Tonight there is a big man to pay a lot of money. Want to see a big scene chanting? Let's see a lot of strange. The leader of the security guards who came on patrol chided, Concentrate on your business. Oh, the two had to stand back. They were both curious and wanted to go in and see what was going on. I'm sure tonight's big scene will be a good one. They had just pressed their restless hearts when the iron door suddenly slammed wildly. This caused the two to nearly paralyze on the floor in fear. They turned around and angrily looked at the one-armed man who was furiously slamming the iron door. What the hell are you slamming for? Fart. Open your dog eyes wide. I'm the sandworm gang leader. Open the door for me. The wretched, hard to recognize human form sand chimera roared. Hey, you're the gang master? I'm also the lighthouse city lord? Dressed in rags and with a broken arm, I think you're the dust folk boxer who escaped, right? Get the hell back. Both security guards sneered and chided. Quickly open the door. He's really the gang master. Behind Sha Chen Liang, Detective Ma and Rin Bowen poked their heads out to open the door and urged in a panicked manner. Ouch. Steward Rin. This, what's going on? The two security guards' heads were confused. Although Sha Chen Liang rarely showed his face on weekdays for the sake of security, causing them all to not recognize him, but Rin Bowen could not be faked. Stupid. Quickly Dick open the door. The king of hell is asking for his life. Do you all want to die? Detective Ma jumped anxiously, tears coming out of his eyes. They looked behind them in horror. The wailing gradually subsided. The heart-shaking explosions and gunshots also thinned out. Oh, oh. The two security guards hurriedly began to open the door. The three of them, Sha Qian Liao, were sweating anxiously, quickly. Faster. Quickly. To wo. The wailing and gunshots completely subsided, and the sound of calm footsteps began to echo in the deep and narrow corridor behind them. The three men's bodies, all stiffened. Pom pom. Lin Yan walked all the way, seeing who hadn't completely broken, he went up to replenish his gun. He would never leave himself with the worry of future problems. Buzz. His experience value continued to grow, and he was about to reach the fourth rank. The entire underground boxing ring was devastated, with bloodstains everywhere and corpses sprawled layer after layer. At least 200 people had died horizontally in it. With the stacked corpses, it was hard to find an open space to step down. Lin Yan stepped on the corpses and bones all the way to the secret passage. Click. The iron door finally opened. Sha Chen Lu rolled and escaped, and when he turned his head again, he could already see Lin Yan walking out from around the corner. He shivered and subconsciously pulled the two security guards at the door in front of him before yelling, Gather everyone. Kill this king of living hell in the secret passage. Never let him walk out of the secret passage. As soon as the words fell, intense gunfire came from the secret passage. Rin Bowen ran a step slower and was instantly hit by dozens of bullets, and blood holes pierced his body. Damn. Detective Ma stumbled and fell on the ground to avoid the bullet fire. However, one ear was still knocked off, blood gurgling and screaming continuously. 2 2 2. The Sandworm Gang's security guards finally rushed over. As the overlord of the lower city, it was still an organization sheltered by the Lighthouse Council. It was always the Sandworm Gang that took what they wanted and bullied everything, but today they were actually beaten into their lair. This was something that every one of them had never dreamed of. Therefore, the Sandworm Gang's security team, which was usually negligent in emergency drills, was extremely sluggish tonight. Top it. Top me to the death. Sha Chen Lang covered his bloodstained broken arm and staggered towards the outside as he continued to run. His guts were broken by Lin Yen. It was too bizarre. Too terrifying. In all the years he had been running through the black and white world, he had never seen someone who could be this strong. 
At the very least, several sixth-rank experts would have to step in to sanction him. It's simply too outrageous. Xia Qianlong's heart was pounding, in the case of physical combat, he was a fifth-rank warrior. Exerted the special talent of iron skin, sword and spear are invulnerable. All of them were crushed in terms of strength and speed, and even had an arm yanked off alive. Ta da day. Lin Yan was holding a machine gun, and he was outputting at the sandworm gang security guards that kept rushing out from the entrance. This kind of terrain was the best output situation for firearms. As long as they dared to appear at the entrance, they would face a tidal wave of bullets pouring out, and with the kinetic energy of the machine gun bullets, within 10 meters, talents below the fifth order were basically killed at random. Ah, is he a devil? Are there any defense type talents? Ah who, take the top. Yes. Nope. Ah who. In the blink of an eye, a dozen security guards fell at the entrance. The gunshots and screams startled the Shangmin who were spending time in the hookah area and cafeteria, and they all ran out to see what was going on. However, when they saw that the ones who kept falling were members of the sandworm gang, their faces all showed expressions of horror, and they screamed and fled outside. Although the talent levels awakened by the upper folk were high, they were not necessarily all of the fighting type. Most of the upper folk did not have the ability to kill. What are you guys running for? The intruder is just one person. If we join forces, he definitely won't be able to withstand it. Sha Chenlian was unable to move at all due to the crowd of people, his face was anxious as he yelled. Hee hee, I don't have the ability to fight. I'm a noble Shangmin, how could I be injured in such a filthy place? You are the person in charge here, right? I'm warning you, if even one of us dies, your sandworm clan will have to have an extinction. The upper folk condemned. Sha Qianlang sneered inwardly, he didn't know how many upper folk had died down there. He only sought to escape tonight, who cared what happened to the sandworm gang. Boom! A grenade went down and the pile of corpses blocking the entrance to the passageway was blown apart. Lin Yan, bathed in blood, walked out of the blood mist like a stern ghost. Gulp! Dozens of security guards from the sandworm gang each turned on their talents and formed a circle, but no one dared to take a step forward. Lin Yan's aura was simply too terrifying. Form a circle? Good. The corner of Lin Yan's mouth lifted up a hint of coldness and he directly summoned a flamethrower. This could be called the most brutal killing weapon in World War II. What was sprayed out was a fluid combustible that was ignited, and once burned, the flames wouldn't go out before burning the person to ashes. Kill him and there's a five million dollar bounty. Turning over into a Shangmin depends on this wave. Brothers, go. Detective Ma yelled as he pushed his way out of the crowd. Five million dollars. The Sandworm Gang's security guards went completely crazy. For Dust Folk, the chance to turn over a new leaf and become an upper folk was worth more than their own lives. Even the Sandworm Gang, which was the best amongst the Dust Folk, was no exception. After all, only by becoming an upper folk did one have human rights and could be treated by the Alliance as truly a human being. No more worrying about being precarious, no more worrying about being killed by whoever looks at you. Kill. They all went crazy, scrambling towards Lin Yan to kill him. As dust folk little palos, their talents weren't even as good as the few leaders, and the best they could do was chicken ribs talents like strength enhancement. At this moment, they were all swarming together, but they only gave off the feeling of a rabble. Lin Yan smiled indifferently, and the flamethrower in his hand turned on. Boom! A 10 meter long fire dragon instantly erupted from the flamethrower. Lin Yan swept the jet horizontally, instantly sweeping out a flame semicircle with a radius of 10 meters. All of the Sandworm Gang security members that rushed up were all set ablaze and turned into flaming men. Ah! The mournful wails and screams turned the place into a Shura hell in an instant. The upper folk's heads went blank when they saw the scene. Flame mage talent? Sha Qianliang was confused. This 10 meter long fire dragon was too appalling. It was at least an archmage of the 6th rank or higher, right? Escape! The sandworm gang is finished. The upper folk were also scared out of their wits. The means that Lin Yan had displayed were too terrifying, simply irresistible. There's no need to worry, we're water mages, we'll take this 5 million. Three figures in the upper folk group stepped forward. Water naturally restrained fire. Even though they were only of the 4th rank, they still dared to take a chance with Lin Yan. It's a few captains from the fire department, I've seen them before. Luckily, they've come to have fun today as well, or else I'm afraid it's going to be dangerous tonight. The mood of the upper folk also settled down quite a bit. After all, it was common sense that water overcomes fire. With these few in place, together with the FSD's gifted treasures, even if Lin Yan was a 6th ranked archmage, he might not be able to win steadily. Snort! All four of them cast talented treasures, which could amplify natural abilities. It gave one the chance to be able to fight across ranks or deal with unexpected situations. Four columns of water erupted from the mouths of the three in a spectacular manner, converging together like a small river. Hiss la la. The moment the water and fire collided, white steam rose up, obscuring one's vision. Ah. Miserable howls came from the water vapor. Is the fight won? The upper folk watched nervously. In Lighthouse City, the fourth rank was already an absolute stalwart, and there wasn't a single fifth rank expert among the upper folk who came to spend money tonight. 
A fifth order combat gifted person could at least be a counselor's beloved bodyguard. If they were of the sixth order, they would even be able to walk horizontally in the lighthouse. Not good. This miserable scream is not from a single person. Someone's forehead broke out in cold sweat. Did they die together? That's fine, don't let that homicidal maniac rush out. I don't want to die. The upper folk murmured. The steam quickly dispersed. A scene that horrified them appeared. The three FSD masters, their treasures were all burned to carbon. On their bodies, the fire was constantly burning, the skin and fat were burned clean, and Mori was visible as blackened bones. They fell into the water, wailing and rolling. The flames, surprisingly, burned on the water surface, and there was no tendency for them to be doused in half. Shit. Demon fire. In this world, there is even a flame that water can't extinguish. Then wouldn't he be invincible? The Shangmin scalps were numb with disbelief as they watched the scene. Could it be that he's an S-rank talent, a demon fire warlock? A few upper folk with some status hardened their heads and shouted, Murderer demon, you are originally a dust folk. How dare you offend the upper folk? Don't you know that you are now fighting against the entire human alliance? Hurry up and tie your hands and you can still get a whole body. They were so used to being proud of the dust folk that even their pleas for mercy unconsciously carried an extreme contempt, as if it was a handout. Lin Yin grinned, if you were trying to provoke me, then you succeeded. He decided to be more brutal. He took out a white phosphorus grenade, commonly known as a cryogenic incendiary bomb. Die for me. His eyes were icy cold as he threw the grenade. White phosphorus bombs burned on the body and could not be extinguished, and were anti-humanitarian weapons explicitly banned by Blue Star. But in this anti-humanitarian doomsday, these anti-humanitarian weapons were often needed to do so. Ah. The few Shangmin who had just ventured out instantly turned into a ball of flames, lying on the ground, wailing and rolling around, how dare you, how dare you, the upper folk gulped, worthy of being the lighthouse's most wanted criminal who had blown up the mountain and sea building, how cruel, what are you still looking at, hurry up and run away, someone screamed miserably, where had these Shangmin who grew up in the sunshine ever seen such a scene, many of them had their legs frozen in fear, it was only at this moment when they heard this loud cry that they woke up as if in a dream and hurriedly turned their heads to crowd outside, for a while, people crowded in and stepped on people. Quite a few people were squeezed down by the combat-type upper folk and were directly trampled into meat paste. Ha! Lin Yen continued to slaughter. Once people lost their fighting spirit, they were better than ants to kill. 70,000 pigs might have to be caught for three days and three nights, but one day was enough to execute 70,000 terrified humans. P-F-F-F-F. Body after body died at his feet. Flames burned up, setting the entire sandworm gang ablaze, and soon the fire spread turning the sandworm gang base into a sea of fire. After Lin Yen slaughtered all these upper folk, putting the flame burner away, he indifferently looked at the sand thousand latches in front of him who had already had his legs cut off and was twisting and crawling on the ground, his face filled with the desire to survive. He was a collection of sins in the lower city. A collection of thousands of sins in one. But at this moment, it was like a defeated dog maggot, his face twisted, and the color of despair in his eyes. Fire blocked his crawling front path. Lin Yen slowly walked over to Sha Kayan's body, looking down at him icily. Ha! Ha! Knowing that his life had come to an end. Instead, Sha Chen Lang calmed down and struggled to turn over, glaring at Lin Yen with a face full of blood, you have destroyed the balance of the lighthouse. Without the sandworm gang, the lower city is bound to be in chaos. All of lighthouse city will be divided internally because of this. You, are the sinner who killed everyone. The disregard for the greater good, the self-serving villain. He was hysterical. Lin Yen only smiled indifferently, so for years, you've been using this technique to deceive yourself? Evil people will never admit that they do evil, and will only find a set of crooked arguments to increase the righteousness of their behavior. He will even be so self-motivated by this that he will fall into tears and question those he has brutalized, do you know what I have carried for so many years? They do not repent in the face of the sins they have committed, nor should they ever be expected to. You are the sinner. I'm the one who made the lighthouse what it is. Without me, the lighthouse would have been in chaos long ago. I'm the... 1. Sha Qianliao's self-motion was ended by Lin Yan's long knife. The bones in his body were stepped on one foot after another, blood bursting and spilling in all directions. Confess your sins to me. Lin Yan was cold. He was well aware that Sha Qianliang wouldn't beat his heart to confess, but he didn't care. You dream. You. Ah. Sha Qianlong's miserable scream echoed mournfully, like a demon's mournful roar before it died. The flames scorched his skin, and the double pain of burns and cracked bones forced him to give in. In the end, he no longer dared to keep his mouth shut. Please kill me. I have sinned. I am the greatest sinner in the world. Please kill me quickly. Sha Chen Lian wailed and pleaded. Just like the general appearance of those fellow dust folk who had once been tortured to death by him. Lin Yan's pupils refracted firelight as he indifferently watched everything. The movements on his feet did not stop. Click. Click. Click click. The sound of bones shattering, and the sound of blood and flesh being roasted echoed in the dead silent sandworm gang base. 
It wasn't until Sha Qianlang was reduced to a pool of charred in black and bloody mud. Only then did Lin Yan turn around and leave. To think that sometimes, it's good to be an evil person. Lin Yan shook his head and sneered. All it took was some torture before death to exchange for a lifetime of honor and wealth. And this, all of this was still with someone doing justice. In comparison, he still died too happily. He wandered through the fire. The cafeteria, the casino, the hookah. Constantly searching to see if there were any leaks, and replenishing his gun in the meantime. Go this way. Several figures walked out of the sea of firing company, they were slender and staggered. Some of them still carried deep wounds on their bodies. The women of the hooked fence. Lin Yan frowned. He was only here to take revenge and was not obligated to save anyone. Boom. After thinking about it, he still used his air compression cannon to clear the way for a few girls. The sudden turn of events scared a few girls into screaming in shock. They were scared of being tortured. The clothes Lin Yan wore, at first glance, were upper folk. Don't be afraid. He's the benefactor who overthrew the sandworm gang tonight and killed all these evil thieving beasts. The girl who led the group said in succession with a hint of Ying Chi. Eh? Lin Yan looked at the girl one more time. There were some people who, with just a single glance, could tell her distinctive qualities and disposition. I know you don't have to save us, but as long as you can get us out. As a reward for all this tonight, I will follow you to the death. The girl in the lead was calm and brave. My talent is S-ranked and I can create doppelgangers. You can fully trust my worthiness. What is your name? Lin Yan's heart fluttered. The talent of bilocation was still useful to him. Lu Ruyan. The girl immediately replied. Well, let's go out first. Lin Yan nodded. Pying. After he cleared away the obstacles, he freed a few girls. Ka Ching. Just after rushing out of the sandworm gang's compound, he saw a charred, wretched figure crawling out of the fire. Detective Ma? Lin Yan looked at Detective Ma, who only had one ear left, and glanced at Ruyan Lu, kill him. Ruyan Lu gulped. The dust folk had been taught from a young age to obey and respect the law, and not to do evil. Their self-restraint on morality was far higher than the upper folk. It was always a bit of a shock to suddenly let her kill someone. But soon, her eyes were firm. The experience of these two days had allowed her to completely see the nature of Lighthouse City, and see what kind of lies she had been living in these 18 years. She had long ago completely despaired. She even secretly vowed that as long as she could get out of this devil's cave, she would definitely let all those high and mighty Shangmin taste the taste of being avenged. Now, the opportunity is right in front of her. She bit her lower lip tightly, her eyes becoming more and more determined. Then, beside her body, she manifested a doppelganger, picked up a large stone on the ground, and trudged towards Detective Ma. Appreciation flashed in Lin Yan's eyes. Calm, obedient, decisive, cautious. The qualities that this girl displayed were all very suitable to be his subordinate. Pying. Ruyan Lu raised the stone in her hand and ruthlessly smashed it down towards Detective Ma's head. Damn dust folk. What do you want? Detective Ma fought to roll over and dodge it, struggling to stand up and lunging at the girl with bloodshot eyes. Pying. Lin Yan blew Detective Ma's head off with a single shot. Ruyan Lu had been brought to the sandworm gang just after her awakening, and it was good that she still had the strength to stand now. Even if Detective Ma wasn't a combat talent, he was already at the third rank after all, he didn't expect Ruyan Lu to really kill him. It was just to gauge her guts and determination for revenge. I like the look in your eyes, keep that anger. Lin Yan's bloodied face was even more impressive against the firelight. This fire will burn Lighthouse City to ashes. Ruyan Lu's eyes trembled. She was shaken by Lin Yan's ambition. I, what should the few of us do? A few other girls trembled. I'm not capable of taking so many of you with me, the target is too big. Lin Yan said indifferently, it's already a blessing for you guys to have escaped, next, seek your own way to live. Some of the several girls broke down and cried, some had dull eyes, and others lost their minds. Lin Yan didn't care what they were going to do next. But now that all of the lighthouse council's attention was on him, these few girls had a better chance of surviving instead of following him. Where are we going next? Ruyan Lu didn't say much either, but just asked. Back to the upper city. Lin Yan said in a deep voice, there are still big things to do. Um, Ruyan Lu nodded. The two of them walked towards the upper city, the sky rushing flames behind them burning the base of the sandworm gang. Along with the sins buried here, they burned in ashes. The otherwise dark night sky of the lower city had never been as bright as it was tonight. Click. In the broken houses of the dustmen closer to the sandworm gang, the dustmen who had been woken up secretly opened their windows a tiny crack and watched the scene. The sandworm gang is on fire. Retribution. Retribution ah. They exchanged low voices, not daring to make a loud noise for fear that this was a dream, just silently admiring the scene. What a fire. God has opened his eyes. Burn these bugbears. Bower ah. Did you see it? The beasts that killed you got their retribution. Do you think, if the sandworm gang really doesn't exist anymore, our days will be better? Hard to say. What followed was a long silence. Upper city. Lin Yan brought Lu Ruyan with him, wearing an optical cloak of invisibility, walking on the streets in the early hours of the morning. 
At this hour, only a few soldiers from the curfew were left patrolling the streets. Suddenly, sirens blared. A large number of members of the fire department, police department and city guard guards brushed against Lin Yan and Lu Ruyan's shoulders as they ran towards the lower city. The corner of Lin Yan's mouth lifted into a cold smile as he mockingly looked at these guardsmen who brushed against him. The upper folk who were woken up by the noise opened their windows in dissatisfaction and cursed. However, when they saw the grand gesture of the police department and the city guards who were almost all out in force, they immediately stifled the anger they were filled with. What's going on here? Such a big noise? Something big has happened, right? Who knows? Two days ago I was made nervous by that wanted criminal Lin Yan, and today I'm making such a scene, letting people sleep. They've ruined my beauty sleep. The uptown folk were talking, feeling that the atmosphere was more tense than the previous two days. Originally, the uptown is like this. Confusion and tears flashed in Ruyan Lu's eyes. Even in the wee hours of the morning, there were street lights, white roads and bright, sturdy buildings. Is this, really the end? We've been living in a deception. Lin Yan faintly reminded. Lu Ruyan shook her head and wiped away the tears in her eyes, I, I know it's hard to accept, and it even makes you want to roar with grief and anger and let out a loud cry. However, you only have five hours now to digest it all. Lin Yan stopped at the entrance of an inn and turned his head to look at Rui and Lu, whether they deceived us or not. At least for the dust folk, it's all unquestionably doomed now. Whom? Lu Ruyan's eyes firmed down and she clenched her silver teeth. As long as I can take revenge on the lighthouse, no matter what the cost, I won't back down. Even if. It's my life. Don't worry, you won't die that easily. Lin Yan patted her shoulder and led her into the inn. Going to the inn's back kitchen, he took some food and found a random room. Eat something and recover your strength. Lin Yan ate bread and took a sip of milk. Lu Ruyan had already collected her emotions, but when putting that bread and ham sandwich in her mouth, she completely tensed up. As the daily food of the upper folk, it could be imagined that milk and bread were not a scarce resource for the lighthouse. But the dust folk were forced to drink rat soup and eat cockroach chunks from a young age. In the end, why is this? Ah! Tears fell like threads from Lu Ruyan's eyes as she chewed hard on the food in her mouth, her chest bursting with pain. Lin Yan glanced at her. This question of yours, only the lighthouse consul can answer you. He did not blame Ruyan Lu. There was no education from the Blue Star. It was indeed difficult for a native dust folk to quickly accept such drastic changes and deceptions that ran through their lives. Go to sleep when you've cried enough and get your strength back. I don't want to watch her die just after I've taken in a henchman. Lin Yan closed his eyes, accompanied by Lu Ruyan's diminishing sobs, and slept with his clothes. Ding ding. Lin Yan's alarm clock rang and he opened his eyes. On the side, Lu Ruyan had already finished crying and fell into sleep. He shook his head and pushed Ruyan Lu awake. Um, Ruyan Lu frowned and quickly turned awake, looking at Lin Yan, are we going to act so soon? She felt like she had only just fallen asleep. However, she soon forced herself to wake up, benefactor, what are we going to do? Lin Yan glanced at Lu Ruyan, call me boss from now on. Boss? Okay. Ruyan Lu nodded, boss, what are we going to do next? Lin Yan came to the window and raised his chin at the opposite side, know what the opposite side is doing? Ruyan Lu came to his side and looked at the Tyson restaurant across the street. Today's Tyson tavern was decorated with lights, and there was a huge flow of people. Even the mechanical carriers, which were rare to see on weekdays and only the most noble upper folk with the highest status were qualified to ride on, had quite a few of them parked downstairs. This kind of prosperous scene was the only thing Lu Ruyan had ever seen in her life. Although surprised, her keen observation immediately made him notice the banner hanging on the Tyson restaurant. Zhang's Group 35th Anniversary Banquet. Ruyan Lu said, Zhang's Group? Isn't that the giant company that is the top of the three major groups in Lighthouse and is said to have tens of billions of assets? Lin Yan nodded. You're going to make a move against them. Or in time for the Zhang Group's opening anniversary. Ruyan Lu felt incredulous. Not bad. Lin Yan nodded. Gulp. Ruyan Lu was once again shocked at Lin Yan's vigor and courage. She didn't ask many questions and was straightforward. What do you need me to do? I first need to understand your abilities clearly. Lin Yan gazed at Lu Ruyan. How does the death of your doppelganger affect your main body? There is no effect. Ruyan Lu shook her head. Lin Yan raised an eyebrow. The death of a bilocation actually had no effect on the main body. It seemed that Ruyan Lu's talent had been severely underestimated. To be rated as an S for a mere bilocation talent, the potential that such a talent represented was simply too great. Even if it was only used in the purest cultivation, the speed would be at least twice as fast as a normal person. Not to mention that in Doomsday, with the split talent, one could still hit many, many operations that could be considered top-notch. How many doppelgangers can you maintain at most right now? What's the longest time a split body can exist? Lin Yan asked. Normal can only control one, if you enter the brain overclocking state, you can control two. Controlling a doppelganger consumes brain power, it will disappear when the brain power is exhausted, and each doppelganger can exist for roughly two hours. Overclocking state, two doppelgangers can only exist for half an hour at the same time. Ruyan Lu immediately replied. Very good. 
Lin Yan's eyes grew brighter and brighter. Just based on these points, Ruyan Lu was at least an SS grade talent. Such a talent had all been forcibly bought off by the Sandworm Gang to lower it to degrade by the examiners. Lighthouse, it's really rotten to the bone marrow. What's the furthest distance between the doppelganger and your main body that you can still maintain contact? Lin Yan asked. I haven't tried. Ruyan Lu shook her head. At the same time, she looked at Lin Yan in surprise, he was clearly not the owner of the split body talent, but it seemed like he knew more about it than she did. Even the split distance limit was thought of, she herself hadn't even considered this yet. Lin Yan frowned. This issue must not be sloppy, now start experimenting immediately. Good. Lu Ruyan nodded and immediately separated into a doppelganger and walked out of the inn. After the quiz, Lin Yan came to a shocking conclusion. Ruyan Lu and her doppelganger could maintain a distance of up to one kilometer between them. One had to know that Ruyan Lu had just awakened and was still only a first order doppelganger. The future is unlimited ah. Just don't know what her upgrade path is. Lin Yan rubbed his chin. Different talents had different ascension paths. A warrior was to rely on exercising their body and breaking through their physical limits. And the pathway for him to ascend was to kill people with the weapon he summoned. My goal is to take revenge on Zhang. There are two core revenge targets. One is the chairman of the Zhang clan, lighthouse counselor, Zhang Tuzin. The other is Zhang Tuzin's son, Zhang Fuhao. Lin Yan began to recount his plan, Zhang organized this banquet to essentially lure a snake out of its hole, trying to lure me to appear. The police department and city guards must have prepared an ambush nearby. However, because I ended the sandworm gang last night and disrupted their plans, there was a change in the strength of the ambush. With insufficient manpower, there will definitely be loopholes. So this was all in your plan. Ruyan Lu was surprised. Dustman hadn't received any higher education at all, and hadn't read any historical dramas or storytelling books. Even the most basic Sun Tzu's art of war was unknown. Ruyan Lu was already considered one of the icy smart members of the Dust Folk, but at this moment, she was still shocked by Lin Yan's anticipation and tiger-altering schemes that he had incorporated into his bones. Well, Lin Yan didn't think too highly of himself inwardly just because he came from the Blue Planet. The Dust Folk of this world had their own history and heritage. As long as it was a game between hearts, it would be hard to say anything about crushing. His bottom line, after all, came from Blue Star's powerful firepower and modern weapons that crushed this world's cultivation system. He roughly explained the plan afterward with Lu Ruyan, got it? Aha! Ruyan Lu nodded firmly, boss, promise to complete the mission. Lin Yan nodded, split up and start. This was the first time they had worked together, even the two had only known each other for half a night. But reality was always this unexpected. If one waited to do everything until they were ready, it would be completely too late. Lin Yan could only believe that he hadn't seen the wrong person. He shoved the disguise mask to Lu Ruyan, then put on the mask himself and walked out of the inn. 2-2. Two, two. He came to the vicinity of Tyson's tavern, casually electrocuted a guest and threw him into the trash can, and took out the other party's invitation. A set of actions were flowing and skillful. Afterward, he put on his invisibility cloak, stepped on the wall, and flipped in through the second floor window. Today's Tyson Tavern was filled with traffic and people, and the Tyson Tavern covered a large area. Apart from the main entrance ticket checkpoint, it was impossible to have gifted people who could detect stealth abilities standing guard everywhere. He easily blended into the Tyson restaurant. Then, he turned around and pulled in Ruyan Lu's doppelganger as well. The two of them took off their cloaks of invisibility in the restroom and transformed into guests who were officially invited to the banquet. Lin Yan and Lu Ruyan walked arm in arm through the Tyson Tavern. The location of the hidden sentry within the Tyson restaurant. The gifted person who was staking out the place pretended to be looking at a newspaper. Pay more attention to the single man, even if he disguises himself, it's impossible for him to make up as a woman. The leader of the patrol reminded. Got it, we've memorized his approximate body type, when we see a lone man, we'll make a comparison. The newspaper man nodded. Just as they were chatting, a young, handsome man in a tuxedo, holding a young beauty on his arm, approached the newspaper man. Sir, can I help you? The newspaper man asked suspiciously. Borrowing a newspaper to take a look? Lin Yan raised the brim of his hat with a warm smile. Oh, okay. The newspaper man handed Lin Yan the newspaper in his hand. Lin Yan took a good look at the content on it. On the front page, the news of the sandworm gang's overthrow yesterday was added. Looks like I did a pretty clean job. Lin Yan analyzed the intelligence on the newspaper. The entire page, almost all of it was reports related to himself, even the chief consul of the lighthouse hadn't had such a big card. On the front page, the headline was the news of the sandworm gang. Only the old six who was out hunting last night is still alive, the sandworm gang has completely turned into a wasteland. It won't be able to be rebuilt again in a short period of time. The corner of Lin Yan's mouth hooked into a cold smile. It is speculated that the destruction of the sandworm gang is most likely due to the current lighthouse's most wanted criminal, Lin Yan, who once again bloodied the urban area's card posts last night. It can be seen that this vicious murderer has gotten scared and fled to the lower city. 
For the time being, it couldn't be confirmed whether he had fled Lighthouse City. But in the end of days, leaving the human gathering place was tantamount to suicide. It is believed that he is still hiding in the lower city, and if any dust folk find and report him, he can be directly promoted to upper folk status. The second article. It was a compendium of his criminal acts. From bloodwashing the Yi residents, to assassinating Zhang Fuhua at the Lucky Cafe and blowing up the Shanghai building. Then to sneaking into the consul's hospital to crush Yi Shanghai, and finally the late addition of overthrowing the justice organization, the Sandworm Gang. Justice Organization. When Lin Yan saw the council's characterization of the sandworm gang, although he had expected it, he still had the feeling of wanting to vomit. Turning black and white upside down and fooling the people was really what the council was best at. In the council's propaganda, the sandworm gang was a volunteer organization that provided assistance to the council's management of the lower city without compensation. Don't want a penny of funding and expenses from uptown, selflessly giving their blood and sweat. He shook his head and looked directly to the last article on the front page. It was an oversized bloodied and bolded and highlighted bounty. The biggest murderer to ever grace the lighthouse. The most dangerous murderer, Dustman Lin Yen. Those who report the truth will be rewarded one million dollars in cash. Killing Lin Yen will upgrade his status to reserve counselor and reward him with ten million dollars in cash. Capturing Lin Yen alive will result in a promotion to the position of honorary commissioner of police with the status of reserve counselor, with an additional bounty of thirty million dollars. A prophecy ah. Lin Yan skimmed his lips, that girl Xu Qi was so looking forward to her becoming the number one criminal in the lighthouse. Now that her dream has come true, it's estimated that when she saw today's newspaper, her mouth was crooked with laughter. Previously, the number one most wanted criminal in the lighthouse, the bounty was only $10 million. He directly raised the wanted limit, three times. On the side, Lu Ruyan was also watching, staring at Lin Yan with wide eyes, unable to hide her shock. This man, unexpectedly so tough. While marveling at Lin Yan's toughness, she once again felt a sense of sadness. The upper city and lower city were really two worlds. Lin Yan had turned the upper city upside down, and she was in the lower city, but she didn't even know the slightest bit of news. Don't you know about this? Lin Yan raised his eyebrows and asked Lu Ruyan. Lu Ruyan nodded. Lin Yan drifted. It seemed that even the lighthouse morning news was divided into two editions, the upper folk and the dust folk. The news that people of different classes saw as well as their judgment of what was happening and the situation in the lighthouse was completely different, even vastly opposite. Whom? Lin Yan flipped to the second page, and the entire page was a description of Zhang Clan's 35th anniversary celebration. Afraid that I won't see this message? If he expected it to be good, it was in the Lighthouse Morning newspaper, which was exclusively available in the lower city. The news of Zhang Clan's 35th anniversary celebration was the front page headline. This was the neutered newspaper. He put away the Lighthouse Morning news, I saw Zhang Fu Ao, I'll go and settle the grudge with him first. You follow the plan to find Zheng Tuzin. Don't worry about the walkie-talkie malfunctioning. You can contact me anytime within the Tyson Tavern. Good. Ruyan Lu nodded. Lin Yan and Ruyan Lu separated and went to the bathroom on the second floor. No one is allowed to go in for now. My family's son is inside. Outside the bathroom, two were security guards shouted in a deep voice. Touche. Without the slightest bit of nonsense, Lin Yan blandly walked up, and with both hands, he stabbed the anesthetic steadily and accurately into the two men. He helped the two security guards and entered the restroom. He then backhandedly locked the door to the restroom. The entire process flowed smoothly, and no one noticed this place. Ka chow. Click. After confirming that it was safe, Lin Yan reached out his hand and completely snapped the necks of the two security guards inside the restroom. After doing the mute measures, he walked faithfully inside the restroom. There came the sound of fabric being torn, and euphemistic human voices continued to emanate. It was Lin Yan's first time entering a women's restroom, and after a slight survey, he walked straight towards the pit where the sounds were coming from. Ha ha ha. You're really good at this. What a siren. This Gongzi's vision has always been good. Zhang Fu Hao's voice came out in a cheerful manner. Pying. The next moment, the door was kicked open. Zhang Fu Hao who was struggling was instantly scared out of his mind, and the whole person was so depressed that he wanted to vomit blood. Grass mud horse. Who dares to stir? The latter half of the sentence was swallowed hard into his stomach by Zhang Fu Hao. He looked at the figure at the door in horror. Although he didn't recognize the face, the weapon in his hand made his fear go deep into his bones. It was this thing that had pierced the hand of Pop's personal bodyguard, Uncle White. It even blew out one of his hands. It made him lose the ability to work freely with his hands from then on. What's wrong young Master Zhang? The woman frowned at Lin Yan and cursed, where's the stinking minion from? Don't recognize this as Zhang. Pying. Lin Yan blew the woman's head off with a single shot, her brains bursting all over Zhang Fu Hao. Ah, ah. Zhang Fu Hao's legs instantly went soft as he held onto the toilet wall and slowly sat on the floor. It's you. It's you. Lin Yan grinned and took off his mask, not bad, it's me. I, what on earth did I do to you? Why are you haunting me like a stern ghost? You demon. Zheng Fu Hao's voice trembled. 
you didn't do anything to me. Lin Yan walked up to Zhang Fu Hao and kicked the headless female corpse away, then ruthlessly stepped on Zhang Fu Hao's chest. Ka Ching. The sound of a shattered sternum came out, Zhang Fu Hao just wanted to howl miserably when he was flashed by Lin Yan's slap. Zhang Fu Hao's mouth was forcibly beaten shut, and his teeth clenched, biting his tongue to pieces. Ah, ah. Zhang Fu Hao curled up on the ground in pain, unable to even scream. But you killed my sister. Lin Yan condescendingly looked down at Zhang Fu Hao. Sister. Confusion flashed in Zhang Fu Hao's eyes. That's the kind of look. The killing intent in Lin Yan's chest burned vigorously, and his foot stepped down hard, smothering Zhang Fu Hao's head in the dirty water of the pit. If you can't think of it, you'll be just as good as your eventual worm, drowning in this sewer. His voice was chilling, like the nine ghosts of Cultivator. I think up. Think of it. Zhang Fu Hao's voice gurgled in the water. Lin Yan lifted his foot. Zhang Fu Hao vomited several mouthfuls of toilet water before he was dripping harumps and said, I remember, it was three years ago when I was in the sandworm. Pying. His head was once again stepped on the toilet water, and he was caught off guard and drank a large mouthful. Gulp gulp gulp. I remembered again. Zhang Fu Hao raised his head once again, it's that I ranked gifted dust folk, she didn't agree to do it with me, so I changed her level. Gulp. That's the one with an old lady in the house who came to me for a meal of milk bread for her grandmother on her deathbed, and then I. Gollum. Lin Yan shook his head. Zhang Fu Hao, in the end, how many dustman girls have been brutalized? I'm afraid that it's simply not enough to say. Because up until now, his memories hadn't even gone back within two years. And these were all still some memory points he had. Gulp. In the moment before he was on the verge of death, Zhang Fu Hao had a flash of light. Yi Mansion. Yi Mansion. I remember. He shouted. Lin Yan lifted his foot and coldly looked at him as he kept breathing heavily. It's that woman who went to Yi Mansion to work saying that she exchanged birthday bread for her brother. I remember. Zhang Fu Hao's chest rose and fell violently, showing his teeth in pain. What did Ji Lingshan say to you? Zhang Fu Hao asked repeatedly. Pying. Lin Yan kicked over, shattering his nose and knocking his head heavily against the wall. You're interrogating me? No. Not. Zhang Fu Hao gritted his teeth. He is a person who cherishes his life, now that he is going to die. What secrets can he tell? Your sister's death has nothing to do with us at all. Zhang Fu Hao covered his nosebleed and screamed miserably. You're looking for death. Lin Yan's voice became even colder. I'm not lying. Zhang Fu Hao's eyes were firm. No matter what Ji Lingshan told you, you shouldn't believe it. She just doesn't dare to tell the truth. Five days ago, I was brought by my father to meet the chief consul. On that day, three distinguished guests came to the consul's house, and it was said that their backgrounds were frighteningly large. Just three guys about the same age as me, and the chief consul had to treat them as equals. After the meal, the chief consul asked me to take those three guys out to have fun. Originally, I wanted to take them directly to the Sandworm Gang Experience program. But it was daytime then, and they had to wait until evening for those programs to open. Those three guys disagreed and had an extremely proud attitude, looking at me the same way Shang Min looked at Dustman, and threatened me to find some fun immediately, and if they felt bored, they would kill me. It just so happened that on that day, Yi Lingshan recruited quite a few dust folk to work at Ji Mansion. I thought to myself that they were dust folk anyway, and it didn't matter if they were playing in the Sandworm Gang or in the Yi Mansion. That's why I brought them to Yi Mansion. As a result, they instantly fell in love with your sister. That's what brought about what happened later. Zhang Fu Hao said in a brainwave. You think I'm gullible? Lin Yan grinned, this process, sounded too ridiculous. Whether you believe it or not, that's just the way it is. Zhang Fu Hao looked aggrieved, Yi Ling Shan and I were also forced to lay our hands on your sister. Otherwise, we'd all go to the Sandworm Gang to play with regular tits and maras, how could we possibly abuse the dust folk in broad daylight in the upper city? What am I trying to do? Lin Yan frowned. What Yi Ling Shan had said that night didn't seem to be false either, and Zhang Fu Hao was here revving up again. The truth of the matter didn't seem so simple. But, does that matter? Lin Yan sneered. He just wanted to watch all the culprits who had killed his sister be put to death. Whether you did it intentionally or unintentionally. Whether you were forced or intentional. Killing people to pay for their lives, debts to pay, this is the natural order of things. I'll figure out the truth of the matter, do you have anything else to say? Lin Yan asked indifferently. I've explained everything, you can't kill me. Zhang Fu Hao said repeatedly. Lin Yan smiled coldly, what are the identities and names of those three people? Those three people were all condescending, they didn't treat me as their friend at all, instead it was like they treated me as a servant, they didn't tell me their names at all. Zhang Fu Hao's chest felt depressed as soon as he remembered this. You want to know their identities? I'm afraid that in the entire lighthouse city, the chief consul is the only one qualified to know. Chief consul? Good. Lin Yan nodded, you shouldn't have anything to explain. Didn't you say you wouldn't kill me? Zhang Fu Hao looked at the indifference in Lin Yan's eyes and instantly panicked. That was all cerebralized in your own pig brain, did the spermatozoa eat your brain out? Lin Yan sneered. Bang bang bang. Outside the toilet, someone was already yelling, and when they didn't get a response, they instantly chose to punch the door. 
The color of hope flashed in Zhang Fuhao's eyes. Lin Yan smiled indifferently and opened the storage bottle, pouring white phosphorus powder on his body. Hoo hoo! The moment it touched the air, the white phosphorus powder burst into flames. Zhang Fuhao immediately let out a pig killing scream. Lin Yan indifferently glanced at the smashed toilet door and instantly rolled over, tumbling out of the bathroom through the vent. 222. A bunch of black clothed bodyguards rushed in. Gongzi. The first two people saw Zhang Fuhao's whole body burning and howling miserably, wanting to take credit for it, they immediately pounced on him to put out the fire. But they didn't expect to instantly set themselves on fire and spontaneously combusted. This. The bodyguards all froze at once, no one dared to touch the demonic fire. What are you freezing for? Quickly go find gifted people with the talent of extinguishing fire to come over and extinguish the fire. The bodyguard leader yelled. The ones with the gift of fire extinguishing among the upper folk were all in the fire department, which was still in the lower city putting out the sandworm gang's fire and hadn't returned yet. It was impossible to find gifted people with fire extinguishing talents for a while. Zheng Tuzin rushed in, looking at the already burned and twisted, emitting a burst of meat flavor. With his son who was breathing in but not out, his eyes instantly turned blood red. Qin Liren. Chun Yuan Feng. Is this what you guys are promising with your mouths that my son will definitely not be in danger? I vow to kill you all. His furious roar shook the surroundings. The Tyson Grand Restaurant was in chaos. The police department and city guards hidden among the guests all moved. For a time, the Grand Tavern was filled with people. Looks like Lin Yan has shown his head. Across from the Tyson Grand Restaurant, Police Commissioner Qin Liren sneered. I guess Sheng Tuzin is going crazy at this moment. Cheng Yuan Feng, the captain of the city guards, had his legs on the table and was high on melon seeds. They hadn't intended to protect Zhang Fu Hao. There had to be a crack left for Lin Yan to drill. And if the defense around Zheng Fu Hao was too tight, even if Lin Yan sneaked into the restaurant, he might not make a move. The entire lighthouse city wouldn't be able to find so many gifted people who could detect stealth in disguise. So it was necessary for Lin Yan to make his move and expose himself before he could start moving. Who cares, we are guarding the lighthouse as our duty. His son also died for justice. If he can't think about it, the chief consul will help us make him think about it. Xin Liren smiled grimly, his eyes cold and sharp as he ordered, start closing the net. 2222. The people from the police department and the city guards poured out from everywhere, wanting to rush towards the Tyson restaurant. Ka da 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 da. Thousands of city guards and police departments blocked the Tyson tavern. Humph, now that Lin Yan is considered a turtle in a jar, unless he can grow wings. Qin Liren parted the crowd and looked at the Tyson restaurant with a cold smile. So what if he grows wings? With so many of us surrounding this place, even if he spreads his wings, he can't escape. Chung Yuan Feng was confident and sneered coldly. Not bad. Qin Liren nodded and waved his hand. Go in, identify them one by one, search them one by one. Those that aren't Lin Yan will be released. Hold the wall, line up everyone, search every inch of space. Yes. The police department and city guards rushed into the Tyson restaurant and began a rough exfiltration. The panicked guests tried to push their way out, but they were suppressed by force and kept retreating towards the inside. By what right? What the hell are you guys doing? Who gave you the right? Do you think we are those filthy dust folk? The guests were angry and upset. Everyone, be at ease. Xin Liren pressed his hand to calm everyone's anger, I believe many of you recognize me. I am the chief of the lighthouse police department, Xin Liren. Everyone listen to me. Right now the most vicious criminal in the history of lighthouse, the homicidal maniac Lin Yen, is mixed into the venue. That's why we need to conduct a case-by-case -case investigation. As long as you all cooperate with our investigation, you can all receive $300 afterwards. So that's how it is. Since it's the Lord Chief Constabulary who has come out, we can cooperate instead. Only then were the Shang Min's emotions calmed down. Boom. As soon as the emotions of the upper folk were calmed down, a bomb was thrown down from the air. Boom. An unknown number of people were instantly blown up. These upper folk were all gathered together by the army at a great density, and one bomb killed and injured dozens of people. Do you think I'll let you guys get what you want? Didn't you want to capture me? Then let's use the Tyson Hotel as the battlefield and see who dies and who lives. Lin Yan indifferently declared war using a mixer. The sound spread around, and it was completely impossible to tell where he was. Ha! Qin Liren's veins rippled at the provocation. Rumble! Another bomb was thrown down. It killed dozens of Shangmin. Debris, smoke, blood, and mutilated limbs and arms flew horizontally. Ah! I don't want to die yet. Lord Administrator, let us out. Please! The upper folk all screamed and pleaded miserably. No way! Capturing Lin Yan is the priority, if he isn't captured, many more people will die. Qin Liren's face turned blue. You're lying. It was clearly you who killed his sister. Everything he did was just revenge. A clear voice rang out. Ruyan Lu's doppelganger stood out. You've deceived everyone, and now you want to deceive yourselves. Lin Yan originally had no grudges with you guys. It was you guys who forced him to turn into a murderous maniac. The grudge here has nothing to do with us at the scene at all. Let's get out of here. 
Let Lin Yan and these people who have a grudge settle it on their own. It's actually like this. The guests were wide-eyed. Many people followed the description in the newspaper and thought that Lin Yan was a heartless murderer. One wouldn't even think about why he would kill. But now that they thought about it, if there wasn't a huge grudge, who would risk so much to make an enemy of the entire lighthouse city? It's really drunk. So it's a personal grudge between you and him. Then why should we take the risk with you guys? What does arresting Lin Yan have to do with us? He was only supposed to take revenge on his enemies. What does Yi Shanghai, what is Mr. Zhang, those big shots, have to do with us? It is. Let us out. Otherwise we'll be impolite. The guests yelled. They essentially didn't care about the truth. They just needed a reason to get themselves out of this dangerous place. Where did you get a demonic woman to demonize the people here? Qin Li was furious and looked coldly at Lu Ruyin's doppelganger. Arrest her for me. Yes. A police department expert stepped in and forced Ruyin Lu's doppelganger over. Test her for disguise for me. Qin Li Ren frowned and chided. The detective had just come up. Ruyin Lu's doppelganger then shouted, What do you want? My body is so hot. So you guys are trying to kill everyone present. What are you talking about? Qin Li Ren just wanted to berate the absurdity. The bomb bundled on Ruyin Lu's detached body then exploded with a loud bang. Rumble. The bomb exploded, and the detectives and city guards around her were all blown to a bloody mess. The circle of containment blocking the guests was also blown open with an opening. Even Qin Liren herself was blown away. He flew straight out of the door and collapsed onto the road, spitting out blood. Black smoke rolled out. The scene was in complete chaos. Many guests took advantage of the chaos and broke through the block, wanting to rush out. Back off. Chung Yuan Feng coldly hailed. Beside him, the fully loaded city guards were in an aura of murder. Kill. They each displayed their talents. However, this did not stop the guest's instinct to survive. Coldness flashed in Chung Yuan Feng's eyes as he swung the long knife in his hand, and a three-meter blade she swung out. It cut off a dozen people at the waist. I'll see who still dares to make trouble. Get the hell back inside the restaurant. I got the top enforcement power today. Even if I kill all of you rebels, I won't have to take any responsibility. Chung Yuan Feng roared. Gulp. The bloody scene calmed everyone down. The guests present today added up to less than a thousand, and they were still a rabble, if they went to charge the iron armor array of the city guards. Ten deaths and no life. Your only chance of survival is to cooperate with the search, or to find out Lin Yan on your own. Chung Yuan Feng's long sword crossed, otherwise, there is only death. The guests hardened their heads and slowly retreated back to the Tyson restaurant. But just as they returned, a bomb exploded from the pile of people. Dozens more people were crumbled to pieces. Heavens, there's a wolf in front and a tiger behind, desperate situation. What kind of sins did I create? Letting me fall into this certain death today. I repent. I repent to God. I shouldn't have gone to the sandworm gang before. God, forgive me for my sins. I want to live. The guests all wailed, feeling incredibly broken. Zheng Tuzin appeared with his bodyguard group, his eyes bloodshot and his face green with iron. Good old Chung Yuanfeng. Good old Qin Liren. You two have counted me in as well, haven't you? Zheng Tuzin roared lowly, killing intent in his eyes. Director Chang, look at the situation. Chung Yuan Feng took out the Federal Direct Mission Badge, this time, I am enforcing the law on behalf of the Federation, even if you are a counselor of the Lighthouse. But if you dare to disagree with our law enforcement, I also have the right to kill you. You and I are both working for the great cause of the Lighthouse, for justice and stability, so show some understanding for each other? I sympathize Namabi. Zheng Tuzin roared. He had been counted on for a while, lost his son, and now he was being threatened by the person who counted on him. Not storming out would be a sign that his city was extremely deep. He he, Director Zhang Yu are really uncooperative, then there's really nothing we can do. Chang Yuan Feng shook his head, revealing a look of pity, since Director Zhang dislikes our people's involvement so much, then everyone should withdraw. Captain, are we going to give up the chase? A city guard asked in disbelief. Chang Yuan Feng gave him a blank look, how did I raise such a pig brain subordinate like you? My subordinate is indeed stupid, please enlighten me, Captain. The team members look stupid, but in reality, they were smart, they had to give the leaders the opportunity to show their smarts, this was the way to get promoted. Didn't you see that those who were promoted were colleagues who were scolded by their old leaders as stupid pigs? Play some smart, the leadership of the wind to occupy, can be promoted only strange. Hoof. Chung Yuan Feng nodded, very satisfied, Lin Yan is trapped inside the Tyson restaurant, and cannot grow wings to fly. We are responsible for trapping this place to death. Isn't it good to let Lin Yan and Zhang Tuzin fight inside? If they both lose, our brothers won't lose anything. And we'll catch an SS class wanted criminal. We'll be honored by the Federation. That's a huge honor, you know nothing. Looks like there's still a lot I need to learn from you, Captain. The subordinate practiced patting his ass and then said, but there's still one thing that I don't know, and that is, can Zhang Tuzin take care of that Lin Yan? He is capable of using bizarre means to blow up a building. It's best if Zhang Tuzin dies. Chung Yuan Feng waved his hand. 
Immediately, two people carried out a stool, and he sat on the stool with his legs crossed, peeling an orange in a good mood, we have offended Jing Tuzin to death this time. If we let him walk out of the Tyson restaurant alive, we can't help but find trouble with our city guards and police department in the council in the future. Therefore, from the beginning, I didn't intend to let him leave the Tyson restaurant alive. Even if we have a transfer order from the Federation, killing a counselor is still too risky. After all, so many people here are watching. It's better to let the vicious criminal, Lin Yen, do this for us. Holy shit. Captain, you're really a god of anticipation. Your calculations are unparalleled. I simply admire you beyond words. The team members were overwhelmed with emotion, and the look of shock they put on their faces really didn't look like an act at all. All get ready for battle and wait to reap the benefits. He ordered as he ate his orange in a good mood. Yes. Inside the Tyson Tavern. Lin Yan's eyes were calm and quiet, he could see the game in his heart between these parties, but it didn't affect him at all. He just wanted to kill Zhang's father and son only. Chan Yuanfeng's setup had instead helped him in disguise. What now? Plan 1 has failed. Lu Ruyan's true body at the side said. There's no harm in it, you coalesce the doppelganger first, if I'm sure of bringing you in, I'm sure of bringing you out. Lin Yan said indifferently. He had advanced to the fourth stage now. It was possible to summon heavy weapons of mass destruction like the Vulcan Cannon, Gatling, and RPG. Even if it was a strong charge, the pressure wasn't too great. But there was a risk. Because the bullets were consuming his summoning power. The Vulcan Cannon's rate of fire was 30,000 rounds a minute, and the summoning power in his body right now might not even be enough to support the Vulcan Cannon's full fire for a minute. Therefore, although there was a bottom card in hand, but he wouldn't use it easily. Touché. No longer hiding himself, he jumped out directly from the ventilation duct and stood on the speech return stage in the first floor hall. Whom? The guests froze. They looked over one after another. Who are you? Where did you come from? What are you doing standing on the lectern? Facing the many voices of questioning, Lin Yan just looked at Zhang Tuzin indifferently, Mr. Zhang, looking for me so hard. Have you ever thought that I would take the initiative to come to you? Zhang Tuzin instantly understood Lin Yan's identity and smiled coldly. In the end, he still hated Lin Yan three times more. You actually jumped out on your own. Sewer gutter rat. I certainly didn't expect a lowly thing like you to dare to have the balls to stand in front of me. Lin Yan unmasked, his face as cold as frost. Wow. Murderer. Lin Yan. Life snatching Yama. The guests in the arena all had their scalps tingling with fear in their hearts. This name was simply synonymous with terror in Lighthouse City these days. Boss be careful. The white clothed suit man immediately shielded himself in front of Zhang Tuzin, his entire skin steeled. The weapon in this kid's hand is very evil. Lin Yan looked at the man in the white suit, I'm not interested in killing you, but you had to seek death, so I'll just go along and kill you. It's not like I'm showing up for anything else, just to kill you Zhang Tuzin with my own hands. He he. Zhang Tuzin grinned, I happen to want to taste it too, to kill you with my own hands. Not only was he an s rank talent possessor, but he was also one of the few 6th order powerhouses in Lighthouse City. Cultivation before the 7th rank could all be completely piled up by resources. Zhang Tuzin was in control of the 10 billion dollar group, so he naturally had as many resources as he wanted. How could he not go crazy and give himself resources to cultivate? As for why not give Zhang Fu Hao a promotion to the 6th rank? Because this waste of a son was addicted to alcohol and sex, it was just too much to lift. Moreover, Zhang Fu Hao's awakened talent, which was great E, was simply impossible to cultivate to a high rank. If Zhang Tuzin hadn't secretly bought off the rating officer, Zhang Fu Hao would have even been relegated to a dust folk and gone to the mines to gnaw on cockroach chunks with those sewer rats. Then, come on. Lin Yan faintly hooked his hand at Zhang Tuzin. Stupid bastard. The reason why you rats have always only been rats is because of your stupid brains. Zhang Tuzin smiled indifferently, I'm sitting on such a huge advantage that I would fight you one on one. Not knowing how to maximize the resources around you is the fundamental reason why you will always be dust folk. The advantages you're talking about, are these people? Lin Yan indifferently pointed towards the white suit man and the others. He he, how? Zhang Tuzin hadn't even finished speaking. Lin Yan summoned a RPG, self-righteousness is the cause of your death today. He naturally that was only showing up if he had absolute invincibility. What advantage to speak of, that was only spoken of in the case of an even match. Boom. The RPG in his hand struck. Kill. Protect the boss. The man in the white suit erupted with all his might, last time I was careless and gullible, this time. The words had not yet fallen. The RPG shells then hit the face. Hoomph. Give me a crack. The man in the white suit slashed up. Buzz. The knife energy buzzed. It's so handsome. This slash is bound to build success. The bodyguards next to him all had glowing eyes. Boom. The bomb exploded. The man in the white suit, along with the several bodyguards next to him, was instantly blown to pieces, bursting all around. Snap. The dust and smoke cleared, and the shattered bodies of several people crumbled all around. The scene went quiet. That, what kind of attack was that? So terrifying. 
to instantly cause such terrifying explosive damage from so far away. Not even a fifth-ranked warrior could have any means of protection and was directly blown to pieces. The guests panicked. They suddenly felt as if Lin Yen alone was even more terrifying and bizarre than the siege of city guards outside. Lin Yen. Fine beads of sweat ran down Zheng Tu Sen's forehead, his face gloomy. You're really surprising, just how many kinds of tricks and talents do you have? But it doesn't matter anymore, today you will die in my hands. Lin Yen grinned, knowing that Zheng Tu Sen was just cheering himself up. Even for sixth-ranked gifted people, there were very few who were confident that they could resist an RPG. Die. Zheng Tuzen roared, his body all but vaporized as he charged up. s rank talent, transformation of reality and void. It's been a long time since Director Zhang has made a move. After all, as a counselor there are hardly any occasions where you have to do it yourself. Go for it, Counselor Zhang. Kill this living hell. The guests shouted. Eh? Lin Yan wasn't really clear about Zhang Tuzen's natural ability, and at this moment, he saw his combination of reality and falsehood. He couldn't help but rise with no small amount of interest. Pying. He sent out a rocket. Buzz. The rocket passed through Zhang Tusen's chest as if it had passed through a puddle of water. Boom. The rocket exploded in the group of guests, instantly killing and injuring a crowd. The wailing became even louder. Hee hee, with your weapon, you can't even touch me, how else can you win? Zhang Tuzen laughed coldly, and after confirming that Lin Yan's weapon could be dodged by his virtualization, his heart settled down. He didn't even need to run, but slowly approached towards him by walking. Lin Yan didn't panic. Zheng Tu Sen's talent was indeed a bit weird, but it wasn't invincible. Where there was emptiness, there was reality. He also walked towards Zheng Tu Sen in a bland manner, and the full coverage light kinetic armor summoned after the fourth rank wrapped him in it. Hmph, you really can turn out anything, but unfortunately, in front of my ability, it's all futile. Zheng Tu Sen sneered as he walked up to Lin Yan. With a steel blade in his hand, he chopped down on the full coverage light armor with a buzzing sound. Stab. Sparks flew. Even a sixth-ranked physique wielding a steel blade was unable to cause a break in the armor. Zheng Tuzen's pupils fluttered, and for a moment, he was a bit disoriented. Defense is also this terrifying. What talent can do this? Lin Yan's long-range attack just now was already terrifying enough, to think that he could still manage to achieve such an outrageous defense in close combat as well. Zheng Tuzen circled around Lin Yan continuously, wanting to find a break in him. But alas, he was disappointed. The light-covering armor was tightly sealed, and there was no way to find a place where the blade could pierce in. Impossible. Absolutely impossible. In this world, how could this kind of armor exist? Zhang Tuzen's brain went completely blank, deeply feeling the sense of despair of being crushed by technology. Even though he could dodge Lin Yan's bizarre attacks, he was still helpless against Lin Yan. How did you do it? Sealed in such armor, how can you breathe? Zhang Tuzen roared in anger, his veins bulging. The enemy was right in front of you, and there was nothing you could do about him. This feeling was truly maddening. Die. He went crazy, constantly slashing at Lin Yan. Virtualization gave him many opportunities to operate though. It even made it incredibly tricky for many gifted people. But facing Lin Yan's comprehensive armor, he could only feel despair. Lin Yan looked at Zhang Tuzen indifferently. He was trying to make Zhang Tuzen feel the ultimate despair. This lighthouse counselor who was bent on his death, this originator of the extreme tragedy of the lighthouse city dust folk circle, this manipulator behind the sandworm gang. Hoo hoo. Zhang Tuzen felt exhausted, gasping for air, his eyes already completely bloodshot. He couldn't do anything with Lin Yan. Lin Yan grinned a morose smile, tired of fighting? It's my turn. Zhang Tusen felt his scalp tingle as he sneered, you think you can hurt me? Based on my observation, you aren't able to complete the vaporization of your entire body, right? Lin Yan sneered. Zhang Tusen's face changed. He hadn't reached the seventh stage yet, so there really wasn't a way for him to accomplish a full body virtualization, how could you tell? Lin Yan pointed to his eyes, infrared scanning. What kind of evil words are these? Zhang Tusen couldn't help but roar. Communicating with Lin Yan had the feeling of being a primitive monkey. The vocabulary that the other party spoke as a matter of course was simply incomprehensible to him. Go to hell with this doubt. Lin Yan shouted angrily. The eye part of his armor was pre-installed with infrared scanning. The infrared heat was significantly weaker in the vaporized parts. The solid parts, on the other hand, had an extremely strong infrared response. Your talent is too one-dimensional, perhaps it would be more interesting to fight if it also came with a damage ability. A steel blade popped out of Lin Yan's mechanical arm and chopped out sharply. Hoomph. A look of fear appeared in Zhang Tuzen's eyes. He really had been completely seen through. Not only do you know about my talent flaws, you can even see through my false parts. Who on earth revealed my information to you? Zhang Tuzen became enraged, I see. This was all a setup to move me. It was those two brutes, Qin Liren and Shang Yuan Feng, who betrayed me. Unrepentant to the point of death. Lin Yan's eyes were cold and his killing machine boiled over. I'm only killing you because you have a grudge against me. He kept swinging his sword. With the power armor, his close combat speed and strength even crushed Zhang Tuzen. 
Clang, clang. Zhang Tusin could barely keep up with the speed of Ling Yan's sword swings, but a long defense would lead to a loss, and in dozens of rounds, he was already covered in wounds, blood gurgling, he kneeled on one knee, finally unable to support himself, and looked at Ling Yan sinisterly. You killed me, but you can't escape here either. Be buried with me. Or, if we join forces and you don't kill me, I can take you out. Lin Yan grinned, no need. He slashed down and sent Zheng Tuzhen's head flying. Gulp. Zheng Tuzhen's head was thrown flying through the crowd, his eyes revealing a strong unwillingness. A generation of lighthouse counselor, the chairman of the $10 billion group, actually so suffocated to die under the knife. Snort. Lin Yan used Zheng Tuzhen's corpse to wipe away the blood traces on the knife, and then retracted the steel blade into the exoskeleton. Zheng's father and son, ambushed together. He closed his eyes and consoled his sister in his mind. There are still three sinners left, but their identities are known only to the city lord. But nowadays, the most priority thing is still to leave from the encirclement first. His gaze was sharp and his expression was cold. He turned around and looked at these guests, his face cold, now, you are given two choices. First, be slaughtered by me here. Second, rush out and fight for a sliver of life for yourselves. He didn't have any good feelings towards these Shangmin. Which of these people weren't the ones who ate human blood buns and resented the fact that human blood was hard to eat? What's more, he just wanted revenge. This. The guests gulped. Zheng Tuzhen, in their eyes, that was a resounding big shot in Lighthouse City. Moreover, it was also synonymous with a strong person. Such a person, with dozens of bodyguards, was easily solved. Lin Yan's comment about slaughtering them all was not a playful remark at all, but he truly had the ability to do so. Staying is only a dead end, if we rush out, there might be a chance of survival. Ruyan Lu's doppelganger shouted again in the crowd at the right time. This. The guests all looked at each other, their moods wavering. You all have three seconds to think about it, and after three seconds, I will randomly fire. Lin Yan stood indifferently in the crowd. Back then, when the division of control between the upper folk and the dusty folk was implemented, but all of the people who stood here, one by one, all voted in favor of it. Even if they all died, Lin Yan wouldn't frown. 3. You demon. Indiscriminate murderer. Psychopath. Pervert. Pom pom. Lin Yan directly shot and blew the brains out of those people, too. The crowd quieted down, everyone was silent. 1. Lin Yan's last number fell, and these guests had an unrivaled tacit understanding, all of them instantly rushing out of the door and towards the outside. Kata. The gate opened. Chang Yuan Feng was savoring an orange in a good mood. It seems that the borrowed knife was successful? Was it Zhang Tuzhen who died, or was it Lin Yan? The core of the city guards were watching. Charge. To live. The guests surged out, directly pouring out hundreds of people, the scene was chaotic. Chung Yuan Feng froze. This scene, it was completely different from what was planned. He was furious and stormed out, are you violating the law enforcement order of the federation, are you trying to rebel? A bunch of rebels, rebellious people. Chung, don't care what this Chung Yuan Feng says, let's just charge out and impeach him together at the lighthouse. That's right, the law is not responsible for the masses. I don't believe you'd dare to kill hundreds of us upper folk on the street. The upper folk's eyes were red. Frantically, they rushed the card. What should we do now captain? The ass kisser also panicked. He would only lick his superiors and was really inexperienced in dealing with this situation. Chun Yuan Feng gritted his teeth, kill. He held the federal law enforcement order in his hand, but whenever he caught Lin Yan, the SS class wanted criminal. With all his credits, he could be directly upgraded to serve at the federal headquarters. At that time, it would be time to say goodbye to Lighthouse City. Who cared what the upper folk of Lighthouse City said about themselves? Thinking of this, his killing intent was even more falsely resolute. Kill. Kill. The city guards got the order and fired their crossbows. Buzz. Most of the Shangmin with attack talents had joined the city guards and the police department. The combat power was a whole lot higher than the same rank. Very few of these guests were upper folk with combat talents, and the scene was completely one-sided. The first batch of guests who rushed out continuously fell to the ground stained with blood. Ah uh, ah uh, ah uh, ah. Uh. Miserable screams and wails were endless, and blood stained the front door of Tyson's tavern. Lin Yan brought Lu Ruyan with him, setting up the Vulcan cannon, and walked out of the front door. Lin Yan is there. A sharp-eyed city guard yelled. Catch him. The city guards roared, all get out of the way. Lin Yan sneered and directly pressed the trigger. Bullets poured out like a torrent from the 20mm oversized caliber barrel. Bullets of this caliber could be completely treated as small artillery shells. The Vulcan cannon was a divine weapon before the information war, and could be completely used to hit armored vehicles and even aircraft. Shooting into the air, the rate of fire can all reach 3,000 rounds per minute. The initial velocity breaks a thousand meters per second, and the effective range is 1. 6 kilometers. The six-round barrel rotated, and countless bullets spewed out crazily, that is, the weapon that later became extremely famous in the Blue Star gaming world, the Gatling. In an instant, the bullets poured out, a complete torrent of bullets. Da day 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 day. 
Wherever the torrent of bullets went, no body of flesh and blood could withstand it. Even a sixth-ranked warrior would only end up being pierced through. Wherever the torrent of bullets went, blood and flesh flew everywhere, and a piece of life was harvested and plundered. My niggas. Chung Yuanfeng's scalp was exploded with fear, rolling and crawling, he hurriedly grunted down from the stool. The bullet grazed his scalp and swept through. It punched out dense and thick bullet holes in the wall a dozen meters away. Demons. What kind of bizarre power is this? He has been completely controlled by the evil god. This is a tactic that only the extraterrestrial evil god has. No. The city guards fell in pieces. There was no resistance at all. Those swept by the torrent of bullets all instantly ascended into the sky. In just a dozen seconds, hundreds of people were swept to death. The besieged city guards were completely swept dumbfounded. Completely beaten silly. The color of despair tumbled in everyone's hearts. It's the treasure tool he's holding in his hand. That treasure tool is too terrifying. He summoned the evil god's weapon. With that treasure tool alone, it could destroy the entire lighthouse city. Some people wailed, unable to rise to confrontation. At this rate of slaughter, if Lin Yan maintained such a dense encircling formation, in at most 10 minutes, he would be able to kill everyone present. Lin Yan's summoning power disappeared rapidly as the bullet struck. With a rate of fire of 3,000 rounds per second, it was indeed hard to top. Where did the second doppelganger you left outside get to? Beads of sweat appeared on Lin Yan's forehead. The Vulcan cannon was consuming more than he had imagined, and he might not be able to hold out for long. Coming! Ruyan Lu shouted. A silhouette wrapped in a body full of bombs leapt down from the roof of the building, landing right in the direction of Lin Yan's breakthrough. Boom! A terrifying explosion caused a small mushroom cloud to rise in the field. Black smoke rose. Dozens of kilograms of high explosives self-detonated, causing a shockwave that sent dozens of meters of people around them flying. The road was completely shattered. An unknown number of people burst into pieces in this violent explosion. Self-exploding people? Chang Yuanfeng was even more confused. However, he was also blown up, his head buzzing, and he couldn't even think at this point. This one self-explosion blew open a huge gap in the encirclement. Lin Yan brought Lu Ruyan and rushed out from the gap. Captain! They ran out of the encirclement. The ass kisser shouted. Screaming and screaming. Just know how to scream. Give chase. Chung Yuanfeng's eyes were covered in blood, and his body was trembling with fear and anger. Using so much manpower, causing the deaths of so many people, even Zhang Tuzin, a counselor, had a high probability of being dead. If he didn't catch the wanted criminal again, then what awaited him would be the trial by the highest military court of the Federation. 222. The entire neighborhood was in chaos as the police department and city guards frantically chased Lin Yan in the direction he had left. Detectives unleashed their talents and traced around. Police dogs and search dogs were also released, canvassing along the streets. Half of Lighthouse City was in a frenzy, Chang Yuanfeng was frantic. This caused the Shangmin who were originally living a good life to curse and complain. But unfortunately, this manhunt was destined to be fruitless. Once they left the encirclement, looking for someone again was like finding a needle in a haystack. Sure enough it failed. Lighthouse, the chief consul listened to the report of the black clothed man beside him and shook his head with a cold smile. I knew that those two idiots couldn't be counted on at all. It seems that we can only wait for the hidden lines I arranged to see if we can get anything out of them. You also arranged for a hidden line? The vice consul at the side raised an eyebrow, somewhat surprised. In theory, all accidents and cases that occurred in Lighthouse City should be handled by the police department and the city guards. H.M. The chief consul nodded, searching the entire city is tantamount to finding a needle in a haystack. If we really want to catch someone, we have to keep watch. Please clarify, sir. The vice consul was puzzled. Think about it, this Lin Yan is able to live so well in the city and show so many idiosyncrasies. Combined with today's report, it's not hard to see. He definitely has quite a few accomplices and associates in Lighthouse City. The chief consul smiled faintly, and what is the foremost thing to address if you want to survive in human society? Money, the vice consul blurted out. Ha ha, that's right. The chief consul nodded, with so many people hiding in Lighthouse City, whether it's for activities or food and shelter. All of them need a lot of money to support them. Holding cash is not allowed to enter or leave the city. Then there are only two ways left for them to obtain a lot of money. Redeeming gold or selling high-grade alien beast cores. The vice consul's glasses lit up. Not bad. The chief consul sneered, the high-level alien beast core selling point is in the center of the city guard's defense camp, so they won't go and throw themselves into the net. The most likely way for them to exchange it is to exchange it for gold at the bank. My people have been waiting there for a long time, once someone exchanges gold, they will immediately keep an eye on them, and there should be a harvest. Ding. He raised his eyebrows and took out a communication crystal. Consul, just now a girl exchanged three million dollars worth of gold at the lighthouse bank. A reporting voice came from within the crystal. Keep an eye on her. A cold aura flashed in the consul's eyes, it seems that the fish has taken the bait. Originally, he thought that the organization behind Lin Yan would split the waves and sell the stolen goods, 
but it turned out to be so stupid to exchange millions of gold at once, afraid that he wouldn't find out. At the Upper Star Academy, Xu Qi fiddled with the bank card in her hand and waited quietly. She glanced at the black-clothed men walking outside the window, thinking they were well hidden, and skimmed her mouth, how unprofessional. The police department system in a small city like this is really out of shape from top to bottom. Are you sure he'll come back? The inquiry came from the communication crystal. The corner of Xu Qi's mouth quirked, of course, don't forget, I can read minds. He he. You say so. We're ready to receive him, your task is to lure him to the designated location, leave the rest to us. The message came again from the crystal. Don't worry. Xu Qi's ears twitched, he should be here already, I'll leave you to it for now. Click. Lin Yan brought Lu Ruyan and opened the door to enter the dormitory. Brother Sin. The smile raised on Xu Qi's face faded away after she saw Ruyan Lu. What Sin brother? Ruyan Lu was a little puzzled. I'll explain it to you when it's safe. Lin Yan shook his head and looked directly at Xu Qi. Did you exchange the gold bars? Aha. Uh -huh. Xu Qi raised the bank card in her hand and looked at Lu Ruyan. Who is she? My partner. Lin Yan was concise. Bring the bank card. I have to hurry. This manhunt today will spread to the Upper Star Academy. I can't stay for long. Good. Xu Qi stood up and was going to hand the bank card to Lin Yan. Whoosh whoosh whoosh. Several arrows with magical attributes shot in. Watch out. Lin Yan's face changed as he raised the blast glass and instantly blocked behind Xu Qi. Snort snort. Those arrows, surprisingly, made a crack in the explosion-proof glass, almost shattering it. Oh no. Lin Yan instantly reacted. Didn't I tell you to only sell a little bit of gold? How much did you sell? Afraid you're short of money, sold it all. Xu Qi teased. What time is it? You can still make jokes. Lin Yan frowned. I have your brother Sin, now that this place is surrounded, I'm also taken as your accomplice. Xu Qi directly hugged Lin Yan's arm, you have to be responsible for me and take me with you to escape. Lin Yan had a bit of a headache, before he couldn't conclude whether Xu Qi had a special identity or was just a nervous wreck. But now, he was basically certain that Xu Qi was definitely not as simple as she seemed. Da de de de. The surrounding city lord's personal guards were approaching, the talent flowing from their bodies, each one of them was not simple. If they were stalled, the police department and the city guards would frantically surge over. All right. Lin Yan nodded and threw the blast shield to Xu Qi. If you're doing this on purpose, then on the way, you'll just have to fend for yourself. Dare, begin. However, Xu Qi didn't even listen to him, she just shouted to herself, looking excited. Lin Yan was speechless. I know the escape path, follow me. Xu Qi beckoned, leading Lin Yan to rush outside. Where to go? The three black clothed guards raised their hands, and a cage made of spider threads enveloped them. This was their natural skill, steel spider thread. It could trap even an offensive gifted person of a higher rank. Snort. The steel blade on Lin Yan's arm slashed up. The spider thread was extremely terrifyingly flexible, and surprisingly, it wasn't cut by the alloy steel blade. You can't do this. Xu Qi grinned. Look at me. I don't know where she pulled out a small wooden stick and held it in her hand. Ha ha ha. Originally, the faces of the three black clothed guards were still incomparably grave, but as a result, they burst out laughing when they saw the small wooden stick. Snort. In the next moment, the small wooden stick made a stroke in front of them. The spider silk cage that even the alloy steel blade couldn't cut through, unexpectedly broke directly. What? The three black clothed personal guards roared incredulously. Spitting silk anywhere is a bad habit. Xu Qi shook her finger at them, and the small wooden stick made a stroke towards the chests of the three. Snort snort snort. The bodies of the three, for some reason, snapped at the waist. No. The trio screamed miserably, their bodies transformed into two halves and fell softly to the ground, roaring miserably. Pom pom. Lin Yan replenished his gun, smashing the heads of several people, then looked at Xu Qi with a grave expression. What exactly is your talent? I named my talent, nothing constantly. How about that? Razzle dazzle right. Xu Qi grinned and showed off. Isn't your talent mind reading? Lin Yan frowned. Haven't you heard of the twin life talent? Xu Qi arrogantly raised her neck. Lin Yan shook his head, he really didn't know that someone could have a dual life talent. At least after coming to this world, he hadn't heard of similar claims. Let's escape first and then I'll explain it to you. Xu Qi waved, get out of here first. Um, Lin Yan nodded. These city lords personal guards, although small in number, were all fifth ranked experts, and were all gifted and difficult. However, with Lin Yan's modern weapons, Xu Qi's nothing constant, and Ruyan Lu's doppelganger, they still easily rushed out of the encirclement. The back mountain of the Upper Star Academy. It should be safe here. Xu Qi took a long breath. Lin Yan nodded, now, you should tell me everything. Good. Xu Qi nodded, you can ask me as many questions as you want, and I will answer truthfully. Why do you want to help me? Lin Yan asked. Because the mission I received was to help you. Xu Qi said, turning her head and looking at Ruyan Lu, I was going to save you too, but the night of the operation. Brother Sin went to the Sandworm Gang, so we didn't make a move. And me? Ruyan Lu froze, what does it have to do with her? Brother Sin you're so ruthless. 
We prepared a lot of people, but we weren't confident that we could completely overthrow the Sandworm Gang in one night. Shu Chi Skedin gave Lin Yen a thumbs up. You alone are simply comparable to a thousand armies. Less ass kissing. Get to the point. Who are we? Lin Yen asked with a frown. Have you heard of the Jair organization? Shu Chi asked. No. Lin Yen shook his head. Back when the alliance wanted to divide the survivors into the upper folk and the dust folk, the survivors were divided into two factions amongst themselves. The faction that didn't support it lost the struggle, and from then on, the entire human alliance was revolutionized with a stratification system. After the stratification, the division between the upper folk and the dust folk became wider and wider, and all kinds of sufferings continued to take place. The upper folk whose conscience was still intact and the dust folk whose hearts were filled with anger formed the Jair organization. You are from the Jarius organization? Lin Yan asked. Yes. Shu Chi nodded, however, the alliance's ability to suppress news is really strong ah. Actually erased our existence completely. You actually haven't even heard of us. When? Was very small, I seem to have heard of some. Lu Ruyan remembered, but that was just an inconspicuous page in the newspaper, saying that Jarius was a traitor to humanity, wanting to completely bury humanity in Armageddon. Jarius had just been established when he was completely wiped out. Then, nothing was ever heard about Jarius again. Ha! Shu Chi shook her head, Jarius has always existed, and the more it grows, the more it flourishes. The scale of the war between us and the Alliance has been expanding. Now one-fifth of the cities in the Alliance are basically under our control. Touché. The branches of the tree ruffled. Lin Yan looked over alertly, his gun pointing at a bush, who's there? One of our own, don't be impulsive. A vested man with a scar on his face and a competent woman with short hair stepped out from the bushes. Blade, Sister Hair. Shuki greeted cordially. Well done. Sister Hare gave Shu Chi a thumbs up, then looked at Lin Yan with amazement. She somewhat couldn't believe that this clean-cut little handsome man in front of her was the king who had plunged the lighthouse into a nightmare in the past few days, stirring up the council, and had been called the living king of hell by the upper folk. How did he manage to make the lighthouse helpless and had to raise the bounty to an insane 30 million dollars? Don't gawk, little brother Lin Yan is a key figure that the upper folk have named to be properly protected. Let's get out of the city first. Blade said in a deep voice, it can't even be called completely safe until we get out of the city. If you have any questions, little brother, ask us on the way. Also good. Lin Yan nodded. Since they were the enemies of the lighthouse, the enemy of the enemy was a friend. For the time being, he would cooperate with them and observe the specifics later. How do we get out of the city? Lin Yan asked. Take the tunnels. Blade pointed at the land under his feet. Before Lin Yan could react, the ground beneath their feet collapsed. Hey, there are things on the city walls that suppress talent, we wasted some time bypassing those things, we weren't too late, were we? In the tunnels, the long-haired man in uniform with a dozen Jair members grinned at Blade. The timing is just right, let's hurry up and get out, in a moment the residual talent power in the tunnels will trigger the city wall alarm. Blade beckoned. Why am I a key target of your protection? Is it because my ability has caught your eye? Lin Yan asked with a frown. It didn't make sense, after all, he had just bloodied the Yi mansion before Shu Chi approached him. This proved that they had planned this long ago. It's not clear, we received this mission before you made a scene in Lighthouse City. This order came from the highest level of Jarius, the exact reason is only known to those at the top. Blade shook his head and explained. Lin Yan felt a strange and unfamiliar sensation. He was born in this world and was just an ordinary dust folk. Ever since he had memories, there was nothing special about him, whether it was his family or his performance. It wasn't until he awakened his talent that he had some uniqueness, a principle to be sought out by Jarius' organization. But now Blade was telling him that Jair's contact with him was not because of his talent, but that he had a plan long ago. There are many mutated beasts outside the city, and when we go out of the lighthouse's shrouded area, we will surely die. If we go out of the city now, won't we have to face endless dangers? Lu Ruyan asked from the side. Ha ha ha. Sister Hare laughed out loud. Aren't you guys used to the lie of jumping out of the lighthouse by now? Could it be that the end is over? There are no more mutant beasts out there at all. Ruyan Lu asked in shock. No. Sister Hare shook her head, Doomsday has not ended, but the Alliance has long since discovered the substance that resists mutant beasts, the Linglong Crystal. The reason why the Lighthouse can keep the mutant beasts from approaching is because the core of the Lighthouse is made of Linglong Crystals. In our base outside the city, we also have a piece of Linglong Crystal, so we don't have to worry about the mutant beasts. You guys have built a base outside the Lighthouse City. What are you going to do? Lin Yan asked the crucial question. Of course it's, to seize Lighthouse City. Sister Hare's eyes were serious, her voice confident and firm. Hmm. A glint flashed in Lin Yan's eyes. Jarius was going to make a move against Lighthouse City. This was good news. According to Jarius' description of his code of conduct, their enemies were only the Lighthouse Council and the Upper Folk. This was the same as his claim. It was just the right time to take advantage of Jarius' power to truly take revenge on the Lighthouse. It was time to have an account of everything he had suffered over the years. 
Lin Yen, join us. Sister Hare extended her palm, although we didn't get to know you before we set off, we already know all about your recent moves in Lighthouse City. We've been comrades in arms for a long time. Whether it's Xu Qi or that nurse at the Lighthouse Consul's hospital, they are all people we've arranged. So it's you guys. Lin Yen remembered that nurse, if it wasn't for her, it wouldn't have been so easy for him to enter Yi Shanghai's ward. I have to think about it. He couldn't trust anyone right now, and the Jarius organization was still completely unknown to him. Just hearing one side of the story didn't mean anything. This was the law of survival in the wasteland world. Well, I know you won't be able to trust us for a while, but I believe that after you've fought alongside us, you should be able to gain some understanding of our ideals. Sister Hare smiled, not caring about Lin Yan's rejection. Soon, they walked out of the tunnel. Hoo hoo. Just as they stepped out of the tunnel, they smelled air that had a completely different flavor than inside Lighthouse City. The wind was howling and the air was filled with the smell of blood. However, the sky was cloudless, giving one a sense of relief at being freed from the cage. This used to be an abandoned mountain village before the calamity, and we converted it into a temporary base. Blade pointed to the mountain village in front of him. H.M. Lin Yan nodded. Roar. Just as the group wanted to head towards the mountain village, a mournful roar came. A pack of white wolves unexpectedly surrounded towards Lin Yan and the others. Wolves? After Lin Yan came to the wasteland, he had never been out of Lighthouse City, let alone seen a wild animal. It could be said that he knew nothing about everything outside of Lighthouse City in this world. Only being able to rely on the crude education of the Lighthouse Academy to form a crude understanding of this world. No, this isn't a wolf. Lin Yan frowned. Although these animals resembled wolves, they were all over 4 meters in size, and the proportions of their two paws were severely deformed. The two canines were exposed, more like a combination of saber-toothed tiger, wolf, and anteater. It was a creature Lin Yan had never seen before. Our roar. The leading white wolf spat out a mouthful of wind blades. Quickly dodge. It's a sixth-ranked dire wolf leading a group of fifth-ranked tigresses foraging for food. Sister Hare warned. What bad luck. Blade took out a long knife from his back and prepared for battle. Pying. Lin Yan blasted up with a shot, sending a white wolf soaring with blood. The same fifth rank, because of different talents and different fighting styles, their strengths were vastly different. These mutant beasts were obviously much harder to deal with than humans. With such a large size, a shot up basically couldn't create much damage. Boom! Lin Yan directly took out his RPG and blasted it up with one shot. Boom! The power of the shell was still enough, one shot went down and directly shattered the head of that white wolf. It fell to the ground in a disheveled state. This kind of talent ability consumes a lot of energy, right? Sister Hare repeatedly reminded, this kind of wolf-type mutant beasts usually act in groups, so be sure to conserve your energy. It's expected that a comrade will come over to meet us soon. Not in the way. Lin Yan's cannonballs fired in quick succession. Boom 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 boom. The heads of one white wolf after another were blown apart. Snort. The leading dire wolf had obviously realized that Lin Yan was the toughest enemy, and spat out a mouthful of wind blades that unexpectedly carried a cold current. The grass and trees in the path were all instantly frozen. If this shot hit his body, he would directly have to be frozen into an ice sculpture and chopped off. Boom! Lin Yan hit the wind blade with an RPG shot, then added another shot to blow off the dire wolf's head. The sixth order mutant beast already had a mind of its own, and was crafty as hell, seeing the rocket at this point, it hastily dodged. Boom! The shell exploded, and although it dodged away some distance, it was still injured by the blast on its front legs, and blood flowed out. Lin Yan's series of maneuvers made blade and sister hair, who were like an enemy, look dumbfounded. Xu Qi raised her chin, how's that? I told you, right? Lin Yan is very strong, there's no need for the two of you to come together to pick up the pieces. This. Blade and Sister Hair looked at each other and nodded in agreement. Lin Yan's methods were too bizarre, but they were also truly terrifying. Our roar. The dread wolf was horrified and roared as it was about to turn its head to escape. Although blood and flesh were good, life was always more important. Mutant beasts still had the intuition of wild beasts in their nature. Wanna go? Stay you. Lin Yan sacrificed his Vulcan cannon and opened fire directly at the fleeing dire wolf. A torrent of bullets poured out towards the dire wolf. Boom 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 boom. The 20mm bullet cannon crackled on the dread wolf, like a rain of stones hitting into a river of blood, crackling blood emerging from the dread wolf. After only 5 seconds, the 4 meter long 6th order dire wolf was reduced to a puddle of blood. The scene fell silent. Those 5th rank white wolves were also all terrorized by the loud ringing sound, and after losing their leader, they collapsed and scattered on their own. No one is allowed to leave. Lin Yan held the Vulcan cannon in his hand and fired frantically. On his panel, the fourth rank experience bar was immediately full. After all, the killing efficiency of the Vulcan cannon was simply too high. How could he give up this chance to upgrade nowadays? Da 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 da. Lin Yan carried the Vulcan cannon and continuously poured a torrent of bullets at the white wolves fleeing around him. Within a short time, the entire large area was covered with white wolf corpses that had been beaten into sieves. 
Blood and water flowed into small rivers. Finally fifth rank. Lin Yan let out a sigh of relief. After ascending the rank, his energy automatically returned to full. Fifth rank can actually start unlocking some near future auxiliary type technology. He checked the summoning panel. The most conspicuous thing was the gene potion. It was said to be the same gene potion as Captain Pretty Country. It's really possible to summon something from a sci-fi movie, doesn't that mean that before long I'll be able to drive a Gundam and nuke the world? Lin Yan didn't hesitate and immediately summoned the gene potion. In front of the crowd's dumbfounded gazes, he pumped the gene potion into his body. In the original story, Captain Pretty Country was able to pull a helicopter with his bare hands, casually jumping at a height of more than 10 meters. This expressive power put in this world, was at least a gifted person of the 7th rank of the strength department. It might even be more than that. After all, Lin Yan had never seen an expert above the 7th order, and it seemed that there were no experts above the 7th order in Lighthouse City at all. After all, the 4th and 7th orders were two big hurdles. After the 7th rank, the ability of a gifted person would get another qualitative leap. Barrett Anti-Material Sniper Rifle Lin Yan looked at the weapon in the second position of the panel. This was a weapon that was known as an absolute killer among single weapons. Mortar Ultra-long-range battlefield weapon, known as the divine weapon of the non-massive mechanical battlefield of World War II. Ultra-long-range strikes and single-body assassinations, as well as physical quality increases, the things unlocked at the fifth rank are all very practical. Lin Yinchan, is it convenient to ask how many orders of giftedness you are? Sister Hare asked uncertainly. Just upgraded to the fifth rank, why? Lin Yan asked with a raised eyebrow. Fifth rank. Both Sister Hare and Blade shouted out in disbelief as if they had heard something ridiculous to the extreme said. Too heaven-defying. I've never heard of any fifth-rank gifted person being able to abuse a group of large mutated beasts of the same rank or even one rank higher. Blade sighed. Mutant beasts had a size advantage. Before the seventh rank, humans of the same rank were at an absolute disadvantage against large mutant beasts. Unless one had a top talent like Xu Qi and Lu Ruyan. After all, mutant beasts had been in a fighting environment from birth, and surviving in the midst of superiority and bloodshed, they would all rise in rank very quickly. It was only under the shelter of the Linglong Crystal that humans had established its one shelter after another. Otherwise, with such a long growth cycle of human beings, coupled with the disadvantages in the early stages, re such a wasteland world, it would have long gone completely extinct. Once out of the Linglong Crystal's shelter range, human beings are nine deaths, the wasteland world is cruel. This is something that can't be felt at all at the gathering point. Blade lamented. Lin Yan nodded. It was also the first time he felt the cruelty of the wasteland world in terms of the natural survival environment. Before this, all he had experienced was the kind of extreme class division between the upper folk and the dust folk, which brought about internal human fragmentation and suffering. Are you guys alright? Good guys, Blade, you guys are good enough to clean up this dire wolf pack. The Jair members who had come to meet them arrived soon after, and they heard the ringing of the battle from afar. Early on, they were all holding their weapons, their talents fully open, their eyes bloodshot, waiting for a bloody battle. As a result, they came here only to realize that the battle had already ended. It's all because little brother Lin Yen did it, we barely participated in the battle. Blade didn't take credit and directly introduced himself. The target that the above told us to protect is actually this strong. I really don't know who's protecting who now. The team members who had come to meet them spat. Their entire squad encountered this dread wolf wolf pack, and it wasn't certain who would live or die. Let's go back to the base, the wilderness is too dangerous, late is late. Blade said evenly. The reason why the tunnel entrance was not set in the base. It was because if the tunnels were exposed and chased out by Lighthouse City's people, they wouldn't be able to fight their way inside the base at once. Alright, come with us. The team members who had come to meet them were sizing up Lin Yan. Their main mission in coming to the lighthouse was to capture it, and their second mission was to protect Lin Yan. They naturally held immense curiosity towards Lin Yan. Touché. Soon, the crowd arrived at the mountain village base. This place had been remodeled by the Jarius members, roughly forming a defensive city wall. Many Jarius members were patrolling on it, observing the wind in the neighborhood. Lin Yan had just walked through the gate. He saw a line of people walking towards him, the visitors wearing uniforms with a dazzling star set into the hat on their foreheads. General. Blade even stood upright and saluted. This is the chief leader of our Raider Lighthouse operation. Chang Siwei, General Chang. Xu Qi introduced from the side. Little brother Lin Yan, welcome welcome welcome. Chang Siwei was very enthusiastic and shook Lin Yan's hand. Hello. Lin Yan nodded to Chang Siwei, General Chang, you guys have spent so much effort to protect me out of Lighthouse City. Is it because there's something that I'm not allowed to do when raiding Lighthouse City? Chang Siwei laughed and shook his head, little brother, don't think so much. We are just following orders and must pick you up. We will not place any restrictions on you. On the contrary, according to the orders from above, you now have A-class authority. Feel free to mention any requests you have to me, as long as they don't exceed the A-class authority, I can fulfill them. Good. 
Lin Yan nodded and directly said, I need me to participate when you attack Lighthouse City. And, I need to enter the Lighthouse Council first. One is that I want to personally take revenge on the Lighthouse Council. For another, I have something necessary that I must confront the Lighthouse Chief Consul. This, General Chang Siwei mused. Normal people who had escaped the Lighthouse Prison, were usually willing to give up their lives to go back and risk their lives again. He looked at the determined look in Lin Yan's eyes and revealed a look of appreciation. It was this flame of vengeance that allowed the Jair organization to survive and even grow. Your request is indeed within the A-class authority. Chang Siwei nodded, but in order to ensure your safety, I must also provide corresponding protection. Understood. Lin Yan nodded. How about this, you choose a hundred warriors from the base to be your personal protection team members. You are the direct leader of ten of them. There is no need to report to me for making any decisions. Chang Siwei said directly. The authority given to Lin Yan from above was extremely high, and one had to know that he was in charge of raiding a city, and the authority he got was only A+. Lin Yan was now the man whose authority was second only to his in the entire base. Giving a hundred people for him to fully manage was nothing at all. Lin Yan mused, ten people will be enough. Then I'll pick ten of the strongest gifted people in the base and send them over to you. Shang Siwei said. No need, I'll just pick them myself. Lin Yan smiled faintly. He had roughly observed. The Jair warriors in this base had all gone through quite a few wars and were highly disciplined. However, their strength was also all between the 4th and 6th rank. There were no 7th order powerhouses. Strong people generally had their own arrogance, and it took time to cultivate them, both in terms of obedience and grinding them up. Therefore, even if he brought 10 6th rank strongmen with him, they wouldn't be able to play a decisive role. It would be better to pick 10 disciplined warriors and arm them. Turning them into sharp soldiers in his own hands, it would be easier to realize his goal of revenge. Not bad, he was building a special forces team. He now basically confirmed that with his modern weapons, he was just killing indiscriminately in the lighthouse, and basically no gifted person could block it. Ten heavily armed special forces were enough to run amok. Chang Siwei gave him a high degree of freedom, it could almost be said that he could choose anyone else except him, the general himself. We're golden partners, don't you dare try to get rid of me. Xu Qi said evenly. Well, you count as one. Lin Yan nodded. He wasn't familiar with these warriors, Xu Qi on the other hand was well liked in the base, many warriors would take the initiative to greet her cordially when they saw her. With Xu Qi around, the cost of communicating between himself and the members of the special operations team could be lower. You, and you. For the rest of the afternoon, Lin Yan was selecting team members. By observing the training of these team members, he basically determined the members of the special operations team. Together with Rui and Lu, there were a total of 12 people. Standing in the center of the courtyard that Chang Siwei had assigned to Lin Yan. You guys will follow Lin Yan from today onwards, he is your immediate commander, you must not disobey any of his orders, is that clear? Chang Siwei left after explaining to the special warriors. Attacking Lighthouse City was a major event. Although he had quite a few combatants in his hands, it was a learning curve to minimize losses. It needed to be meticulously laid out. As for that tunnel, it could only be used for a temporary passageway. After Lin Yan had passed through, the tunnel had been closed. Otherwise, the Lighthouse City sensor system would soon discover the loophole. From today onwards, you guys are my soldiers. I'll start training you, and all you need to do is follow my orders. With the equipment I've given you, as long as you're willing to train seriously. I guarantee that in this attack on the lighthouse, you can make a big contribution and all of you will survive. Lin Yan looked at the special warriors in front of him, distributing the 10 sets of equipment that had been prepared long ago. AK-47 submachine guns, Beretta 92 pistols, TF-90-79 bulletproof undershirts, along with a few body grenades. He was still unable to have absolute trust in these team members. Therefore, the weapons issued were all old-fashioned equipment. He had now advanced to the fifth rank, and the weapons he was equipped with had been upgraded long ago. There was a huge generation gap between him and these team members. Even if these team members threw themselves at the enemy, they wouldn't be able to kill themselves who were equipped with lightweight all-round armor. Moreover, he was the only one in this world who could produce bullets. Even if these weapons were captured by the lighthouse, they could not pose a threat, and to be precise, were no different from scrap metal. You guys can call me captain from now on, Lin Yan said in order to improve the cohesion of the team. In the future, this squad of ours will have a special name, Special Warfare Team. The several team members looked at each other in disbelief, completely baffled by today's situation. Captain Lin, do you mean that in the future we will use these iron lumps to fight? One of the special forces members waved the AK-47 in his hand, but this thing doesn't even have a sharp edge, so how can we attack? Is it hard to believe that we have to take him and smash our enemies to death? That's right, I'll teach you guys to use these firearms. Or, you guys can also call him a special treasure. Lin Yan nodded. This, a treasure tool. These team members were speechless. The combat mindset of this era was all about tapping into the type of talent first, and then categorizing the talent accordingly. 
far attack, melee, surge, defense, special attack, and support. This would allow for maximum effect. But this captain changed their perceptions and fighting style as soon as he came up. It left them at a loss and bewildered. Great, I've long been curious about these strange contraptions you use. The only one who was left drooling was Xu Qi, who looked at the weapon in her hand with rarity. Your talent is very powerful, these weapons are only to provide you with a means of long-range attack. For melee combat, it's best for you to use the talent of nothing constantly. Lin Yan analyzed seriously. Although he wanted to ask about the specifics of Xu Qi's talent. For example, did the trigger condition have to be that wooden stick? What were the restrictions on the use of the ability? Were there any items that could not be chopped off? However, the specific information of a unique talent was the top secret information of an advanced gifted person in this era. No one would reveal it easily. He tried asking several times, but Xu Qi was incoherent and wasn't willing to reveal too much. Ruyin Lu would tell himself so easily just because he was her savior. Oh, I see. Xu Qi nodded, but her attention was on these weapons. How does this one work again? I remember this. Xu Qi pulled the grenade's pull ring apart, and then, how does it spark that explosion again? Lin Yan's quick eyes and hands snatched the grenade from Xu Qi's hand and threw it aside. Boom! The grenade exploded, blowing up a cloud of dust. The warriors on the side who originally couldn't grasp these firearms and equipment at all, and even felt that Lin Yan was a bit nonsensical, were instantly confused. Holy shit! What a terrifying explosion! If this attack were to fall on me, I definitely wouldn't be able to withstand it, even the battalion commander would definitely not be able to withstand it. Several warriors were staggered. With the explosion damage of a grenade, even if a 6th rank warrior resisted with all their might and was hit head on, they would still have to be injured. A 5th order warrior who was hit head on would basically die for sure. This gadget, actually hides such a terrifying power. To inspire such great power, it must be very taxing on the body. This should be a great move when fighting for your life. Several team members muttered. Lin Yan smiled faintly, he knew that no one could resist the charm of modern weapons that were efficient at killing people and had a huge low threshold of entry. Obviously, these team members had already developed a strong interest in modern weapons. No, it doesn't consume any energy at all. It's as if this explosion was stored entirely from within this item. Xu Qi also had this magical experience for the first time, and recounted it to the team members with her hands in the air. How is this possible? Treasure tools can only amplify the effects of talent as well, it's impossible that they don't consume internal energy. The team members' eyes went straight as they looked at the weapons in their hands, glowing. This small one is so powerful, then this big one must not blow up a large area when thrown. A member of the team sighted a hand and threw out the AK-47 in his hand, scaring the crowd into fleeing backwards. Lin Yan was speechless. Why didn't it explode? The team blinked their eyes, does it need some kind of initiation ceremony, or does it need to speak some kind of secret spell? They all gathered around in a row, requesting Lin Yan to teach them. These treasures were just too amazing. They wanted to learn it too much. There's no need to rush, as long as you guys are willing to pay attention, within 10 minutes, you'll be able to learn how to use these weapons. Lin Yan pressed his hand. 10 minutes. We're stupid in the head, Captain are you really sure we can learn in 10 minutes? The team members scratched their heads, somewhat unconfident. A super treasure tool that completely did not consume energy from the body and could instantly explode with great damage with a single hook of the hand, the cost of learning it actually only took 10 minutes. If this was true, then what was the point of racking one's brain and fighting with one's wits? As long as there were a few hundred heavily armed fighters, it would simply be a descending blow to the existing defense system. Lu Ruyan obviously realized this as well, her eyes trembling as she looked at Ling Yan. Her thoughts were much more long term. If that was the case, this man in front of her would have the ability to change the layout of the entire doomsday. He, perhaps, would have the ability to lead humanity out of this wasteland doomsday. Next, Lin Yan showed the special warriors how to use these weapons. Several of the special warriors looked dumbfounded. Before personally getting their hands on them, they simply didn't believe that the mode of operation of this treasure tool was so simple. It was actually true that just by watching Lin Yan's mode of operation once, they were able to learn it almost as well. Ta da day. As they fired their first shots, they all had their blood pumping and their eyes filled with excitement. To accomplish such an advanced attack at such a low cost was something they had never thought they could do in their lives. This is actually really the attack I hit. Looking at the bullet holes on the wall a dozen meters away, the team members looked at their hands in disbelief. What a way to follow the right person. They all looked at Lin Yan with immense admiration. It was this captain, who was even more of a magician than a magician, who had conjured up this powerful treasure, giving them this powerful ability. But if I had such an outfit in the first place, those tragedies and regrets wouldn't have appeared in my life. Yeah. The eyes of the special warriors were red. Most of the members who participated in Jarius were still dust folk, and most of them had a past that was difficult to look back on. Originally, even in the big business that Jarius was doing, we were just insignificant members, but this moment is different. It's the captain who empowered us with a powerful fighting force. The team members looked at Lin Yan, grateful. 
They saw the hope of killing their enemies with their own hands. Lin Yan nodded at them. He empathized with the expectations and grief of these team members. Soon, the loud explosions and gunshots rang out, attracting many of the base's warriors to gather around. Are these treasures so magical? I heard that this little brother Lin is a summoner, and all these treasures were summoned by him. This power is really terrifying, if there are a lot of them, they can directly blow up the city walls, or do they still use human lives to fill them? Didn't they say that summoners can only summon things within their cognizance? I've never even heard of such a thing. Envious ah, I should have known that I would have performed well just now to try and get Lin Jr. to pick me as a henchman, these things, at a glance, they are so drawn out that they explode. Yeah. The warriors murmured and looked enviously at the members of the special operations team. Core tactical room. Chang Siwei was looking at the sand table in front of him, his brows furrowed. Blade walked in, this is the operational report of our operation. Chang Siwei scanned it twice after the result, and was instantly shaken in spirit, then looked at it carefully. The items he summoned are really so magical. Chang Siwei muttered. This little brother really isn't simple, I'm afraid that his combat power alone is comparable to that of a 7th ranked combat talent. No wonder a special mission was issued from above to protect him. To possess 7th rank combat power at such a young age, his future growth potential is immeasurable awe. Blade shook his head, judging from our communication with him, he hadn't awakened before we set out. In other words, the above offered Lin Yin key protection without knowing his talent. Hmm. Chang Siwei's brows knitted together, is that so? This is really strange. Wait. You're saying that he just awakened? Chang Siwei's eyes glazed over as if he had been electrocuted. Yes. Moreover, according to him, his rank, today, is only the 5th rank. Blade nodded. Simply a monster. Chang Siwei muttered. No matter how one looked at it, Lin Yan had shown a value that was definitely worth focusing on protecting. It was just that, could it be that the headquarters had a seer-like gifted awakened person? Able to foretell the future. Chang Siwei shook his head, this was by no means possible. The thing that Jarius members believed in the least, was fate. They were iron-blooded warriors who dared to declare war on their own destiny. Moreover, since the opening of the Wasteland End Times, they had never heard of anything like a destiny-type gifted person ever existing. General Chang, something has happened. Sister Hare walked in and spoke about the matter of the special warfare team being surrounded. What did you say? The items he summoned aren't for his own use only, but can be used to equip others. In just less than half an hour, all ten of his selected special combat team members possessed the combat power to use the treasures he summoned to cross the ranks and kill fifth and sixth ranked gifted. Chang Siwei shook his head incredulously. Yes, General Chang. Sister Hare said. How is this? Possible. Chang Siwei sat down on the stool all of a sudden, and after being lost in thought for a moment, his eyes suddenly brightened up, strengthened the protection for him, he absolutely can't have an accident. Lin Yan's existence is the tipping point for Argerius to defeat the Alliance. His existence is of strategic level. No, no description can describe his importance. Is it that exaggerated? Blade was a bit confused. Think about it, with his ability, we can quickly arm a large number of fighters who have the ability to kill 6th order gifted. Chang Siwei said evenly, the long cycle of a gifted person's growth has been shortened infinitely. Although the gifted after the 7th order are very powerful. However, when facing a siege of hundreds of 6th order experts, they would eventually be exhausted, not to mention that the treasure tool provided by Lin Yan would not even consume the caster's physical energy. Gulp. Cold sweat flowed from Blade's forehead. He knew that Chang Siwei's speculation didn't have any problems, because Chang Siwei was the only 7th order or higher gifted person in the base. Even the myth of the 7th order or higher gifted person will be dismantled. The times. Will change. Chang Siwei excitedly stood up and slapped his palm on the desktop. The war of the future will completely become a war that belongs to the people. The number of dust folk was far greater than the upper folk. However, because gifted people needed to eat a large amount of resources to grow, they had to feed the highly gifted upper folk to cultivate by taking all of the dust folk's resources captive. It was through this reasoning that the alliance also, it pushed for a tiered system of management. Now, their grandiose reasoning is not broken. Chang Siwei excitedly circled around the room, bring me the high-grade communication crystal, I want to call the headquarters. High-order communication crystals could realize long-distance contact, but they were extremely expensive. They only carried five of them on this Class A mission. In other words, Chang Siwei would have to consume one of the only five opportunities to communicate with the headquarters. Good. Blade also understood the urgency of the matter and jogged to fetch the communication crystal. ka -ching. Chang Siwei didn't hesitate to pinch the crystal in his hand and spoke excitedly, Headquarters, this is Chang Siwei. Is that so? We know. The communication ended. The look of excitement on Chang Siwei's face faded. The call with the headquarters made him realize the severity of the problem. He still thought things were too simple. What's wrong? General Chang? Blade asked suspiciously. Alas. It's me who thought of the problem too simply. Chang Siwei shook his head. First of all, although this kind of treasure was summoned by Lin Yan, there is generally a limit to the number of items summoned by a summoner. 
can he really summon a quantity sufficient for the entire army to list? Furthermore, as far as what you mentioned in your report is concerned, this kind of super treasure tool requires the consumption of a resource called, bullets. This kind of resource, only Lin Yan alone can provide, regardless of the quantity, if we rely too much on this kind of equipment. If we rely too much on this kind of equipment, we will have to rely on Lin Yan alone for the initiative and war armament in the future. It is not that we assume that he will become our enemy in the future, but to do a great thing that will change the pattern of the world, it is impossible to allow such a thing to happen, even if none of the above becomes a problem. Would Lin Yan be willing to help us Jair? This? Why wouldn't he be willing? We are here to make a good life for everyone and break this unjust status quo. Blade frowned, Lin Yanshan has gone through all this pain himself. He abhors the corruption of the lighthouse and should have the same ideals as us before. Chang Siwei shook his head, what a person thinks is known only to him. We can't bet our hopes on what someone thinks. It's irresponsible behavior. Then shall we have a chat with him? Blade asked. There's no rush. Chang Siwei shook his head, don't bother him for the next two days. Even if we can't completely count on him to change the times. However, his role is still not to be underestimated and is definitely at a strategic level. When we finalize the siege plan, let him come and participate in our meeting. Good. Blade nodded and turned to leave. For the next few days, Lin Yan was training the special operations team. All of these members had fought many battles following Jarius organization, so their combat awareness and group coordination wasn't bad. After coming into contact with modern weapons, all it took was a shift in the way they thought about combat, and they quickly developed a high level of combat effectiveness. Too strong, with this equipment, I feel that even if I were to face a bunch of fifth order powerhouses surrounding me, I wouldn't be weak. Well, as long as I don't get close, I'm indeed not afraid. Really opened up a new world, the captain is really bull. How was he able to summon these super treasures? The special warriors were constantly talking on the resting gaps of their training. Lin Yen, who had finished breakfast, walked out of the house. Jarius preached relative equality. Therefore, there wouldn't be any poor extravagance, and breakfast was savory porridge with buns. It couldn't be compared to the rotten life that the upper folk lived, but it was still much better than the dust folk who could only eat rats and cockroaches. These days he was very emotional. He actually felt a long-lost sense of civilization in Jarius' base. Captain. The team members all stood up. They had basically formed an army consciousness after Lin Yan's modernized training, and they were becoming more and more convinced of Lin Yan. How's the training going? Lin Yan asked with a smile. It's completely possible to hit a hundred shots, we were just discussing it, it's enough to have our agent squad enter Lighthouse City, if the ammunition is enough, we can definitely kill everyone. Arrow waved his fist, his face full of energy. He was a former dustman of other surviving cities, and he didn't know how much suffering he had suffered from the upper folks. For raiding the upper folk cities and avenging his family, he was one of the most determined. Lin Yan nodded, but don't be too careless, there are also many special gifted people among the gifted, and they are all tough to deal with. It may not necessarily be impossible to inflict great kills on warriors holding guns and cannons. He had read a lot of information in books in Jarius' base in the past two days. Because of his high permissions, he was able to see a great deal of information. He knew more about this world than the previous ten years combined. For example, the legendary gifted people above the seventh rank. They were not at all the same level of existence as those below the seventh rank, and all those below the seventh rank were mole crickets. The reason why the Center Alliance had to implement the division of control between the Upper Folk and the Dust Folk was in order to dump 99% of its resources on the group of gifted people. It was only in order to be able to cultivate more strong people above the 7th rank. As long as one 7th order or above strongmen could be piled up, one would be able to gain the authority to turn the tide in a war. But unfortunately, this strategy gradually went awry after it was implemented. In the beginning, a batch of top-tier powerhouses above the 7th order did come out. But later on, as the classes solidified, the arrogance of power, the drawbacks of divided control were gradually revealed. Even if talented people were born amongst the dust folk, it was difficult for them to smoothly become upper folk, for example, Lu Ruyan was born into a dust folk family. But her talent was at least at the SS level, and such a talented girl was forced to go to the sandworm gang as a filly. The upper folk, on the other hand, through the rights they had accumulated, even if their children were to be demoted to dust folk, they could still keep their children's upper folk status through bribery and various means. This led to the collapse of the original purpose of subcontrol long ago. Nothing can resist human nature. To implement a purpose, one must take human nature fully into account and objectively analyze the practice. Instead of wishfully believing in these seemingly wonderful fantasy propaganda, Lin Yan's gaze was deep. It was time for the rotten lighthouse to collapse, and for the entire center alliance to shatter. Mr. Lin, General Chang asked me to invite you to the general attack meeting. Blade walked in and said respectfully. He had also completely witnessed the rapid growth of the Special Warfare Squad's combat power in the past few days, and was in awe of Lin Yen. Aha! Lin Yen nodded, let's go. He had been born in the lighthouse, 
and he had made a big mess in both the upper and lower civil districts, and knew the city the best in the base. It was very reasonable for the other party to invite him to the dueling meeting. Soon, he and Lang Feng walked into the battle conference room. Chang Siwei smoked his pipe, his brows knitted together. A few of the first captains were also silent, obviously having encountered a difficult situation. Encountered any difficulties? Lin Yan cut straight to the chase. Chang Siwei nodded, a very bad news. Perhaps it's because you've made too much of a fuss, or perhaps it's because the alliance side has gotten wind of Jarius' actions. In any case, there is a big shot coming from within the current lighthouse city. Its strength, it should be above the seventh rank, which will cause a huge obstacle to our plan. Seventh order gifted people were often war sharpers. They could even change the direction of a battle. Therefore, the difference in difficulty between a battle with a seventh order combat aptitude person and without one was enormous. So that's how it is. Lin Yan nodded. Through his understanding over the past few days, he probably knew the destructive and intimidating power possessed by a seventh ranked gifted person. His eyes burned as he confidently said, if I can take out this seventh order gifted person, will you be able to attack Lighthouse City? What? Chang Siwei's eyes widened, you can take out a seventh order combat type gifted person. Although based on the combat information, he believed that Lin Yan's battle power was high enough, but it wasn't high enough to rival a seventh ranked expert. I can try. Lin Yan nodded. If the Jarius organization didn't breach the lighthouse, it was unrealistic for him to try to infiltrate the lighthouse council by himself. It was different from the consul's hospital and Tyson's tavern. Inside the lighthouse were many counselors and chief consuls, and even more so, the most important lingering corps was included. Therefore, the lighthouse's policing system, and other places, was not at all in the same dimension. The arrangement over the years had made the inside of the lighthouse an iron cage that was difficult to invade, and there was even more linglong sensing. As long as someone who hadn't been authorized entered a certain sphere, the alarm would be raised. That kind of sensing was something that would be detected regardless of whether you were stealthy or disguised. Therefore, if you wanted to ask the identity of those three people in the consul's mouth, you had to use Jarius' power. What conditions do you need to kill him? Is it to enter within the lighthouse city, or is it on the battlefield of the engagement? What kind of help do you need from us? Chang Siwei continuously inquired. Whether or not he could kill this seventh-ranked gifted person was a crucial core point for this siege. Both are fine just need to allow me to get within 500 meters of him, and the environment he's in should preferably be empty. Lin Yan said. 500 meters, just as long as the surrounding space is empty. Chang Siwei's eyes widened in disbelief. The request Lin Yan had made was also too simple. This is very easy to do. It only requires us to launch a faint attack to lure here that 7th order gifted person to appear. The city walls are very satisfying with the open space. Chang Siwei said. Good. Lin Yan nodded. If it's possible, let's just set off now. Inform down, set off immediately. Chang Siwei was in an excited mood and ordered to Blade. Yes. Blade stood upright and turned around to go down and start making arrangements. Soon, the battle began to be fought. A leisurely siren sounded in Lighthouse City. Clang clang clang. The sound of the alarm echoed throughout, between the Lighthouse Council. Jarius is fighting. A Lighthouse City guard came to report in haste. Hmm. Chung Yuanfeng raised his head, a hint of joy flashing in his eyes. He had just taken a huge punishment and used so much force, and as a result, Counselor Qin Liren was seriously injured and Counselor Zhang Tuzin died. Thousands of Shangmin were slaughtered. This was a great event that shook the entire center alliance. Having made such a big mistake, he should have been directly dismissed from his official position as a counselor, and would probably be directly relegated to dust folk. Worrying about how to reverse his situation, now Jarius chose to attack. As long as he blocked the wave of attack, he would be considered to have gotten credit for his mistake. At the very least, now that it was a special state of war, it was unlikely that he would be dismissed by the prowl. Jarius this organization is simply too rampant. Chun Yuanfeng was the first to roar in anger as he slammed the table. Ahem, pay attention, the Central Alliance has already wiped out the Jair organization, even if there is still a Jair organization in existence now, it's still using the name of the Jair organization to commit crimes. The vice consul tapped the table and frowned as he chided. Yes yes yes. Chun Yuanfeng grinned. Although everyone understood what was going on in their hearts, they couldn't say that on their lips. Then I will immediately lead the city guards to fend off the attack of these disruptive officials. Chung Yuanfeng turned around and was about to leave. Stop. The vice consul shouted angrily. The war is like a fire. Lord consul, it can't be that you're still going to continue your chastisement session against me in such an urgent situation right now. Chung Yuanfeng frowned and said. Be at ease. The consul who had been silent all this time finally spoke. Chung Yuanfeng, your status as a counselor has been removed. The position of the city guard leader has also been removed. What? Chung Yuanfeng's eyes widened in anger, Lord Consul, not replacing a general in the middle of a battle, a decision like yours is a big no-no. The consul smiled faintly, I have my own plans. Oh, easy for you to say, take me out, who else is qualified to take my place? Chung Yuanfeng got anxious and tore his face off. 
This power of the city guard leader, he must not let go, or else he would be a lamb to the slaughter, and would only be at the mercy of others' judgment. Hee <laughs> hee, don't forget that the defense and military power of the lighthouse is still in my hands now. In this particular state, even if you are the consul, you are not qualified to dismiss me. Shang Yuanfeng doggedly slammed the cup in his hand on the ground. Two two two. Dozens of black armored city guards poured in. Chun Yuan Feng, are you going to revolt and rebel? The vice consul shouted angrily. The faces of the counselors present turned pale, this Chun Yuan Feng was simply insane. They were also a little confused as to why the consul dared to be so iron handed this time, after all, Chun Yuan Feng himself was a top rank 6 expert. He was known as the number one in the lighthouse. With the power of the military under his hands, there was nothing wrong with saying that he was the highest ranking counselor in the lighthouse besides the three consuls. When he was pushed, he really had the ability to lift the table. So what if I rebel? Who can kill me? Chen Yuanfeng laughed maniacally, I'll sit down honestly. Whoever dares to move, I'll kill them today. Chen Yuanfeng walked up to the consul and looked down with a cold smile, you thought you were in control of everything? Now that it's come to this, you still have this unperturbed look. I've been displeased with you for a long time. Give me the lighthouse control treasure. He extended his hand. But in the next instant, his arm, as a whole, broke off from his arm. Poo poo. Blood spurted out, staining the entire counselor's table red. What? Chang Yuanfeng felt an indescribably terrifying sensation. Whoosh whoosh whoosh. A terrifying sound of breaking wind came. Not good. Chang Yuanfeng only had time to see black shadows flashing. When he came back to his senses, the dozens of city guards' heartthrobs he had set up had all been separated from their heads. Pfffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffff
thousands of Jarius members organized siege forces, and the killing power of all kinds of large siege equipment was not low. Poof. Yuan Rinzong rushed to the city wall with a group of members and looked at a burning flaming throwing stone, coldness flashed in his eyes. He sheathed his long sword, and instantly, a one-person high blade energy rushed up into the sky, splitting the flaming stone in half. So strong. The counselors watched in shock. They had been ruling in Lighthouse City for a long time, and rushing in today's apocalyptic environment was an extremely dangerous behavior. Many of them had never seen a 7th ranked powerhouse in their lives, and only felt that it was overblown to tout the power of 7th ranked powerhouses. Today was their first experience of truly seeing the might of a 7th ranked powerhouse. The defense line is going to collapse. Their attacks are too fierce. The city guards had a low will to fight, after all, there hadn't been any major crises in Lighthouse City for so many years. They were all lesser soldiers who had gone through connections to enter the barracks, or had they faced life and death battles. From the fact that they couldn't catch Lin Yan for so many days, they could already see that the city guards were a bunch of rabble. How unlikable. Disgust flashed in Yuan Rinzong's eyes. These bumpkins from the small city really couldn't make it to the top. All calm down. The number of people attacking the city and the number of people defending the city are clearly about the same what are you panicking about? He bellowed, his voice vibrating so that everyone in the entire city wall could hear it. I am the new leader of the city guards, you are all under my dispatch from now on. Yuan Runzong droned. You? Who are you? You'll listen to you if you say so. We only recognize Captain Chung Yuan Feng Chang. A few of Chang Yuan Feng's diehard henchmen stepped forward. Chung Yuan Feng snickered from the sidelines. How? If you can't take over completely, I'll still have to do it when the time comes. Want to take over my power? You? Snort. Yuan Rinzong swung his long blade, and the blade energy instantly swept more than 10 meters across, accurately decapitating the heads of these people, those who don't follow will end up in the same place. Chang Yuan Feng's face stiffened and he lowered his head. All watch out for me. The enemy has nothing to fear at all. Yuan Rinzong built up his momentum, and the fire elemental floating in the air continued to manifest. Rumble. As time passed, more and more fire elementals were absorbed by him. His body seemed to be burning up, with flames rising around him, extremely conspicuous. In the distance. That should be the 7th ranked powerhouse from the center alliance coming over, I can be sure. Chang Siwei was also personally present at the battlefield and pointed out to Lin Yen. It's obvious. There was no need to point out at all. Yuan Renzong's drawing style was not even in the same dimension as the others. He hadn't seen any gifted person with the ability to change the natural environment they were in before. Leave it to me. Lin Yan nodded and came to the location he had picked out earlier. Buzz. The Barrett anti-material sniper rifle manifested in his hand as he began to aim. The distance from the city wall here was around 400 meters, and he had been practicing his sniper marksmanship since he had advanced to the fifth rank. Summoners came with a proficiency trait for the items they summoned and one could increase accuracy by brushing up on proficiency. He could basically do a hundred shots within five hundred meters now. Drink! Yuan Renzu slashed out with a blade that had built up its strength. Boom! More than ten meters of huge flame blade chi was chopped out by him. The terrifying heat wave scalded many people who had trouble breathing. Snort! The saber chi swept across the path, and the Jair warriors in the path had no time to dodge. The speed of the blade chi was too fast. Ah! In the blink of an eye, dozens of people perished under this blade. Poof! Yuan Rinzong let out a loud laugh, see, with this seat here, the enemies are nothing but ants, my lord is mighty, the city guards roared as they all got excited, the morale was greatly boosted, the battle prowess Yuan Rinzong had displayed was just too superb, making them all feel as incredible as the gods, it's now, Lin Yan's eyes were cold and sharp as he pulled the trigger in his hand, he wasn't sure if Barrett could kill a 7th order powerhouse, but as long as it was still flesh and blood, he really couldn't imagine what he could rely on to block it, however, if he had directly inspired it just now, that one terrifying blade chi would definitely be able to split Barrett's bullets. But now was the time when his strength was exhausted and his ambition was high. This moment was the best moment to claim his life. Pying. Flames erupted from Barrett's muzzle, and sniper bullets carrying huge kinetic energy swept across the battlefield at great speed. With a shooting speed of up to 900 meters, it was simply not something that humans could react to. Eh? However, the unique intuition of being a 7th order warrior allowed Yuan Rinzong to feel the crisis of death in advance. His scalp went numb. What is it? In a small place like the lighthouse, someone could actually make him feel the crisis of death. His eyes instantly swept across but he couldn't see any strange people or weapons. I see it. His eyes sharpened and his extreme pupil power actually captured the blurry trajectory of a Barrett bullet, how can it be so fast? He had just reacted by raising his sword when the trajectory passed through his brow. Pying. Yuan Rinzong's head, in full view of the crowd and amidst the cheers, exploded with a bang. 900 meters per second, too fast, so fast that it transcended life and death. This. On the city wall, Chung Yuan Feng, who was closest to Yuan Renzong, was splattered with brain matter, and he was dumbfounded and staggered in place, not knowing what to do. 
The counselors were also completely unable to react to what was going on. This was a seventh order powerhouse. A super powerful existence that could change the direction of a battle. A superpower who had instantly killed all the top brass of the city guards by himself, and had pressed the entire lighthouse council into speechlessness. And his head just exploded in a strange and inexplicable way. Gulp. They seemed to be strangled by ghosts, a great fear made them cool from head to toe, unable to move at all. In the distance, Lin Yan blew the smoke from the muzzle of his gun and was a little surprised in his heart. From the time he fired his gun to Yuan Renzong's death, it was simply less than a second before and after. And yet, the other party made the four actions, realizing the death crisis, searching for the crisis, noticing the trajectory, and starting to move the knife. Is this a seventh rank warrior? It really is a non-human monster. Lin Yan's eyes were gloomy. If the seventh order was this strong, then the eighth order powerhouses, it was definitely possible to block or avoid sniper rifles. The power of their attacks was sufficient, and as long as they could swing their swords in time, they would definitely be able to block them. It seems that in order to tackle a stronger existence, I'll have to become stronger as well. Lin Yan realized some crisis. He was afraid that he wasn't capable of killing an 8th ranked gifted person right now. Shit. This is dead. Chang Siwei looked at Lin Yan in shock, then at the headless corpse at the city's head, shocked beyond words. His pupils vibrated as he looked at the steel creation in Lin Yan's hands, his heart scornful and fearful. At the same distance of 400 meters, he was thinking about whether he could block this blow. Maybe if I can see it before he shoots. But if it was a sneak attack, it is basically unlikely to survive. Chang Siwei's body went cold through and through after generating this inference. This was too terrifying. A few hundred meters away, with a hook of the finger, a terrifying treasure that could almost certainly kill a 7th rank powerhouse. My mission is complete. Lin Yan put away his sniper rifle. Instead of continuing to shoot, he began to close his eyes and wait for the battle after entering the city. Good. You've reversed this battle. The first credit for this battle is yours. Chang Siwei was thrilled beyond words, faint into main attack, give me a hard hit. Soon, the battle-hardened Jarius soldiers attacked the city. The counselors and the city guards of Lighthouse City, who were dominated by the psychological shadow of Yuan Rinzong instantly holding his head, fled in haste, not having any intention of resisting at all. They had no idea what kind of monster they were facing. It could instantly kill a 7th rank powerhouse without even showing its face at all. Wouldn't that be an 8th order, or even 9th order legendary powerhouse? It was said that a ninth ranked powerhouse was fully capable of destroying a city with one person, terrifying to the extreme, a strategic level existence. When they encountered this kind of inhuman monster, they simply didn't have any thoughts of resistance. Lin Yan entered Lighthouse City very smoothly. Along the way, ten special warriors protected him in the center, sneaking along at breakneck speeds, and any crises he encountered could basically be easily resolved. Lin Yan was so focused on hurrying to get to the lighthouse quickly that he didn't have the heart to kill anyone. All these small problems were naturally solved by the special operations team. You mustn't run away ah. His eyes were cold and sharp. The information of the other three murderers who killed his sister, only Lei Qian Yuan could possibly know. If he broke this line, he was afraid that he would never have a chance to know the identity of those three people in his life. Lighthouse. After reading about the core of the lighthouse in textbooks for so many years, Lin Yan was standing in front of it for the first time. It was a tall tower, but the whole body was lit up with orange veins, and it was bright to the extreme even at night. That was the light of the internal Linglong core. Lighthouse, your heart has rotted, and today is the day of your collapse. Lin Yan's gaze was cold and stern as he led the special warriors into Lighthouse City. Go in. Lin Yan killed the two city guards guarding the gate with two shots, kicked open the gate of the lighthouse, and rushed in with the special operations team. Da day day day. Along the way, killing people on sight. The normally high and mighty counselors didn't know how much blood had been stained along the way. Snort. As they arrived at the middle level of the lighthouse, the lingering core was suddenly activated, and terrifying lasers shot in. Buzz. Several lasers swept continuously, sealing the path forward. It seems that your path can only go so far, next, I'll just go up alone. Lin Yan told the special warriors to guard this place. I'll go up with you. At least my doppelganger can help you block the crisis once. Ruyan Lu said evenly. No need. Lin Yan waved his hand as his light armor attached itself and his gene potion modified body exploded with terrifying energy. Buzz. With a single arrow step, he rushed out a dozen meters. Buzz. Several lasers swept in, and Lin Yan transformed his body in midair, weaving through the laser gaps. Gulp. Captain is so strong. The special warriors were dumbfounded. This human body quality, it had already surpassed human limits. A seventh order powerhouse would be just like that. Worthy of being brother Sin. Shu Chi muttered. Boom. Lin Yan did a flip and jumped directly onto a 10 meter high beam, shattering the laser firing treasure with a punch. He then landed on the ground and walked towards the upper floors of the lighthouse. Toho. Lin Yan arrived at the highest level of the lighthouse. The door to the conference room was tightly closed. Buzz. Just as he was about to remove the door with his bare hands, the door to the conference room opened automatically. 
Lei Qianyuan was seated in front of the counselor's table, with Lighthouse City in the dusk behind him. The two vice consuls fought to the death and rushed up. Ka Ching! Lin Yan directly deepened his two hands and crushed the two throats in a single glance. Touche! He came to the other end of the conference table and forced himself to look at Lei Qianyuan at the end, you're not fleeing? Why should I flee? Lei Qianyuan smiled faintly, dusk and sunset, the lighthouse will tumble, where can I escape to? He he. Lin Yan nodded, since you have this realization, then tell me, what exactly are the identities of the other three people who abused my sister? Lei Chen Yuan's eyes sank slightly as he let out a cold smile, since you want to seek death, I will satisfy you. To this day, I never thought that the lighthouse would be destroyed on the body of a dust folk woman. You have destroyed my heart and soul for so many years, so I will tell you everything before I die and let you seek death. I believe that soon we will be companions in hell together. Lei Chen Yuan revealed a cold and stern smile. Lin Yan looked at him indifferently, it's only unscrupulous sinners like you who will go to hell, although my hands are full of blood. I've never killed a person who shouldn't be killed. Ha 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 ha. Lei Chen Yuan shook his head. You are so childish, there will always be childish people like you shouting about justice, fairness, it's so hard to hear. Do you realize that this is the end of days? If we don't implement such a strategy, then no one will survive at all. We're doing this for the sake of the human race. For the sake of a truly noble ideal. What can you stinking insects and rats understand? Lin Yan grinned, you're not doing it for the continuation of humanity, you're just doing it for your own continuation. Lei Chen Yuan's eyes instantly turned cold, ridiculous remarks. I've been vomiting my heart and soul for so many years, laboring for Lighthouse City. I've lost an unknown number of hairs as a sixth rank expert. How can you, a mere worm, understand my ideals and dedication? Pure fart. Lin Yan gripped Lei Chen Yuan off the stool and pointed in the direction of the lower city. The concept of humanity has never existed. Humanity is made up of every single person. When you don't consider most of them as human beings and talk about the continuation of the human race, don't you think it's ridiculous? Don't you think it's ridiculous? Go downtown and ask the dustmen how many of them would want to live if they didn't have children and parents. You're just standing over them, drinking their blood and eating their flesh. What have you done? What have you worked for? The warm bathtubs and fireplaces, the milk steaks, the labor of the sandworm gangs that abuse the dustmen. You enjoy almost all the benefits of this world, lose a few hairs, and here you are screaming and yelling. Is this your labor? Is this your justice? Shameless. Lei Chen Yuan gritted his teeth and forced himself to look at Lin Yan, fine, since it's come to this. I'll be honest then. You guys are bedbugs, rats, and not human beings in my eyes. You guys are the bottom of the barrel firewood in my eyes. Firewood is meant to be burned to provide warmth for mankind in times of doom. What's wrong with that? When the mutant beasts attack, do we have to rely on you rats and bugs to take over? It's us, the people. You're the ants who survived by relying on our shelter. How dare you hold a grudge instead of being thankful. I think you're the ones who have no shame. First of all, there have been no beast tides for at least the past 20 years. Lin Yan looked at Lei Chen Yuan indifferently, moreover, what are you using to classify who is a rat and who is a human? Talent. Then why is Zheng Tuzin's F-ranked gifted son a Shangmin? Why was Lu Ruyan, a girl with SS grade talent, taken captive to the Sandworm Gang? You. Lei Chen Yuan didn't know what to say and said roguishly, yes, development always brings some bad effects. But that doesn't mean this parallel system is wrong. It is just wrong. Lin Yan indifferently said, you're just crowning yourself with reasons to convince yourself, to convince yourself to enjoy the inexhaustible resources that you're enjoying in this apocalypse. Convincing yourself that everything you get is so reasonable. Convincing yourself of how smart and noble you are. Inside you know better than anyone how despicable and ugly what you are doing is. It's just that you can't see it in the dead, how easy it is to enjoy the good old days in peace just by deceiving yourself. Lei Qian Yuan gritted his teeth. You want me to change my beliefs before you die? Give up. It's impossible. Lin Yan sneered, I don't want to make this kind of indifferent effort, I just want to scold you before you die. It's just a matter of venting the anger I've felt for so many years. It doesn't matter what you think, it's only important that I get high. Lei Qian Yuan's stance was different from Dustman's, even opposite. Different stances were different species. If their positions were opposite, they were natural enemies. But there was always a strange phenomenon in human society. That is, the ruler preys on his natural enemy with all the ruthlessness he can muster, while the prey always fantasizes that the predator is his own kind. So never expect to reason with your natural enemy. Because his mission in this life, since he was born, is to eat your flesh and drink your blood. Even if you talk a lot, you can't change the thinking dictated by the essential attributes of life. The only option for the prey to break free from their shackles is to completely thwart their natural enemies and make them disappear into the dust. Lei Chen Yuan was a bit surprised, you are indeed unique. As far as I remember, those stupid bedbugs would try to reason with me. Would try to convince me. They would be naively delusional enough to think that with a single mouth, they could make me give up all this that I enjoy. He he he. Among these stupid bugs, you are one of those rare smart ones. Since you are smart, then make a deal with me. 
How about I tell you the identities of those three people and you let me go? Lei Qian Yuan said indifferently. Lin Yan smiled faintly, that's fine. Lei Qian Yuan sneered, if you don't agree, I'll believe you. Suddenly, his face violently turned iron blue and black blood flowed out from the corner of his mouth. You! Lin Yan's eyes flinched. This guy had actually taken poison. Just now, he was just pulling with himself, but he was just stalling for time, wanting to die painlessly. Battlefield Serum. Lin Yan summoned all the antidote potions he could and zapped Lei Qian Yuan with them. There's no need to get busy, what I took was the 7th rank black scaled serpent snake venom, after taking the poison, there's simply no potion in this world that can save. A triumphant smile appeared on Lei Chen Yuan's face, but soon, he couldn't smile anymore, because, he wasn't dead. Lin Yan looked down at him, you can't win against me. Just because this world didn't have it, it didn't mean that all worlds didn't have it. Much less does it mean that Blue Star doesn't have it. It's just snake venom in the district. Lei Chen Yuan stared angrily at Lin Yan for a long time before he slowly relaxed. He knew that he had been completely defeated. He knew Lin Yan's methods, so in order not to suffer in human torture, he honestly explained. In my desk, I have the information of those three people sealed. 43. Very well. Lin Yan nodded, smart choice. He shattered the lock of the desktop with a shot and waved his hand to take out the list. Fang Yuan, Xiu Bailu, Lin Qianfan. Lin Yan's gaze was dead set on these three names, his eyes covered in blood, they were the culprits of his sister's death. A big shot from the capital city? Lin Yan grinned, in his eyes was a crazy killing intent. He he. You're really a crazy person, you're still combative even at this moment, the reptiles at the bottom will never know how high the sky is. You will also never understand how high they are. Lei Chen Yuan laughed miserably, from the time you saw these three names, your fate has been sealed. That is death. Lin Yan grinned, you want to provoke me and then use provocation to keep yourself alive, right? You know, I didn't kill you Shanghai at the consul's hospital in the first place because I wanted him to watch with his own eyes the destruction of the lighthouse that he felt was impossible to collapse. You're betting that I'll make the same choice for you, aren't you? Lei Chen Yuan was shaking like a sieve, his thoughts completely seen through. What kind of terrifying demon was he facing? His familiarity with human nature was simply exquisite. I have to say, you guessed right. He let out a long sigh, but I'm not lying. If we, the remnants of the doomed humans, are like a hive of hierarchical, well-structured bees. You, the dust folk, are the lowest class of worker bees, and we, the upper folk, are the soldier peaks. And those aristocrats who form the core of the human alliance are the queen bees. We exist only to maintain their safety and provide them with energy. They are the fundamental reason why humanity still exists in this apocalypse. There may be the occasional crazed worker bee that bites a soldier bee to death, but how have you ever heard of a worker bee at the bottom of the hierarchy that could kill a queen bee? Then your knowledge of wildlife is really lacking. Lin Yan grinned, his eyes incomparably cold, the worker bees obey the queen bee because the queen bee's brilliance can bring a bright future to the hive. And once the worker bees notice that the queen bee is no longer capable of guiding the hive, is lethargic, senile, severely incapable, and genetically corrupted, they will not hesitate to kill the queen bee. This, then, is the law of nature. This will also be the destiny of the human alliance and the lighthouse. Lin Yan looked at Lei Qin Yuan coldly. It seemed that not only the dust folk, but even the upper folk, who looked polished on the surface, were all just high-class slaves who had been brainwashed by the core nobles. Even such basic common sense as worker bees would kill the queen bee was unclear. You are nothing more than high-class pigs and goats that have been captive raised by the nobles, and everything you see in here is still false as well. Lin Yan skimmed his lips, on this level, you are also pathetic enough. Lei Chen Yuan didn't speak again and closed his eyes, ready to wait for his fate to be pronounced. He had lost completely and utterly on every level, and now his heart was as if he was dead, but he was begging for death. But I must also congratulate you, you made the right bet. Lin Yan's words peeked out, causing Lei Chen Yuan to instantly open his eyes. His eyes were filled with hope, but turned to anger in an instant, you're playing me. No. Lin Yan swung out his sword and cut off Lei Chen Yuan's head, I'll let you see it, but only your head will be able to see this ending. Before Lei Chen Yuan's brain died completely, Lin Yang put his head into the freezer bin. Only by going to the capital city can I completely realize my revenge. Lin Yan's eyes burned. The people behind these three names were obviously at the very top of their status and power, or else they couldn't have been so scorned by Lei Chen Yuan. If one had to go by hive theory, Lei Chen Yuan was at least a hive general. Someone who could make him so scornful that he wouldn't even dare to speak his name rather than die could only be the hive king clan. Core nobles? Lin Yan muttered, since this world is already sick, we have to cut out the root of the disease that is making him rot away. Even if that root of sickness, is the king bee itself. He walked out of the lighthouse, and now that the entire city was under the de facto control of Jarius, the resistance of the city guards became a joke. Blood and fire filled the streets. These Jarius members who harbored endless hatred towards the upper folk went crazy, filling the streets with human heads. It was a horrifyingly thorough bloodbath. No one talked about morality and benevolence, only the purest revenge and brutalization. 
Jarius, the purpose of this organization's existence was revenge, and because of this, it also possessed an extremely high level of cohesion, so naturally, it was impossible to restrain the members from taking revenge on the Shangmin after breaking the city. Lin Yan was oblivious to this, all of this swept past his ears as if everything was far away from him. He once again stood in front of the door of the consul's hospital, and this time he didn't have to sneak in with makeup. He stomped in, stepping over the chaos of corpses and blood, and walked to the familiar ward. Yi Shanhai turned his head. You have a big enough life. Lin Yan grinned, I thought I'd only see your corpse when I came here. Probably they would prefer me to live in agony until I die, right? Compared to the way I am now, being killed would be blissful instead. But it's not that bad anyway, aren't you here to kill me? Yi Shanhai was now in the deepest despair. Everything he believed in, everything he firmly believed in, was shattered. Lin Yan's promise had come true, the lighthouse had collapsed and shattered, and everyone was dead. That high wall had collapsed. Lin Yan took out the freezer and showed Lei Chen Yuan's frozen head to Yi Shanhai. The despairing Yi Shanhai's eyes deepened. I've fulfilled my promise, now I've come to take back my payment. Lin Yan stood in front of the paralyzed Yi Shanhai. Even if you overthrow the lighthouse, so what? What is the lighthouse in front of the entire league of surviving humans? You can never defeat my faith. Yi Shanhai's mouth was hardened with external strength, those people, they are the big shots coming down from the core city. I know all of this, you want to do the same old trick to live on, right? Lin Yan grinned. Lei Qian Yuan just played a similar trick with me, but he gambled right. I kept ahead of his, preparing to resurrect him the moment I destroy the human alliance, to take one last look at the world he believes in. Yi Shanhai gritted his teeth, are you going to treat me like this too? No, you don't deserve it. Lin Yan stomped Yi Shanhai's newly risen hopes to pieces once again. You only deserve to live until this moment, the fall of the moon is not something that can be witnessed by a mole. In the next moment, blood light infested, and Yi Shanhai's entire body exploded. The medical room turned into red residual soil. Lin Yan walked out of the consul's medical room and ended up silently returning to the lower city, glancing at the dilapidated house he had lived in for 18 years. After putting the things he cared about the most into the system space, he turned around and walked out of Lighthouse City against the flow of people with determination.